Tanky Mage System. Chapter 351 A Real Deal Gunai waved his hand and chuckled. Everyone, there's no need to be so formal after all, I asked you all to come here to make you rich together. Rich? Everyone's eyes lit up at Gunai's words. The last time Gunai had taken them out to sea, everyone had gained a lot. This time, he directly came up and said that he would make everyone rich. No one would question it. How do you feel about this place? Gunai said. Does this place mean that dreams don't affect reality, or that it can affect reality? After some thought, Jason Horwell asked. This place is a strange half-dream, half-reality level. Gunai explained. For example, your combat techniques and the use of source power can be completely unobstructed in this world. At the same time, your cultivation will be effective in this world. More importantly, the breakthrough in a battle can be the same as in reality. Gunai had already confirmed this. More importantly, you won't really die in this world. You'll only lose a small amount of vitality, which can be recovered in a day or two. Everyone's faces were filled with shock at Gunai's words. Cultivation is effective, and breakthroughs are effective. He only lost a small amount of vitality after dying in a full-powered battle. This is too heaven-defying. That's right. They won't use their full strength even in the real world. After all, if they can't hold back, they'll really be seriously injured or even die. And here, there's no need to worry at all. Just this alone is probably enough to attract a large number of extraordinary humans. That's right. Not to mention, we can also communicate remotely here. If you didn't mention it, I wouldn't have realized it. Now that you've mentioned it, long-distance communication is also very important. After all, we've been drifting on the sea for a long time. If we have such a place, we won't have to worry about being boring on the ship. Indeed. I'm in the mainland right now, and there should be quite a few of you on the sea, right? The range of this long-distance communication should be at least tens of thousands of kilometers. The captain's methods are truly astonishing. The crowd immediately began to discuss. A few chief officers who had seen a lot of things were even more shocked. The information contained in these few simple words showed how valuable this strange place was. Captain, do we have any effective means of entering or leaving? Baster asked in a low voice. Of course you can. Gunai replied. Previously, I collected your blood and integrated it into this bloody arena, so I could easily pull you in. For you, with the corresponding incantation of law, you can also freely enter and leave this blood dream arena from any corner of the continent. Being able to enter and leave this place freely, this immediately made many people's hearts move. The value of a place where he could enter and communicate with others at any time was needless to say. As for the others, if they offer their blood crystals to that great existence, they can also enter and leave this blood dream arena through the incantation. A great existence. Everyone was shocked when they heard this. Great existence, that is, Arson Horwell's voice was a little hoarse. Everyone looked at Gunai with serious expressions. That's right this space is a strange world created by a great existence the great existence named it the Blood Dream Arena, and that great existence's name was, the source of fear above the stars, the lord of immortality who can reverse life and death, the indescribable master of nightmares. Gun's voice was deep and mysterious. The indescribable lord of nightmares. The great and eternal Fulha being. Everyone felt as if an electric current was coursing through their bodies. And I am the kin of this great existence. Gunai said with a smile. Everyone's heart trembled. The kin of a great creature. When they looked at Gunai again, they all seemed to have realized something. Gunai's talent was beyond imagination. It turned out that it was a relative of a great existence. This explanation seemed to make sense. After a moment of shock, everyone slowly recovered and began to think. Gunai himself was extraordinary. The owner of the god crown was a future god. With the addition of a relative of a great existence, this did not seem to be a big deal. 
Don't rashly recite the name of a great existence he will sense it. Gunai said. Everyone became slightly alert. The true name of this great existence could not be casually recited. When they focused on what Gunai had just said, they felt that the blood dream arena was even more incredible. Offering blood and then using a spell to enter and exit by himself, this was indeed an extraordinary method. Such an extraordinary ability was something that only a supreme and great life form like Thulhu could do. If he were to give his blood to someone else, they would probably have a grudge against him. But offering his blood to a great existence didn't seem to be a problem. I think some of you have already guessed why I've brought you here. Gunai said. One of the reasons why I've brought you here is to spread the word about the construction of this blood dream arena by the great creature. This will allow more people to enter this extraordinary world. The great lord of nightmares is in the process of awakening and needs sacrifices. That's why this blood dream arena was built. You will be qualified to enter the blood dream arena by offering a sacrifice and condensing your own blood crystal. Also, the earlier the sacrifice is made, the fewer sacrifices will have the right to enter. In the future, if you offer a huge amount of sacrifices, you may not be qualified to enter. These words immediately made many people cautious. The qualifications to enter this place alone were worth thousands of gold. It was easy to enter now, but it would be difficult to enter later when the number of people gradually increased. There were even people who had already begun to think about the follow-up plan. They had to make sacrifices as soon as possible after they got out. And you must know that the great Lord of Nightmares built the Blood Dream Arena, which is worth far more than that. If it's just a simple exchange, battle, training, and breakthrough this is not enough to highlight the ability of a great existence. What's more powerful is that when the Lord of Nightmare awakens further, this Blood Dream World will have the powerful ability to accommodate items in the real world. To put it simply, you can bring things from the real world into the bloody dream world, carry out transactions, and then bring out the things you have bought. The bloody dream world could be traded. This was undoubtedly another heavy piece of news. Fortunately, everyone had seen enough today. It wasn't strange that the almighty Nightmare Lord was able to make Blood Dream Arena make a deal. As Gunai's innate divine ability continued to level up. Naturally, more and more abilities were contained in the sacred art, and it became stronger and stronger. Now that he was close to level 6, it would not be a problem to build a bloody dream world that could perfectly display his strength. Gunai also felt the power of this ability. The blood source Great Blood Sky Dream Curse could also bring objects into the bloody dream world. After all, the blood dream world was not a simple dream world. It was a half dream, half reality world. Gunai estimated that the blood source Great Blood Sky Dream Curse would be level 8 at most, and could bring items from the real world into the bloody dream world. At that time, the blood dream elf would have been born. He could let the blood dream elves manage the entire blood dream arena and carry out the transactions in the blood dream world. 352 The Brutal Arena I let you enter blood dream arena partly to spread the news and let more people in. Secondly, during this period of time, Blood Dream Arena will also need a certain number of people to manage it. I'll give you some authority to manage the entire Blood Dream Arena. Of course, the income you should receive will also be considerable. It's a pity that we'll decide on these things in detail later. Everyone laughed at Gunai's words. After all, they had followed Gunai and Gunai had never treated them badly. For now, We'll still distribute them according to the Magic Whale's management level. There's no problem, right? Gunai looked at the others. No, I didn't. The crowd responded in unison. Well, that's good. Next, I'll take you to various levels and teach you all various spells. It'll also help you get familiar with how to manage the entire Blood Dream Arena. Next, Gunai led everyone to familiarize themselves with the Blood Dream Arena and teach them the catalyst for the incantation. The Blood Dream Elf would only be able to come out after some time. Although the powerful characteristics of the Divine Crown would allow the Blood Dream Elves to possess a certain level of intelligence when they came out, the Blood Dream Elves were still very intelligent. 
however, they still needed to keep learning in order to manage Blood Dream Arena. The Magic Whale's former crew would be their targets of learning. Secondly, Gun was unsure if he should find someone to open up the Blood Dream Arena himself, or if he should cooperate with the Transcendent Association. After some careful consideration, Gunai decided to find the person himself. Although this would be a little troublesome. However, they would not be shackled by the Transcendent Association. There was also no need to worry about the internal conflicts of the Transcendent Association leading to factional disputes in the Blood Dream Arena. At the same time, if Gunai didn't go to the Transcendent Association, he could naturally refuse many unreasonable requests. Even if the Transcendent Association wanted to enter, they had to follow Gunai's rules, and they couldn't escape from the sacrifice. Gunai shrugged. I'm just a follower of that great being, and all the rules are set by that great being. I can help you sacrifice and give you a little discount. After a few hours, everyone used the ancient Nirvana teleportation spell to leave the arena. When everyone left, they could vaguely sense that the Oya continent was about to usher in a change. However, they weren't sure what kind of impact it would have. However, they knew what they had to do, which was to spread the news of Blood Dream Arena. Let more people sacrifice themselves to the Great Existence and let them enter the Blood Dream Arena. In the secret chamber. Bast Johnson opened his eyes. He lowered his head and muttered to himself. The first thing he had to consider was what benefits he could obtain from using this authority. After some careful consideration, the intelligent Bast Johnson quickly realized that if he could control the authority that Gunny had given him, and if enough people entered the Blood Dream Arena, he could use his authority to obtain a huge amount of gold pounds for himself. Gunny Lawrence had clearly stated that the profits from this operation would belong to them. Fortunately, I'm on the Evil Dragon Island, the Blood Dream Arena. This is a place where people fight, exchange information, and in the future, it can be said to be a place where the experts of the entire continent trade. I think those pirate kings will like this place very much. We have to tell them as soon as possible. Immediately after, Bast Johnson stopped his seclusion and opened the secret room's restriction. He was going to meet his current pirate captain, who had the strength very close to the young pirate king. Night had fallen on the tourist island. The sky was misty, and it was a bit deep and depressing. Old Sea Chart woke up the sailors who had been resting. This place was not far from Harutf Harbor. Moreover, Old Sea Maps Network was not just wide. He knew many rich businessmen who traveled the sea. He believed that such a place for information exchange was difficult for those wealthy marine merchants to refuse. When these people took action, the other extraordinaires who had the corresponding information channels also began to take action. They might have done it through their friends. Or a good friend of his. The Blood Dream Arena was quickly spread out. In the dark secret room, Gunai opened his eyes. The seed has been planted. As for how far the flower will bloom, I can only leave it to time to slowly brew. Gunai thought to himself. Next, I'll train in seclusion and focus on comprehending the three profound meanings of world, darkness and destruction to steadily improve my strength. It'll be best if I can directly become a master transcendent after this session of cultivation. At that time, I will truly have the ability to protect myself. Whether it's my soul turning into a star soul and spreading out to the entire world, or my Upanishad manual demonic erosion blade leveling up, or the other manuals leveling up, all of these have allowed me to have considerable power even though I've just become an extraordinary master. Gunai also knew that many people in the transcendent world had their eyes on him for obtaining the god's crown. He needed to be strong enough. Gunai was inside the starry sky watchtower cultivating and comprehending power. While the CO soul was learning the destruction Upanishad, it was also managing the blood dream world and accepting the offerings. It was just as Gunai had expected. On the second day after the news of the blood dream arena had spread, some people had already begun to chant the true name of the Lord of Nightmares and use the small altar to carry out the sacrifice. Gunai naturally didn't refuse this kind of sacrifice. 
Gunai accepted the offering and placed the blood crystal into the arena. He was very familiar with the process. In the future, when the blood dream elf was born, he would need the blood dream elf to do these things. In the next few days, the sacrifice seemed to have entered a period of explosive growth. A large number of sacrifices were made from the inner land of the Oya continent, the ocean, and some remote areas. People were using altars to offer sacrifices to the great lord of nightmares. At this stage, Gunai didn't refuse any sacrifice. It didn't matter if it was a large altar, a medium altar, a small altar, or even a temporary altar that he had built himself, Gunai responded. In just four days, the number of blood crystals had reached 100, which meant that 100 people could enter the arena. When the number of blood crystals had reached 100, Gun had also increased the price of the sacrifices. Originally, a Type 6 corpse could allow a Type 6 human to enter. As the number of people reached the critical point of 100, the number of sacrifices required was two 6th rank corpses to allow a 6th rank extraordinary to enter. At the same time, Gunai was no longer responding to the weak altars. The threshold to enter was raised. This was the information that Gunai had given to the Demon Whale's crew. The first to enter had a discount, and the slower one entered, the higher the price. As Gunai didn't respond, the price of the sacrifice increased. The many extraordinaries were secretly slandering him. However, they had clearly begun to speed up the collection of sacrificial items. In the past, they didn't care about the corpses of powerful extraordinaries and extraordinary creatures, but now they were in high demand. After the many extraordinary humans who entered the Blood Dream Arena realized the magic of the arena, they were all stunned. As the news spread, it naturally made more and more extraordinary humans want to enter the Blood Dream Arena. In addition, in the future, the price of the offerings might increase. This naturally urged the powerful and influential extraordinaires to enter the Blood Dream world even more urgently. The Blood Dream Arena was growing wildly in the entire Oya continent at an extremely crazy speed. And as it grew wildly, it attracted more and more people to enter. The blood pool began to expand crazily in the midst of this competition. 353 Blood Dream Elf Tribe As Gunai cultivated and comprehended profound meaning, half a year passed. The blood sea. The blood waves surged and surged. Compared to half a year ago. The blood sea had expanded by more than 30 times. As far as the eye could see, the entire Blood Sea's actual area was already comparable to a medium-sized lake. The reason why the Blood Sea was able to expand by more than 30 times in this half a year was because of this. Naturally, this was because of the massive amount of sacrifices the Sacred Feather Dark World Origin Race had made over the past half a year, as well as the frenzied sacrifices of the Oya continent. Gunai had spent a lot of time and energy on the Blood Sea. Now, with the help of his own uniqueness and the power of the star sequence profession, Blood Origin Curse Mansur, he had no choice but to use the Blood Origin Curse. In the Sea of Blood, Gunai had finally created a unique path of his own. In the past six months, more and more people had entered the Blood Dream Arena in the Oya continent. Now, there were more than 5,000 blood crystals. Even now, there were still sacrifices every day. On one hand, these people wanted to upgrade the level of their blood dream arena. This way, they would suffer less losses when they died, and they would have a certain advantage when they obtained their own small space in the future. On the other hand, there were still many people who wanted to enter through the sacrifice. However, as the price of the ancient nirvana continued to rise, more and more items were offered to those who wanted to enter. As for the blood dream arena on the sacred feather dark source continent, there were even more people. Gunai had made a rough count and found that there were around 30,000 people. And every once in a while, there would be a huge number of corpses sacrificed into the Blood Sea. The CO soul sat cross-legged in the Blood Sea Palace, comprehending the destruction Upanishad. The demonic CO soul stopped its comprehension of the destruction Upanishad. Then, the demonic CO soul looked at the Blood Dream Elf Island hundreds of meters away. 
It's almost time for the Blood Dream Elves to enter the Blood Dream Arena. The devilish CEO soul pondered. The pool of blood that gave birth to the Blood Dream Elves. After two months of nurturing, the first Blood Dream Elves were born. Although there were not many of them, only about twenty of them, many Blood Dream Elves were still being nurtured in the blood pool. But the Blood Dream Elves that were born were a little different from what Gun had imagined. These Blood Dream Elves were about the size of a palm, and they were very small. The stronger ones had three pairs of blood wings, the average ones had two pairs, and the average ones had one pair. They also had the characteristics of small elves. It could fly, had sharp ears, and sharp fangs. Its body was blood red and translucent, and it was extremely intelligent. It was born with a certain blood talent. For example, Gun's blood shield. They had inherited it almost naturally, and each of them had a shield. The second was Gun's blood escape, which some talented blood dream elves could use. This surprised Gunai. It was clear that the blood dream elves had the same power as Gun's own blood. However, this was not the main point. The main point was the blood dream elves. They seemed to be quite bloodthirsty and passionate about fighting. Gunai often saw them fighting above the blood sea, and there were even cases of their own kind being killed. Then, the dead clansmen would be eaten on the spot. Gunai's face darkened. The blood dream elves in their primitive state did indeed make people feel their blood and cruelty. In the following years, Gun began to educate the blood dream elves, passing on all sorts of information and knowledge. These blood dream elves had been nurtured by Gun's own blood. He had a natural affinity and devout belief in Gunai. Gradually, these blood dream elves, who had naturally released their talents, also showed their intelligence. They learned very quickly, and their cognitive ability was very strong. In addition, they strictly followed Gunai's orders. Therefore, in the past few months, the Blood Dream Elven tribe had developed very quickly on Blood Dream Elven Island. He teleported to Blood Dream Fairy Island. In the world of Blood Sea, Gunai could go anywhere with a single thought. But now that he was hidden, the Blood Dream Elves couldn't detect him. At this time, Blood Dream Elf Island was about 50 meters in diameter. The houses of the Blood Dream Elves were constructed using bone armor and solidified flesh. There were hundreds of them. With a sweep of his mind, Gun knew the number of Blood Dream Elves on the island. There were almost 300 Blood Dream Elves. At that moment, in the sky above the Blood Sea outside the Blood Dream Elf Island, a sacrificial passage just happened to light up. The locations of the sacrifice passages had all been set near Blood Dream Elven Island, so the sacrifices had been done by the elves during this time. Wee view wee view. Immediately, a deep wee view horn sound quickly sounded. It was a horn made of bones. Squad 22, follow me a four-winged Blood Dream Elf immediately shouted, but her voice was clear and sharp. Under the leadership of this four-winged Blood Dream Elf, the team of six elves flew towards the sacrificial passage. Under the control of the incantation, the four-winged blood dream elf responded to the channel, and a large number of sacrifices were thrown into the blood sea under its control. The blood dream elf was also calculating the value of these sacrifices. A moment later, the four-winged blood dream elf had finished sending all the sacrifices into the blood sea, and she had four blood crystals in her hands. The blood crystals had to be collected and given to the father. This was one of the sacred missions that every blood dream elf had in mind. The value of the sacrifice is enough. The blood crystals can be put into the warehouse. A moment later, the blood dream elf, who was doing the calculations, said. Yes, bring the blood crystals to the warehouse. Then, the small team of blood dream elves flew towards blood dream elf island with the blood crystals. If the value of the sacrifice was high enough, blood crystals could be stored in the warehouse, which meant that they were qualified to enter the blood dream world. And if the value of the sacrifice was not enough, then, I'm sorry, the blood crystals would be directly thrown into the blood sea, and they would lose everything. Yes, this was one of the rules Gunai had set. If even the sacrifice is so cost-efficient, 
then there's no need to let you in. Gunai revealed his body and aura. Boom. 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 As soon as Gunai released his aura, the blood sea around him started to move. The blood power in the air was boiling. Gunai's demonic CO soul was burning like a blood red sun, emitting its own light. Immediately, all the blood dream elves on the island knelt on the ground devoutly. Great Father! All of the blood dream elves began to chant in a low voice. Gun could feel the faint power of faith coming from the blood dream elves. Even during normal times, Gun could feel the power of faith from the blood dream elves. Gunai naturally accepted the power of faith. Gun didn't want to become a god through faith, but he could accept the faith of the races he created. Plus, consuming the faith would speed up his understanding of profound meaning. Blood Nell. Gunai said. This Skooker was one of the most powerful existences of the Blood Dream Elves, and he was also the one who believed in Gunny the most. One of the six-winged Blood Dream Elves replied with a trembling voice. Great Father God, what instructions do you have? I told you about the management of Blood Dream Arena some time ago. How's your training going? Father, we've already mastered the various incantations that you've taught us. During this time, you've sent me and several others to the Blood Dream Arena, so we've gained a better understanding of that world. I think my people are qualified to take on some of the management work of the Blood Dream Arena. Sanguine Kerr said. Well, that's good Gunai nodded. During this time, Gun had done a lot of research on the connection between the Blood Dream Elves and the Blood Dream Arena. Now, it was about time to let these Blood Dream Elves enter the Blood Dream Arena to carry out some of the management work. After all, there would be many more Blood Dream Arenas in the coming years, and Gun would build more pools of blood and create more Blood Dream Elves. It was necessary for them to manage the Blood Dream Arena. As for the Blood Dream Arenas yes and Horwell, Gugni had already informed them. They would naturally do a good job of the handover and harmony between the two sides. 354 Emotionless Tool An hour later. After sending the Blood Dream Elf into the arena for a look, Gun focused his mind. The Blood Dream Elf's adaptability to work was clearly much better than Gun had expected. In the future, they would have no problem managing and controlling the entire Blood Dream arena. They even wanted to do better than humans. After all, humans still needed to enter and leave the Blood Dream Arena. And they would be staying in the Blood Dream Arena forever. Hoo hoo hoo. After the Blood Dream Elves entered the arena, Gun let out a sigh of relief. The expansion of the Blood Dream Arena and the framework for the management of the Blood Dream Elves have been completed. I don't need to spend too much time on this. We just need to wait quietly for Blood Dream Arena and Blood Sea to grow. But, Gunai rubbed his forehead and began to think. I don't know why, but the chi and blood I've lost in Blood Dream Arena has actually decreased by quite a bit. There's quite a lot of battles there too. Although the amount of blood crystals obtained from these drops is not much compared to the sacrifice, it is still an endless source. It's as if the chi and blood that I've lost have been stolen when I wasn't paying attention. Is there something in the Blood Dream world targeting my Blood Dream Arena? He asked. Gunai also knew that the Blood Dream Arena was only a part of the Blood Dream world, and he was not the only one who could enter. It seems that I'll have to investigate the area around Blood Dream Arena in the future. How dare you steal my things right under my nose? If I catch you, you won't have a good time. Gunai calmed down and looked at himself. After half a year of cultivation and the use of many resources, Gunai's transcendent realm had also skyrocketed, from the early stage of rank 5 to the late stage of rank 6. Gun had heard that Nigel had become a master, and his progress was extremely fast. The effect of hanging the camera was also very good. First hack slot, True Scales Kun's Protection, Level 6. Second idol slot, Dusk Star Origin Cannon, Level 4. Third hack slot, Little Thunder Flame Curse. Level 7. Fourth hack slot, Great Thunder Flame Curse, Level 8. Fifth hack slot, 
Blood Source Ocean Divine Code, Level 5. Sixth Hack Position, Blood Source Great Blood Heavenly Dream Curse, Level 7. Seventh Hack Slot, Mana Corrosion Blade, Level 6. Eighth Idol Slot, 96%. The level of incantations on all levels had been greatly increased, and the 8th slot was about to open. The power of Gunai's spells was no weaker than a rank 7 master. At the same time, with the help of the Sea of Blood and the absorption of the ruler's flesh, Gunai's body easily surpassed the defense of a secret silver tank armor. The mithril tank armor's level was basically difficult to cause any damage to a regular rank 6 extraordinary. In other words, even a rank 6 extraordinaire might not be able to hurt Gunai if he stood there and let them attack. It was easy to imagine how calm Gunai's body was. In terms of tolerance for injuries, as the Blood Sea expanded, Gunai's tolerance for injuries was terrifying. Even if Gunai was dismembered, the scattered remains would quickly recover and Gunai's injuries would recover in a short time. All in all, Gun's current strength was enough to fight against a level 7 Transcendent Master. If the other party was not strong enough, there was a high chance that the other party would die. Gunai looked at his sea of blood and frowned. In the depths of the blood sea, Gunai could feel that the flesh was no longer the size of a thumb. It was less than 95% of its original size. Originally, Gunai had estimated that the ruler's flesh would take a long time to digest. Who would have thought that the Blood Sea would expand so quickly? As a result, the ruler's flesh and blood were almost completely digested in just half a year. The Dominator's flesh and blood not only gives my physical body tandiness, but more importantly, it can give me very special characteristics, such as the coverage of the Blood Dream Arena. Without the support of the Dominator's flesh and blood, my plan to cover the entire space of the Blood Dream Arena will obviously not work. Now that I'm already at the late stage of the sixth rank, it'll only take a few months for me to become a transcendent master. It won't be too late to go out and look for the ruler's flesh after I become a transcendent master. Moreover, Zhen Zhen. Gunai shook his head and smiled. I want to go out now, but I can't. Yes, it was. The powerful cultivators in the watchtower were very strict with Gunai's protection. Gunai basically wouldn't let Gunai go out alone. I'll continue cultivating. Sitting cross-legged on the cultivation seat, Gunai closed his eyes and continued to rest. Wang 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 Wang. Just as Gunai was about to enter the state of enlightenment, the extraordinary door of the secret room lit up. Eh, is there something else? Gunai's heart moved. During Gunai's half a year of secluded cultivation. Outside, Maland Elkley had come to see Gunny three times. The first time was naturally because of the incident at Blood Dream Arena. When the news of the Blood Dream Arena spread, it had a huge impact. Gugni heard from Maland Elkley that the Transcendent Association's higher UPS held an important meeting on the night of the third day. At the same time, the higher UPS of the three great empires also held important meetings. The target of the meeting was naturally the sudden appearance of the Blood Dream Arena and the Thulhu creature with the supreme true name the Lord of Nightmare. Then, in less than two days, Maur and Elkley brought the other three powerful oracles to Gunny. Gunai wasn't surprised that the Transcendent Association would find out about his situation after the Blood Dream Arena spread. In their private conversation, Gunai clearly stated the following. I'm just an emotionless tool under the great existence. I have no personal freedom, and even my will has to obey the great lord of nightmares. There was nothing wrong with this. I only have the right to publicize and the ability to give small discounts for the sacrifice. Moreover, the Bloodgate Arena was built and set up by the Nightmare Lord and other powerful followers. I only have a small part of the management rights, and I don't get any benefits. I do all the hard work and dirty work, but they take all the benefits. After all, I'm only a rank 5 transcendent, and I can't even directly listen to the words of that great existence. I can only understand the will of the great lord of nightmares through the information transmitted by other followers. There are many things that I can't say out loud. Once I do, I'll lose my status as a retinue. 
After such an exchange, it was clear that the Great Existence did not care about the mystical world of the Oya continent at all. Only then did the experts relax. For such a Great Existence, even a slight surge of power was enough to turn all efforts into ashes. Fortunately, their world had a relative of that Great Existence, so that Great Existence would not directly destroy the world. Once that Great Existence took action, the entire world would fall into the abyss of death and despair. They had no ability to resist at all, and could only wait for death in despair. In the history of Stellaris, this situation had occurred more than once or twice. The blood-like lesson was a warning to all civilized creatures. The Great Fulha creature was not something that the power of a civilized creature could compete with. Fortunately, this great creature with a shocking name didn't seem to have any intention of destroying the world. Since he found Gunny this time, Maur and Elkley had asked Gunny to lead a team to the world's border to clear out the mutated creatures in the empty source space. Gunai had also made his move twice, killing two powerful Type 6 flesh devourers that were more than 10 meters tall. This giant mountain of flesh devourer was not something an ordinary person could deal with. With its own defensive ability and the tolerance of its thick body, it was indeed very difficult to deal with. Fortunately, this thing wasn't that hard to deal with for Gunai. Gunai slowly cut it up and put all the parts he had cut into the blood sea. Even if it was dozens of meters tall, Gunai would be able to slowly kill it. In addition to this mountain-like creature, he had also secretly collected the corpses of many mutated creatures, which had contributed to the expansion of his blood sea. He just didn't know why Maland Elkley had come to find him this time. As he pondered, Gunai stepped forward and placed his palm on the extraordinary door. He chanted an incantation and slowly opened the extraordinary door. 355 The Mutation Kakahahahaha The transcendent stone door opened. A white-haired, dark gold scholar's robe, Maur and Elkley, was waiting at the door. At the same time, his eyes were slightly sunken, as if he was thinking about something. Professor Molland, is there something you need? Gunai asked. Gunai, I'm really sorry to have disturbed your cultivation this time, but the matter this time is a bit serious. Moland Elkley raised his head and looked at Gunny. Oh. Gunai raised his eyebrows. What's the matter? After pondering for a while, Maur and Elkley spoke in a rather heavy tone. There are some changes in the spatial origin passage at the world's border. Two important checkpoints have been broken through. A large number of mutated creatures have surged into the spatial source passage that is closer to the world level. If we don't get rid of these mutated creatures in time, they will completely occupy these huge spatial source passages. When they go deeper and break through the subsequent passages, they may directly enter the inner area of the Oya continent. You know the situation if we enter the inland area. It's easy to cause panic and death. Yes Gunai nodded. He had seen the 3D images of the Void Origin Passage at the edge of the world. Although there were extraordinary stationed at the key nodes, there were still many of them. However, it was indeed a little difficult for these 20 to 30 extraordinary humans to guard the place compared to the sea of low-level and mid-level mutated creatures, as well as the increasing number of high-level mutated creatures. Furthermore, even if they killed a large number of mutated creatures, if they were not dealt with in time, they would still be devoured by the mutated creatures, and they would become even stronger mutated creatures. Therefore, most of these strongholds were mainly for defense. But now, they couldn't even defend, which showed that the situation was not optimistic. If the mutated creatures were allowed to charge in on a large scale, it would probably end up like what Maur and Elkley had said. Two months ago, I already reported this to the Transcendent Association, but the situation at the front line is a bit tense, so they didn't send any level 6 or peak Transcendent experts. And NBSP, the evil god side was also crazily attacking. They seem to be looking for you and Nigel. I heard that many important places have been infiltrated and attacked. Gunai squinted his eyes. The three northern empires, with the Transcendent Association as the center, launched a war against the churches in the south, 
killing those clergymen and destroying the churches. It was to reduce the power of faith and slow down the speed at which the South Church became a god. And those evil gods would not just sit and wait for death. The Transcendent Association wanted to slow them down, and they naturally had to fight back to slow down Gunny and Nigel's ascension. At the same time, he would also deal a blow to the Transcendent Association's power. Luckily, Gun and Nigel had hidden themselves deep enough, so they didn't get found. Even Gunai had a certain number of people who knew about this place. However, no one knew the exact location. The only person who knew about it was Maura and Elkley. Even if the enemy managed to find their way in, they wouldn't be able to pinpoint Gunai's exact location. The front line is in a tight situation. They can't even deploy a certain amount of defense forces. Gun looked at Moland Elkley. Yes, the battle on the front line is very fierce. You can't imagine how fanatical the believers of the gods are. They fight without fear of death. Even if they die, they will stab you before they die. Moreover, you also know that those powerful oracles will give some of their power to those extraordinary people who have absolute faith. At the critical moment, their divine power will burst out and burn their own life, which will cause great harm to us. Although some people on our side have also obtained the divine power given by the oracles, most of them are using it to save their lives, not to die. Those guys whose faith causes their souls to be distorted are really not easy to deal with. Muland Elkley shook his head slightly. Indeed, Gunai slightly nodded. Gunai had a deep understanding of the power of divine power. The Transcendent Association can't seem to transfer any peak experts at the advanced stage of the Transcendent Realm. Therefore, I can only look for you this time. Muland Elkley looked at Gunny apologetically. After all, the extraordinary masters can't enter those areas. Only the top high-level extraordinary can clear them. Those guards are at the sixth step. Although they are pretty strong, they are still far from being able to clear out a large number of them. Yes, no problem. After thinking for a while, Gunny looked at Maura and Elkley and said. Professor Maland, I have more time this time. I'm preparing to clean up the many mutated creatures in the passage in one go. When Maland Elkley heard this, his expression immediately brightened. The last two times, Gunai had cleared out the meaty creatures and returned. He hadn't done a large-scale operation. This time, he was going to do a large-scale operation, which was completely different. After all, it's not a good idea to keep cleaning up like this. After this large-scale cleaning, I'll have a long period of time to cultivate in peace. At the same time, I'll also break through and become a master. Gunai said. When Muland Elkley heard this, he smiled in embarrassment. They were embarrassed to ask Gunai to help them clean up the mutated creatures in the space channel at the edge of the world. For Gunai, this was a large-scale clean-up. On one hand, Gun needed the flesh of these creatures. They could provide a lot of blood when digested, and the flesh could be the energy and material for expanding the blood sea. On the other hand, Gunai had just said that this large-scale clean-up would give Gunai enough time to break through and become a master. After all, it wasn't a good thing to keep doing this. Moreover, if Gunai became a master, he wouldn't be able to go in and clean up again. Then I'll have to trouble you, Sir Gunai. Muland Elkley said. In addition, Zhen Zhen. Muland Elkley said after some thought. Some time ago, through my observation, I found that the mutated creatures seemed to have opened up a special passage in a strange place far away from the spatial source passage at the edge of the world. Then, a sea of mutated creatures swarmed over. Even now, there are still a large number of mutated creatures surging in. With so many mutated creatures surging in, this density is very likely to give birth to a mutated creature close to the extraordinary master level. But a mutated creature of this level shouldn't be much of a threat to you, Sir Gun. There are still some threats, but they aren't hard to deal with, Gunai replied. If you aren't afraid of a powerful creature of this level, then I'm much more at ease. As he pondered, Maura and Elkley spoke steadily. 
the situation there is very strange. I think there might be something special in that area. Otherwise, there would not be so many mutated creatures swarming there. In the spatial source passage at the edge of the world, there is a high probability that something from above the stars will crash into the spatial source space at the edge of the world. I just don't know what it is. If possible, you can take a look at the place after clearing out the mutated creatures. Of course, if you find anything good, it will belong to you. Maland Elkley said. Although Maland Elkley said so, Gunny didn't take it to heart, because he guessed that it was probably a meteorite from the stars. Before, Gunai had seen the wreckage of an outer realm meteorite crashing into the spatial origin passage. Then I'll make some preparations. I'll go to the spatial node and enter the spatial source passage at the edge of the world. Gunai said. 356 devoured by the Blood Sea. After about an hour. At the edge of the small world in the starry sky watchtower. A five meter tall extraordinary vortex gate stood there quietly. The scorching sun was in the sky. Looking out from here, one could see a faint halo blooming at the world barrier in the extreme distance. Only Gunny and Maland Elkley were around. Be careful when you enter. Yes, I know. In addition, this is the 3D projection of the spatial source passage in the surrounding area. As he spoke, Maland Elkley took out something that looked like a gold bar, slightly bigger than a palm. Gunai took it. He could feel the abundant source power and the complex vein lines. Through the input of source energy, you can activate a three-dimensional source energy projection and then know your location. Then I'll go in. After putting away the source power projector, Gunny saluted Maur and Elkley slightly before jumping into the vortex of the extraordinary door. Swish. As time and space twisted, Gunai could feel his position being rapidly shifted. A moment later, Gunai landed. Gunai steadied himself and looked around. What he saw was a space-time tunnel that was like transparent glass. To be more precise, it was the spatial source passage. The empty origin passage here was about 7 to 8 meters in diameter. Both sides twisted and extended outwards. At the same time, Gunai could also feel the dense origin power flowing through the tunnel. In the mystical world of the Oya continent, they advanced through the starry sky. The world barrier would absorb the source energy that came into contact with it and slowly transport it through these space source channels to the entire Oya continent. Normally, the origin power in the starry sky was very thin. Even if it was absorbed by the world barrier and transmitted through the tunnel, it was almost inaudible. However, the problem was that the mystical world of Oya wasn't located in the starry sky with thin source power. Instead, they were in the source tide. This caused the origin power in this spatial origin passage to be rather dense. And in the next few decades, the origin power would become more and more intense. This mysterious origin tide would allow the mystical world of Oya to absorb a massive amount of origin power, and even directly increase the level of the world's energy, so that the extraordinary creatures and plants in the extraordinary world would be extremely rich. At the same time, a high concentration of source energy would make it easier for human extraordinaries to cultivate. Perhaps, in the next few decades, the number of extraordinary humans in the Oya continent would increase by several times, and the number of extraordinary masters would also continue to increase. This was a good thing. However, the problem was that it would also attract some uninvited guests such as visitors from foreign lands, evil gods, or even rulers who liked an environment rich in origin power, and even more terrifying old gods, also known as the so-called old gods. Fortune and misfortune always depended on each other. Gunai turned around and looked at the vortex for a while before moving in the direction of the source power. I'm still weak now, and it's not easy for me to control the ancient shadow door. It's best if I absorb the flesh and blood of great rulers or old gods like the ruler of shadows and then control the ancient shadow door that would be better. Gunai thought to himself. Gunai had been reading the many books he had obtained from the Don Owl origin race of the Holy Feather Dark origin regarding the ancient shadow door. The ancient shadow door was an extraordinary and unique door. 
it wasn't too much to say that it was a world-class mystical item. It was much more powerful than a destructive mystical item. It had the ability to travel through space and time, and it also had the projection ability of a true god's shadow. Moreover, this kind of projection will not be suppressed by a world. Even if it is suppressed, it will only be a slight suppression of strength. Once I can control the ancient shadow door, my power projection will be able to project itself to many transcendent worlds, and then build the blood dream arena. At the very least, hundreds of extraordinary worlds around Granton, big or small, would be sacrificed to the Lord of Nightmare. When I become an extraordinary master and absorb the corresponding ruler's flesh and blood, I'll be able to use this projection door accordingly. After some thought, Gunai gradually calmed down. They were about to reach the entrance of the first node. After a few minutes. At the location of the passage's node. Gunai stopped. What he saw was a layer of strange energy nodes that were about half a meter thick. On the other side of the energy was a passage that was far wider than the one Gunai was in. This was a medium-sized spatial source passage with a diameter of 25 to 26 meters. The small space passage Gunai was in was only 7 or 8 meters in diameter, and the narrower ones were only 3 or 4 meters. At this time, the energy node had blocked the entrance to the small space source passage leading to Gunai. On the barrier of the energy barrier, a large number of mutated creatures were crawling on it, constantly devouring and absorbing the energy of the energy barrier. Fortunately, the flowing source power was constantly replenishing the energy barrier. He didn't have to worry too much about these creatures breaking through the node in the short term. Most of the mutated creatures in this area were at level 1 or 2, with a small number of level 3 and 4 or 5 level 4. However, as far as the eye could see, there were a large number of mutated creatures all over the passageway that extended to both sides of the medium-sized spatial source passageway. When the mutated creatures saw Gun, they let out all kinds of sharp growls and twisted sounds. Very soon, you will all be mine Gunai thought. Gunai already knew how to open these nodes. He placed one hand on the energy barrier and quickly began to construct a spell. After a few seconds. Swish. Along with the spell and origin power fluctuations, they bloomed. A door about two meters tall and one meter wide opened. The mutated creatures that had been waiting outside excitedly swarmed toward Gun. However, there were too many of them, and the doorway was too small. This caused them to all be blocked at the position of the doorway for a while, and not a single one of them could enter. This scene made Gunai both angry and laugh. I'll help you guys. With a thought. The sound of waves came from Gunai. Then, the sea of blood within ten meters of Gunai appeared. Then, a tentacle as thick as Gunai's arm shot out and grabbed a stage two wailing suture monster. He suddenly pulled. He directly pulled it out of the squeezed doorway and then dragged it into the sea of blood. Howl, 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 howl. The stage 2 wailing stitched monster felt the threat of death and let out a shrill scream like a pig being slaughtered. Then, he was drowned by the sea of blood. At the same time, a large number of mutated creatures swarmed in from the door. More than 20 tentacles of the blood sea appeared around Gunai. One by one, the low-level and mid-level mutated creatures were pulled into the sea of blood. As of now, Gunai's blood sea cultivation manual the divine scripture of the blood source C, was already at level 5. Not to mention the low tier, mid tier, third tier, and fourth tier creatures, even the fifth tier and sixth tier mutated creatures would find it difficult to resist the pull of the blood sea tentacles if they were not strong enough. Anyone that was pulled into the blood sea would basically be quickly suppressed and digested by the blood sea. Gunai didn't even need to do it himself. When the blood sea bloomed in the surroundings, it would extend its tentacles and actively pull these mutated creatures. 357 Chapter 5 Biometal There were many mutated creatures. However, Gunai's blood sea was clearly faster. In less than a minute, two to three hundred mutated creatures had been pulled into the sea of blood. The mutated creatures at the entrance had all been cleared out by Gunai. 
After entering the medium dimensional passage, Gunai closed the door to prevent any mutated creatures from sneaking in. He took out the projection Muron had given him and opened it, carefully browsing through it. Half a minute later, Gun came up with a clear route. According to this clearing route, we can clear more than 95% of the main air passages those small and many air passages won't have two powerful mutated creatures furthermore, there are only a few of them, so it's a waste of time. There's no need to clean up the areas that are too far out. The passage is unstable, and there will be mutated creatures that are level 7 and above. After all, there are no limits to the transcendent realm in the border areas. I'm not weak now but I'm only a late-stage level 6 Transcendent. I'll still be injured if I encounter a powerful 7th level Transcendent Grandmaster. It's better to be safe. Begin cleaning. Following the planned route, Gun released the Sea of Blood and began to clean up the mutated creatures. Compared to other people's slaughter mode, Gunai's Blood Ocean method of killing without leaving any corpses was the most effective. With Gunai's tyrannical strength, he had cleared the path as if he was cutting grass. Five or six hours later. At the edge of a huge passage, Gunai was hiding. About 200 meters in front of Gunai. A huge mountain of flesh almost blocked the entire tunnel with a diameter of more than 30 meters. It was a wall of flesh and blood. Its entire body was covered in arms, claws, feet, and tentacles. There were also all kinds of big and small blood red, golden, normal black, and grey-white eyes. There were also many abominable, grotesque, and twisted faces that exuded evil and palpitating at the same time. His aura had also expanded to the peak of a rank 6 transcendent. If it were not for the spatial source passage suppressing the transcendent realm, it would have already advanced to transcendent rank 7 with its huge body. The Flesh Devourer was larger than any mutated creature Gunai had ever encountered. One of the Flesh Devourers Gunai had dealt with was 15 or 16 meters in diameter. One had a diameter of over 20 meters. However, compared to this humongous Flesh Devourer that was practically squeezed into the tunnel, it was a little insignificant. More importantly, Gunai had a very strange feeling about the devouring of flesh. Its skin wasn't as red as the two flesh devourers Gunai had dealt with. Instead, it was more of a grey metal, and even had a slight feeling of matte metal. The flesh devourer was wriggling along the tunnel. Gunai was at its tail. As he pondered, he took out the source power projector that Muron had given him, and turned it off a moment later. There's a slight metallic feel to it. At the same time, this place is also close to the strange place that Professor Milland mentioned. I guessed that a meteorite might have fallen there. It's possible. Meteorites that fall from the starry sky have been washed by the extraordinary starry sky. The quality of the metal material and the extraordinary characteristics it contains are very powerful. After it seeped into the empty source space, the metal was devoured by these mutated creatures resulting in the skin of this mutated creature having metallic characteristics. It is not surprising. Then, he turned his attention to the mutated flesh devourer. Even if I use the greater and lesser thunder flame curse to kill this big guy, it won't be easy for the sea of blood to swallow it. In that case, it's more convenient to cut the Kazaya apart with the magic blade curse. Gunai squinted his eyes and said. With a thought. Shua 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 Shua. A large number of demonic blade curses that contained the profound meaning of destruction slashed towards the giant flesh devourer. During this half year, Gunai's CO soul had been cultivating destruction power Upanishad, which made his progress as fast as dark power Upanishad. The level 5 curse of the devil blade, with the support of Gunai's mana, was now comparable to a high level magic spell. In addition, he had the power of destruction. Its power had naturally reached the level of a low rank mystical engravings spell. Chi 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 Chi. The demonic blade curse easily cut through the giant flesh devourer's metallic skin. A large amount of blood burst out, and at the same time, broken limbs and remains fell down. Shua Shua Shua. Roar Roar. In an instant, 
hundreds of strange roars containing source power sound waves burst out. This voice contained a large amount of soul attacks. Ordinary high-level extraordinaries didn't have powerful soul defense abilities, so it was really difficult for them to resist the wails of this large number of soul attacks. However, thanks to the true netherworld origin fruit, Gunai's soul had already formed a strong soul defense. Adding on the fact that he was cultivating the Dusk Star Source Cannon, Gunai's soul had already turned into many star souls. Gunai had placed them in various places, and the extremely condensed star soul's defense had reached another level. Gunai ignored the 30-meter tall blood mountain. At the same time, the hundreds of eyes on the giant flesh devourer's tail all burned with anger as they focused on Gunai. Gunai didn't care about the gaze of the strange eye. He continued to cast the magic blade curse to cut the big guy. At the same time, the puppet's secret thread was continuously released, and the blood sea around him surged. After the severed limbs and remains were pulled over by the puppet's secret thread, they were quickly devoured by the blood sea. The flesh devourer was huge, but it was too cumbersome. Although he had some long-range attacks, they were useless in front of Gunai. In front of Gunai, he was nothing more than a life target. After absorbing such a huge mountain of flesh, my blood sea can expand a lot. As he cut and absorbed, Gunai began to think. A minute later, the giant flesh devourer, which had been cut in half, finally recognized reality. He was no match for this human spellcaster. Hence, he began to rapidly climb forward. However, he could not escape at all as he was too slow. Five or six minutes later, the giant flesh devourer had been easily cut up by Gunai and then devoured. The sea of blood continued to churn as it devoured and digested the corpse of the giant flesh devourer. Although it was only a sixth grade transcendent, it was large enough. The blood sea was still digesting. Gunai's expression changed and he stopped moving forward. He flipped his hand. A grey metal plate the size of half a table and the thickness of a palm appeared in Gunai's hand. This metal plate was left behind after the giant flesh devourer's body was digested. If it was just an ordinary metal plate, it would be fine. But the problem was that this was no ordinary metal plate. This metal plate was filled with an aura of life and a rich transcendent characteristic, as if it was alive. In the entire transcendent world, only mechanical lives could have both characteristics. 358 Mechanical Spaceship A metallic version of a mechanical life? Gunai squinted his eyes as he looked at the metal plate. After carefully examining it, Gunai put it away. Then, he flipped his hand again, and another palm-sized metal plate appeared. It was made of the same material as the large life metal plate. Then, as if performing a magic trick, he took out the twisted metal tube, broken metal glass, source power transmission line, and some other small metal parts. The thing that this big guy devoured was not just a little bit or two. There was a large number of them, and they were all modeled and complicated. It was as if it had swallowed the wreckage of a broken machine. After inspecting the many parts, Gunai's brows furrowed. Then, he looked into the tunnel, which was the strange place that Senior Milland had mentioned. If this metal plate was a little smaller, it would have been fine, but its physical strength is huge, and it has a lot of corresponding parts. Previously, I guessed that a meteorite might have fallen into the depths of the empty origin space. From the looks of it now, that strange place is very likely to be a mechanical life form. It could even be a mechanical spaceship that came from a foreign space. Mechanical life forms are known as catastrophes. The only purpose of their existence was to survive, reproduce, and grow stronger. They even developed a mechanical civilization that countless transcendent beings fear. A large number of transcendent worlds were reduced to ruins by their mechanical bodies and the artillery fire of their mechanical technology civilization. After that, the entire world became a mechanical lair. If this is a mechanical spaceship from a foreign space for exploration and positioning, then... Thinking of this, Gunai's face slightly changed. In other words, our world might have been discovered by mechanical lives. 
Hu hu hu. With a light breath, Gu Nai tried to calm himself down. But there are other possibilities. After all, it's a bayan. I only got the remains of a metal plate, even if it's an automaton ship, there's a high chance that it's an crashed ship. It might not be a mechanical invasion, but it might also be a mechanical fall that happened to fall here. No matter what, Ying Luo has to go over and take a good look. Gunai's body flickered, and he began to speed up. Gunagaka quickly headed towards the strange core of the sea of mutated creatures. At the same time, it also began to collect the mutated creatures. The further he went, the more he discovered that there were many of the mutated creatures. They were so densely packed that they almost filled the entire passageway. If other people were to come and clean up, even if they killed these mutated creatures, they would not be able to clean up the corpses. After all, there were too many of them. As for the corpses that could not be cleaned up, they could only be used as an abundant source of food for the subsequent mutated creatures to strengthen themselves. On the contrary, it would create even more mutated creatures. Gunai, on the other hand, was able to absorb the energy while cleaning, which was much more effective. While he was cleaning up, he found many other parts. In the face of so many mutated creatures, Gunai's cleaning took three to four hours. Deep in the tunnel, boom, boom, roar, roar, bang, 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 bang. Rumbles explosions, and roars were heard. An intense battle was going on. One side was Gun, while the other side was fifteen powerful mutated creatures. Four wailing-stitched monsters. There were five shadow-stitched monsters. There were four queen bee-stitched monsters. There were also three mutated creatures with wings that looked like stitched octopuses. These mutated creatures all had the aura of a peak rank six. If that was the case, they would have been easily cut into pieces by the powerful penetration of the demonic blade curse, and then devoured by Gunny. However, the problem was that these mutated creatures were actually able to make use of the biometal. The biometals were sewn into parts of their bodies by their innate abilities, turning into metal armors. At this moment, the fifteen mutated creatures were all covered in highly sealed biometal armor. Although it was stitched up haphazardly, the style was not very beautiful, and could even be said to be quite ugly. However, the vital metal's defensive power was rather strong. This made it difficult for Gunai to attack with the sharp demonic blade curse. Gunai had tested the strength of these biometals when he was cleaning up. Even if the armor was devil gold rank, Gun's magic blade curse could still leave a clear mark on it. However, Gunai could only leave a faint mark on the biometal, and the biometal could absorb origin power to recover quickly. It could recover on its own. This was also the unique extraordinary characteristic of the vitality metal. The vitality metal of unknown material had the strength of a top-tier magical gold level tank armor. This made it difficult for Gunai's demon blade curse to kill these guys. The defensive strength of these metals is indeed quite good. The forging ability of the mechanical lives toward metals is indeed not something that ordinary extraordinary industrial systems can compare to. Gunai thought to himself as he attacked. The experiment is almost done. It's time to get rid of these guys. The devil blade curse was a very common technique Gunai used. If he wanted to kill these guys wearing the biometal armor, Gunai had plenty of ways. With a thought. Z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z. The dense black lightning wreaked havoc. It was a level seven high grade spell, little thunder flame spell, and it contained the profound meaning of darkness and destruction. With one attack, the shadow stitched monster that wanted to stick close to him wailed, and its aura dropped sharply. Then he cast a little thunder flame spell, and the shadow chimera died on the spot. Then. A large number of little thunder flame curses burst out crazily. Chi 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 chi. At the same time, screams and wails rose and fell. Such penetrating attacks were very effective against these mutated creatures. After a few seconds, the fifteen mutant stitched monsters around him had all been killed by Gun. 
Gunai waved his hand. These mutated stitched monsters were easily absorbed into the sea of blood. The corpses under their armor would be digested by the blood sea, while the vital metal would be preserved. Then, Gunai looked around. There were no more mutated creatures in the vicinity. The mutated creatures in the area had been mostly cleared out by Gun. With a slight breath. In the corner, Gunai was looking at the core of the area with a serious expression. In a space that had been distorted and cracked by the collision, and even the internal space had bloomed. A silver-gray, dullish, damaged mechanical spaceship lay there quietly. The main body's outline and frame were basically still intact, and a large number of mechanical fragments were scattered in the surrounding two to three hundred meters. The entire mechanical spaceship was emitting a strong life force. It was no wonder that the mutated creatures would swarm over. But because of the dense life force, Gunai wasn't sure if there was any danger inside the ship. Even with the Eye of Destiny, Gunai could only see a large amount of life force. The metal of this mechanical life form was very special. Gunai didn't approach. If there was a star annihilating cannon, magic cannon, source power cannon or something similar aiming at him, he would definitely be shot to death if he rashly went up. Gunai opened his system. 359 Mechanical Angel, 2 in 1. He entered the side adventure page. There was nothing inside, no fortuitous encounters. Just because there are no fortuitous encounters doesn't mean that there are no treasures inside. Gunai pondered. If a child was holding a crown that had become a god, the miracle system would definitely not display the crown as part of the miracle. The miracle system isn't a robbery system, and it's definitely not a dog-eat-dog -dog system. An item that is in someone else's possession will not become the target of a side quest. The adventures and content displayed are all ownerless items. You can get them directly if you go there. There's no information about the side adventure at the moment. Or there are no valuable treasures in this broken spaceship. Although this metal fragment is relatively rare, it's still just a fragment. In the system's eyes, it shouldn't be considered a treasure. Or, there are other people in the spaceship, or rather, intelligent foreign life forms. The spaceship and the precious things in it belong to them, so the miracle system didn't show them. However, Ying Luo. Gunai squinted his eyes and looked at the wreckage. In the area of the spaceship wreckage, there were only seven or eight mutated life forms. A large number of mutated life forms were all outside the main area of the spaceship. None of them were close to the spaceship wreckage. The mutated creatures that they had absorbed the biometal to sew into their armor were also scattered around the outer area. None of the mutated creatures approached the mechanical spaceship. This was why Gunai was so careful. It was clearly very useful to them, but they didn't dare to get too close. This was very thought-provoking. After some thought, Gunai sat in a corner and began to chant. After a while, as black light surged, the aura of a strange dimensional space bloomed. A dark-skinned, burly, level 4 extraordinary goblin warrior was summoned by Gun. Gunai had learned many of the spells that would be used. For example, all sorts of spells to summon creatures. Oak. 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 The moment he came out, the goblin warrior shouted in a low voice. The goblin warmer in his hand also made loud banging sounds as it hit the ground. Let's go take a look at the mechanical wreckage over there Gunai ordered. Oak, oak, oak. After responding to Gun, the foreign goblin warrior walked toward the mechanical wreckage. At the same time, Gun used linking eye to focus part of his vision on the foreign goblin warrior. After turning the corner, the foreign goblin warrior was about 150 to 160 meters away from the mechanical remains. Swish! The highly concentrated energy beam suddenly exploded. The goblin warrior was unable to dodge, and the energy beam directly washed its face. Pang! The massive body of the foreign goblin warrior fell to the ground. At the same time, his entire head was completely melted, turning him into a headless corpse. There's indeed danger. Gunai's eyes narrowed. A very powerful ray. 
it almost instantly melted the head of a fourth-rank foreign goblin warrior. After a moment of thought, Gunai began to chant the spell again. A moment later, another fourth-rank foreign goblin warrior appeared. This time, Gunai placed a sea of blood around his body. Let's go to the mechanical wreckage over there. Gunai ordered. Oak, oak, oak. The second goblin warrior walked toward the wreckage with Gun's shield over his head. When they arrived at the location of the first foreign goblin warrior. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
The speed of the mechanical angel was very fast, so fast that it was inconceivable. The distance of more than 300 meters and the area outside the corner was covered in a little more than a second. Die! Die! The mechanical angel roared as it swung its two-meter-long sword at Gun. The sword light was so bright that the blade was so hot that large amounts of origin power evaporated. This made the fire power Upanishad bloom crazily. Gunai's body turned into a blood-red light as he dodged. Boom! The source power within a 50-meter radius of the magic spell sword exploded, turning into flames. As the sword descended, the surrounding area was transformed into a sea of fire. Gunai landed a hundred meters away and quickly used the Great Thunder Fire Curse. Chi 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 Because Little Thunder Flame Curse had been idle for a while, it was now level 7. As for the Thunder Fire Curse, he had been using it continuously ever since he obtained it. As a result, the level of the Great Thunder Fire Curse had already reached the terrifying level 8. The Thunder Fire Curse itself was a spell with secret engravings. After reaching grade 8, its power was no longer weaker than an ordinary forbidden spell. With the support of the destruction and darkness intense, the penetrative power was naturally raised to a new level. Die! The mechanical wings flapped in the air. The roar of the source power furnace was deafening. The mechanical angel charged at Gunny again. You'll be the one to die. The thunder fire curse landed on the mechanical angel. The Great Thunder Flame Curse was like a black bolt of lightning. Every time it landed, it would cause an extreme explosion of origin power. This mechanical angel, to be precise, was just a mechanical angel battle armor. The one who was truly controlling it was the extraordinary human wearing the mechanical angel battle armor. Any other means of attack would only be blocked by the armor of the mechanical angel. The Thunder Fire Curse was the best way to deal with this kind of metal armor, even if it was made of vital metal. Three Great Thunder Fire Curses fell in succession. Gun could clearly see that the Mech Angel's flight path was beginning to drop. The penetrative power of the Great Thunder Flame Curse was so great that even a transcendent master would be killed on the spot if he were to withstand the attack. The power of a forbidden spell was no laughing matter. Roar! He looked at the descending mechanical angel. Gun's demonic CO soul used its devouring ability on the mechanical angel. The foreign expert, who couldn't even control his mechanical angel battle armor after being bombarded by the thunder fire curse, naturally couldn't block the powerful devouring of a peak stage 6 devil lord. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. His soul was like a stream of water that was quickly swallowed by the CO soul. Pang. There was a dull sound. The mechanical angel crashed heavily into the wall of the ethereal passage. The foreign expert in the mechanical angel battle armor had already lost all signs of life. His soul had been devoured by the CO soul of the devil, and he couldn't be more dead. In the short exchange of blows, the extraordinary who was controlling the mechanical angel had already died at the hands of Gunny. He looked at the mechanical angel and then at the wreckage of the spaceship in the distance. Gunai didn't let down his guard. As Gun chanted, another tier 4 foreign goblin warrior was summoned. After casting a sea of blood shield on him, he was stunned. Let's go to the wreckage and see if there are any other living creatures Gunai ordered. Oak, oak, oak. The foreign goblin warrior, carrying a rusty steel blade, walked towards the wreckage. Gunai was on alert and his CO soul was quickly digesting the soul of the foreign master. As he digested the soul, a sea of information bloomed in Gunai's mind. As he digested this information, Gunai's expression remained calm, but his heart was in turmoil. A few minutes later, the blade-wielding goblin warrior circled around the mechanical spaceship a few times. After confirming that there was no danger, he returned. Oak. 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 The foreign goblin warrior called out to Gun. Gunai also sensed the message, which meant the ship was no longer in danger. Gun waved his hand, and the foreign goblin warrior quickly disappeared. Then, Gun looked at the foreign champion wearing the life mechanical angel armor. You're really unlucky, Gunai chuckled. Fortunately, 
we met here. If we were outside, I would probably be the one dead. The name of this foreign powerhouse was Ye Lysandros Entello. He was a transcendent master from the high dimensional transcendent world Holy Hijar. That's right, this super unlucky fool named Ye Li was a powerful level 8 transcendent master. Even in their large transcendent world, he was a very powerful existence. He was called a super unlucky fool. It was because the guy's series of unfortunate encounters made Gunai wonder if he was unlucky. Half a year ago, when this Yali was driving the mechanical spaceship and passing through the origin path, he was accidentally sent off course and ended up in this part of the universe. He was driving a mechanical spaceship, so it was unlikely that he would directly enter the space tunnel at the edge of the Oya continent. However, the problem was that this unlucky fellow's mechanical spaceship had a problem and had broken down. Then, Ye Lai found a world whistling toward him. And this time, it was the Oya continent. Normally, entering the Oya continent in this way would be like a meteorite falling on the Oya continent. It was just like how the angels had entered the Oya continent. As a transcendent master, with his own strength and powerful survival ability, there would not be any problems. As a result, this unlucky person's unlucky characteristics started to go crazy. After that, he arrived at this mechanical spaceship and coincidentally bumped into the area where the spatial source passage had appeared. This collision had seriously injured Yali. He could still recover from serious injuries. However, this space source passage had absolute suppression on transcendent masters. Once a transcendent master entered, it was as if a mountain was pressing down on him. It was impossible for him to move. The helpless Yali could only do one thing, and that was to let his realm collapse, falling from the 8th rank to the 6th rank. Only then could he break free from the shackles. Even if he had fallen to the 6th rank, he still had the mechanical angel battle armor, which could still guarantee that he had the strength of a transcendent master. However, the drop in realm wasn't something you could drop just because you wanted to. There was a high probability that someone would die if they self-destructed their soul source core. Hence, Yali could only slowly and unceasingly dismember his soul source core. This way, he would be able to recondense an extraordinary master's soul source core in the future. He had spent several months and put in a lot of effort. Gunai was here. After that, the rest of the matter was clear. Seeing Gunai's probing, Yali could only quickly mobilize his own power to perform a large-scale stripping. This caused him to fall to level 6 transcendent, and at the same time, his strength was greatly reduced. He couldn't even use his profound and origin power. He could only use the power of the mechanical angel battle armor to fight. But how could he be Gunai's opponent? In the end, this unlucky guy fell at Gunai's hands. In terms of bad luck, I'm willing to call you the most unlucky Gunai side as he looked at the charred body. 361 The Advantage of the Angel Battle Armor He sat cross-legged beside the mechanical angel battle armor for half an hour. Gunai slowly opened his eyes. During that half an hour, Gugni carefully digested the soul memories of the unlucky Yali. Gunai knew even more details about his soul. He arrived beside the mechanical angel battle armor. Gunai reached out with one hand. Then, Gunai started to chant a spell. After a few seconds. Wang 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 wang. The angel battle armor let out a roar as the source power furnace was activated. It was followed by a ka 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 sound. After a while. The mechanical angel battle armor was like the metal of a transformer. It quickly retracted and finally turned into a metal arm guard. Gun waved his hand and the mechanical armband flew into his hand. Looking at the mechanical armband, Gun smiled. This is a priceless treasure Gunai sighed. This mechanical angel battle armor. It had a similar design to a full body armor. In the age of cavalry in the Oya continent, these heavy armored cavalry who were fully armored from head to toe had dominated the battlefield on the plains for thousands of years. With the gradual increase of extraordinaries, as well as the popularization and development of firearms. 
the era of the flood of cavalry gradually faded from the stage of history. However, even so, powerful extraordinary defensive equipment was still necessary for extraordinaries. It was the same for the black iron, magic copper, mithril, magic gold, and even legendary equipment of higher levels. As for the mechanical angel battle armor, it was a combination of techniques and techniques of a higher level. The first was the biometal. There was no such thing in the Oya continent. However, the transcendent world Holy Hajar had many of them. According to Yalai's memory, there seemed to be a world war between a divine kingdom and mechanical lives in Holy Hajar. And this time, Yali had crossed the star source light path to participate in another war in the divine kingdom that they belonged to. Some used biometals as the base material. Through high intensity forging, the life metal's material quality and extraordinary characteristics would be raised to the extreme. After a series of delicate and high intensity industrial production. In addition, the high dimensional transcendent world had already easily mastered the technology of the source power furnace. And so, the mechanical angel battle armor that used the angel form as the template was created. Other than the mechanical angel battle armor, there was also the mechanical demon armor, the mechanical dragon armor, the mechanical titan battle armor and so on. In the high dimensional transcendent world, the development of the origin power furnace, metal smelting, transcendent cultivation system, and esoteric scriptures had all been done through the efforts of countless transcendent scholars and geniuses over countless years. They had already reached a height that was difficult to look up to. It was not a difficult task to smith these powerful rare grade equipment. When he started to sense all the information from Yali's soul, Gunai was surprised at first. However, after thinking about it carefully, he realized that this was a necessity of history. There was no need to mention anything else. Just the changes that happened in the Oya continent over the past few decades were enough to prove that even in this extraordinary world, a series of world transformations were also going on violently. According to the trajectory of peace, in a few decades, the three empires' railways would be built to all corners of the Oya continent. Those alien races would be killed by guns, cannons, and even more powerful extraordinaries if they were unwilling to surrender. They would know what it meant to change. As for the foreign races that lowered their heads, their territories automatically became a province of the empire. Looking back, the ocean world would also become a fishing ground for humans to catch fish with steel ships. As for the deep sea alien races, if they had stayed in the deep sea obediently, it would have been fine. If they dared to resist, tens of thousands of deep sea torpedoes would bombard their habitat into ruins turning their race into a species on the verge of extinction. When the steam technology of the Oya continent underwent another revolution, the source energy teleportation technology would also enter a new stage in history. The Oya continent was about to start a new era of direct contact between the extraordinary worlds. In fact, this could be seen from many ancient historical traces before humans entered this level. Many powerful races had already built huge teleportation arrays. For example, the ancient dragon race in the Dragon Head Port. It was possible that at that time, the Dragon Clan had just built a teleportation array from another world to enter the Oya continent. And the ocean of the Oya continent might just be their playground. In any case, after entering the steampunk era, no matter how fast or slow the pace of this world was, as long as humans didn't go extinct, they would always follow a similar trajectory and move forward step by step. The large transcendent world known as the Holy Feather Dark Source that Gun knew of was just like this. Their transcendent world source power furnace technology was very advanced, and it could even be built into a huge tower of mechanical source power furnaces. The destroyed Arismede Kingdom of the Source of God was the same, or even higher. It was said to be an endless, high-dimensional transcendent world, Holy Hajar, which was hundreds of millions of times larger than major transcendent worlds. It had already developed to the peak level in all aspects. In a high-dimensional transcendent world like Holy Hajar, there was a perfect combination of many transcendent technologies the mechanical angel battle armor. 
This was also the inevitable development of the steampunk transcendent world. This mechanical angel battle armor's defense is at the legendary stage. It seems like I have a set of legendary defensive equipment. Gunai chuckled. And its function is far more than that. In addition to its powerful defensive ability, it also has a self-recovery ability. Even if it is damaged in battle, it can recover by itself as it absorbs source power. Furthermore, it's only a battle armor. It won't conflict with the magic shield. At the same time, it also has a very powerful function, which is flight. Gunai's eyes narrowed. After reaching the Transcendent Master Realm, learning some flying-type incantations, martial techniques, or awakening the corresponding abilities would make flying very easy. Even powerful Transcendent Masters could fly by relying on their powerful Soul Source cores to isolate themselves from the world's attraction. However, a Transcendent Master's flying speed was not considered fast. Gunai had seen it clearly just now. The flying speed of this mechanical angel was rather shocking. If Gun became a Transcendent Master, he would have the ability to fly. With the mechanical angel armor, his flying speed would be even more shocking. In the realm of a Transcendent Master, one's flying speed was a very important standard to measure. He could fly faster than others, and he had the initiative to fight or escape. If one flew slower than others, they would be chased to death if they couldn't win. This was especially important for a mage. As long as he was fast enough and had a long casting distance, he could easily kill his enemies from hundreds of meters away. And the enemy couldn't even touch Gunai. Even if he became an extraordinary master. The long-range spellcaster Lamega still had a powerful advantage that other types of extraordinaries could not compare to. 362 High-Grade Engraving Potion he equipped the mechanical angel's arm guard on his right arm, then covered it with his robe and began to use the origin to nurture it. After a few days of origin power and devil contact, Gunai was able to use the mech angel armor freely. This would allow Gun to fly before becoming a transcendent master with the mech angel armor. At the same time, he had the combat power of a transcendent master. After all, ordinary transcendent masters could fly. Before. Although Gunai wasn't weaker than an ordinary Transcendent Master, he couldn't catch up with the other party. After that, he began to collect the remains of the living machines. While they were searching through the mechanical wreckage, Gunai was also searching for Yali's important memories. The first was naturally the high rank engraving potion. It wouldn't be long before Gun became a master. Now that he was safe and his strength was steadily increasing, Gunai naturally thought about his own soul. Gunai could already feel the bloodline of the then Aether in his body, and it was about to transform into a lord. As for his soul, it was still at the peak of the elite grade. Gunir naturally needed more powerful soul engraving potions to advance his soul to the commander and lord levels. Gunai had learned about it from the Sacred Feather Dark Source Continent. The major transcendent world of Holy Feather's Darkness Origin also had soul-type signet potions that could allow one soul to reach the elite grade. In fact, the engraving potion market was very developed. However, their world didn't have a high-level soul engraving potion that could transform the soul from elite to commander. The rune potion was already the limit of their world's potion research. After a thorough examination of Yali's soul, Gunai shook his head. Although there are high-level engravings potions in the higher dimension world of Holy Hajar, the number of these engravings potions is quite small. Moreover, they are all controlled by those divine kingdoms. Not to mention extraordinary masters, even experts at the level of oracles can only get a small number of them. It seems like it's basically impossible to obtain soul-type high-grade signet potions from other extraordinary worlds. I still need to study it myself, Gunai pondered. First, I need more advanced and more powerful pharmaceutical classics to hack and level up. Only then can it be used to research the pure water of life from my elven tree of life and a large number of powerful extraordinary materials. From the looks of it, this first step doesn't seem to work. I don't have any impressive pharmaceutics manuals with me right now. 
I can ask the Morning Sunlight Origin Races Hall Master on the Sacred Feathers Dark North Continent for help. I hope they have them. The second is Wufu. Gunai's eyes narrowed. From Ali's mind, I found some coordinates of the teleportation array in the higher dimension world of Holy Hajar. They are free coordinates at the edge of the battlefield, which are very suitable for me to enter Holy Hajar. Even if a transcendent master enters Holy Hijar, he can only be considered a small soldier. Only those who have reached the level of an oracle are barely qualified to enter Holy Hijar. On the battlefield of Holy Hijar, killing enemies and handing over their corpses can be rewarded with battle merits. Many mercenaries are similar to oracles. They form groups on the battlefield, kill enemies, turn over the corpses, and obtain battle merits. Then, they exchange for powerful extraordinary equipment, extraordinary books, mystical items, and even more expensive other treasures. This mech angel battle armor in my hands was exchanged by this Yali from the battlefield. It's a pity that this fellow fell into my hands less than a year after I refined it. In fact, they can even exchange for rare treasures like the god's crown on the battlefield with their battle achievements. As expected, a higher dimensional transcendent world is different. For now, I just want to stay in the Oya continent and cultivate well. I want to improve my strength, and at the same time, spread the name of the Lord of Nightmares and bring more extraordinary people into the Blood Dream Arena system. Then, I can go to many places and see many things in the future. Gunai said. About an hour later. The broken mechanical wreckage was all collected by Gun. I'll continue to clear the mutated creatures and then I'll be able to obtain a long time to steadily cultivate. Three days later, Gunai was following the extraordinary door. He returned to the Star Tower. At this moment, Milond Elkley was stationed outside the extraordinary door. As soon as Gun landed, the grey-robed Milond Elkley looked at him with a smile. Obviously, Maurand Elkley had also learned from the other extraordinaries stationed at the various nodes that the mutated creatures had been wiped out on a large scale, and that there was no danger in the spatial source passage for the time being. Thank you, Sir Gunai. The guards have already told me how effective the cleaning was. In fact, many of them even saw how you cleaned up the place. I have to say, the blood pool's digestion ability of a blood curse mansa is really shocking. Mulond Elkley chuckled. Yes Gunai slightly nodded. The fact that the blood pool could digest all kinds of creatures was not a big deal. Since the spatial origin passage has been cleared and there's nothing else, I should return and cultivate Gunai said. Yes. Mulond Elkley gently nodded. Oh, that's right. Gunai, who was just about to leave, suddenly thought of something. When I was clearing out the mutated creatures, I found traces of an impact in the depths of the tunnel. It seems to be the remains of machines floating in the extraordinary space. Oh, Milond Elkley raised his eyebrows slightly. Mechanical wreckage. Some of them were absorbed and digested by the mutated creatures. You know how strong their digestive abilities are. But I still managed to find a part of it. He took out a palm-sized fragment. Biometal, Murand Elkley said in surprise after taking a look. Yes, it's vitality metal. Gunai didn't try to hide anything. After all, in Gunai's hands, the biometal should have been a piece of debris, but it was still a piece of debris. It didn't have any other use. On the contrary, some of the source power furnaces, high energy ray guns, and other mechanical parts that contained a large amount of extraordinary technology forged from life metals might be of help to the research and development department of the Transcendent Association. Oh right, this is also a part of the source power furnace that I found, as well as some kind of high energy ray energy weapon. With that, Gunai took out the items. Murand Elkley's eyes sparkled as he looked at these things. The Oya continent was essentially isolated from the outside world. It was an isolated island. Then, the technology of steam furnaces and source power furnaces from the outside world would be of great help to the extraordinary world. The steam core had been created by imitation. 
the source power furnace and high energy ray from the outside world were strategic technologies that were of great help to their extraordinary world. These things are all priceless treasures, Murand Elkley said with emotion as he held these things. However, it's still not of much use to me alone. Only by giving it to the Transcendent Association will it be able to play a greater role. Gunai said. After this period of understanding, Murand Elkley was clearly worth trusting. Gunai didn't mind giving these things to him. Muland Elkley, who was holding the items, gave Gun a deep look. The Transcendent Association has always been well aware of your contributions to the Transcendent Association. When you become a Transcendent Master, the Yulon Nation will personally open a seat for you. At that time, you'll be fully qualified to participate in the decision-making of the Empire's national level. You have to know that there has not been such a change in the past century. It is not only because you will become a god in the future, but also because you have made a huge contribution to the entire Yulon Kingdom. Congress Gunai rubbed his eyebrows. The Yulon Kingdom was the core of the country's power. The Yulon royal family only existed in name. The ones who truly controlled the power of the entire empire were the top oracles, ancestral spirits, and the powerful nobles of the empire. To become one of them, one would be able to become the ruler and even control the power of the entire country. Gunai obviously wouldn't refuse. 363 The Old Blood Octopus God after a discussion with Muland Elkley, Gunai returned to his secret room and began his journey of learning the ultimate meaning. Gunai, who was sitting cross-legged on the cultivation seat, thought. He arrived at Blood Dream Arena and entered the storage of the fallen blood crystals. After that, Gunai stood still in the area where the blood crystals had fallen. Gunai looked at the blood crystal with narrowed eyes. Previously, the blood crystals that dropped were all piled together. But last time, Gunai had noticed that the number of blood crystals dropped had greatly decreased, so he had a plan. The accumulation of blood crystals had changed from a whole pile to a single arrangement. After the blood crystals dropped, they would be collected and arranged in a row, one from the front to the back. Even if the previous drops were taken away, the subsequent drops wouldn't occupy the previous position and would continue to be arranged in the back. If someone tried to steal it, Gunai would immediately notice. At this time, the blood crystals that were supposed to be densely arranged were now sparsely scattered. 70 to 80 percent of them had been taken away. As expected, someone has their eyes on my blood dream arena. And they all stole my blood crystals when I was not around. It seems that this guy is also a very powerful existence. He sensed my existence in my territory and then sneaked in to steal things when I wasn't around. I don't even believe it myself if I told him about such a strange method. My blood source, Great Blood Heavenly Dream Curse, is a level 7 powerful ability. It can even bring items from the real world in. It seems like it's necessary for Ying Ying to get in touch with this strange existence. In the Blood Sea. Immediately, the CO soul of the devil, who was sitting cross legged to cultivate, began to chant an incantation. When Gunai knew that someone might have stolen his blood crystals, he had randomly placed a portion of the blood crystals that had been fused with the blood crystals of others. This way, after the mysterious being stole Gunai's blood crystal, he would be able to kill the demon. Gunai could easily follow the blood crystal. While the CO soul was chanting, its face changed slightly. I've found you. Swish. The CO soul turned into a blood light and disappeared. In the depths of the bloody dream world, which was extremely far away. Old day blood octopus god Andrew Sean Mio Merlin was in the depths of the sea of blood dream, playing with the many blood crystals in his hands. Andrew Sean Mio Merlin. He was a very successful existence but at the same time, he was a very failed existence. He was born on the remains of a dead ruler. This allowed him to have a long life, but not an eternal one. Thus, in the long river of life, he could not avoid sliding into the abyss of death. He had once participated in the resistance against the despairing rule. But it ended in failure. And now, 
he seemed to be approaching the end of his life. Of course, if he chose to sleep, he could still have an extremely long life. As a result, he entered a half-asleep state. In his half-sleep in the blood dream world, he could feel that the blood dream world had undergone a strange change over the years. It seemed that a large number of extraordinary humans had entered the blood dream world. It was normal for extraordinary humans to enter the blood dream world. In the past, he would also randomly grab the extraordinary people who entered the bloody dream world and extract their blood crystals to feel the different taste of the blood crystals. This was probably his only hobby in the endless years. After all, no blood crystal tasted the same. He really enjoyed the taste of blood crystals. However, this time, it was unusual because there were too many extraordinary humans who had entered, and they were all densely stacked together. And this pile of things seemed to be built by a slightly special extraordinary. Andrew had noticed the existence of the slightly special extraordinary the first time he entered the blood dream world. This was because he sensed that the extraordinary had the same aura as the corpse of the ruler he was born with. This had never happened in the past. However, he lost interest after a glance. That was because the extraordinary's lifespan was too short. He was like a spark that flashed by. It was the same even if he became a god. In the eyes of those ordinary, weak life forms, becoming a god seemed to be eternal. However, this eternity was only the eternity that ordinary, weak, and self-righteous beings thought they were. Even the gods had a lifespan. In his eyes, the lifespan of a god was just a short period of time for him to doze off. There were a lot of blood crystals in the small, dense pile. Therefore, Andrew randomly took some. It was very interesting to taste the blood crystals when he was bored. He threw a blood crystal into his mouth and began to savor the taste of the blood crystal. What? Andrew opened his eight eyes. A mixed taste, the two types of blood fused together. Then, Andrew raised his huge head that looked like a blood-red octopus and looked into the distance. Andrew felt the familiar guy approaching him quickly. Oh, did you find my location? With the blood source great blood heavenly dream curse's guidance. Gunai felt as if he had traveled through the bloody dream world. Finally, he fell into the endless blood-colored sea. As soon as he landed, Gunai felt the endless sea water, as if it was made of steel, firmly binding his bloody dream body. How thick must the water be for it to produce such a high pressure? Gunai thought to himself. In the next moment, Gunai's mind trembled. Gunai felt it. Terrifying gazes gathered on his body. His gaze was so grand and vast that it far surpassed the gap between life levels. Gunai felt like his body was about to melt from the gaze. However, Gunai felt that this powerful aura was similar to the blood and flesh of the ruler he had digested. Although this aura made him feel fear, as if he was about to melt, in reality, it did not cause him any real harm. It should be known that in the face of the terrifying Thulhu creatures, even if they were source power avatars or shadow avatars, the main body would die immediately when they saw it. Even if they did not die, they would suffer great damage. A similar aura. Gunai suddenly understood. Gunai's body trembled in the face of this powerful aura. He gritted his teeth and raised his head to look at the terrifying creature. 364 I'm Andrew. At the bottom of the deep blood dream sea. Gunai's eyes pierced through the viscous blood dream sea water and saw the giant object entrenched in the deep sea palace. It had a huge body that was over a hundred meters long. Just the head alone was more than thirty meters in diameter, and it had eight terrifying blood-red pupils, which were filled with death and wailing. On its back was a pair of dark golden blood-red wings that seemed to be made of flesh and blood. The lower half was made up of a dozen thick and indescribable octopus tentacles. His fat body was as vast as a mountain, making it difficult for people to look up. While looking at each other, Gunai could feel his blood dream physique being damaged. At the same time, his devil CO soul was also constantly suffering irreversible soul damage. Even Gunai's original body was the same. However, 
his main body suffered less damage than the Devil Seo Soul and the Blood Dream body. Fortunately, I've devoured enough of the ruler's flesh and used the powerful creatures in the demonized land to reincarnate many times. My own tantrum is high enough for my survival ability to be strong enough, so I can withstand the damage from the gaze of the ruler. Otherwise, your soul will be destroyed and your body will be destroyed. Greetings, Great Thulhu. Gunai didn't know the other's name or title, so he could only say this. Andrew, you can call me Andrew. The huge octopus creature spoke softly. His voice rumbled, and every syllable was like a thunderclap in Gunai's ears. The voice wasn't in any language Gunai had ever heard before. It was just a casual voice. However, it clearly explained the meaning of this Andrew. To the great old day blood octopus god Andrew Cyan Mayo Merlin, if other creatures came, Andrew could kill them with a single glance. However, this special extraordinary had a little connection with the flesh and blood he was born with. After all, his body had the aura of that flesh. That was why Andrew talked to him. Ordinary creatures, even gods, didn't have the right to stand in front of the great old day blood octopus god Andrew Sean Miao. This was not a matter of strength, but a matter of life form. I am Gunny Lawrence you can call me Gunai. Your Excellency Andrew. Gunai said. You must be the one who took my blood crystals from Blood Dream Arena, right? Oh, Andrew gently waved his octopus tentacles. The power contained within it could destroy the heavens and earth. Gunai even felt like he was going to die when he saw the terrifying power of the tentacles. The difference between them was simply too great. Gunai felt nothing but the danger of death. Are you blaming me? Andrew's voice rumbled. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. Gunai thought. Obviously not, Gunai replied. I'm just curious. Do you need the blood of ordinary extraordinaries like us, even for a great existence like you? The taste of candy. This is also one of my hobbies. Andrew replied softly. Gunai suddenly understood. It turned out that the Thulhu rulers did have their own interests. They just did not like to communicate with weak extraordinary humans. Would they be like humans who would exchange their interests with an ant on the side of the road? Obviously not. If other people saw this, they would think that he was crazy. It was the same for creatures at the level of the Thulhu ruler. The difference in life form and nature meant that they would not care about the will of the extraordinary. All they had to do was to act according to their own will in this world. He sensed the rich origin power aura of a certain transcendent world. They liked it, so they came. After all, this was the endless era of the transcendent. They were the rulers of the starry sky world, and they had always been like this. They didn't even need to take the initiative to rule over everything. Since ancient times, the entire universe had always been under their feet and changed according to their will. As for the weak creatures that were born in that extraordinary world, those who didn't like these weak creatures would kill all the creatures that could disturb them in their world and then rest and sleep. The good thing was that they could find a place to rest. As long as the weak creatures didn't disturb them, they wouldn't care about their interactions with the weak creatures that might disappear after a nap. And now, this ruler named Andrew was talking to him. He didn't look impatient or bored at all, and Gun could guess the reason. He might have become a part of them. Although it's only a very weak part, to a certain extent, I already have the same characteristics as them. That's why he communicated with me. Otherwise, when I descended, I would have been greeted with death. He didn't tell me his name. Gunai said with a smile after some thought. I'm here to ask you if you like the transcendent master level blood crystal candy? Andrew waved his tentacles slightly. That kind of taste will be better than ordinary candy. Andrew replied. Then what about the deity candy of the divine envoy, ancestral spirit, saint position, and even the stronger demigods and deities? Oh, Andrew squinted his eyes as he recalled. It has been a long time since any gods have entered the bloody dream world. I haven't gotten their blood crystals. If you didn't mention it, I would have almost forgotten the taste of these pleasant candies. 
it's a pity that I'm in a half-asleep state and can't move. Andrew then looked at Gunai. My kind, are you willing to bring me those delicious candies? I'm very happy to serve you. Gunai said. After all, to a certain extent, we are somewhat related to each other. Yes, I am Andrew nodded slightly. And this is the only reason I'm communicating with you. I'm sure you've seen the blood dream arena that I've built. A large number of extraordinary humans have entered. Gunai said. As my strength increases, more powerful extraordinaries will enter. For example, masters at the level of extraordinary masters and oracles will drop a large number of blood crystals. I think this is what you want to see the most, right? It sounds pretty good. Andrew nodded slightly. After carefully thinking about it, Gunai calmed his mind and spoke. To be honest, my birth is related to the ruler's flesh, and the growth of my strength is also closely related to that flesh. As you know, I'm very weak right now. I need more of the ruler's flesh to strengthen my body and strength. In the extraordinary world I'm in, can you guide me to where the ruler's flesh is? Is your birth related to those flesh and blood? Andrew seemed to have found a resonance from the depths of his heart. I was wondering why your life was like a spark that flashed by. So it was also because of the flesh and blood that slid into the abyss of death. Born from death, but inevitably slipping towards death. Andrew sighed with emotion. This was very similar to his experience. It was just that he had a very, very long life. And this weak little guy in front of him only had a little dominator aura. He was not even a dominator embryo, and his life was very short. If you have the flesh and blood of those rulers, will you be able to grow, to become a god or an even more powerful existence? Andrew asked. Yes, I am. Gunai nodded. Very good. Andrew laughed. Even though the lifespan of a deity was still very short. However, if one were to surpass the gods and become an even more powerful existence, that way, his lifespan would be a little longer, at least he could sleep for a long time. This guy wouldn't disappear just because of his lifespan. 365 Curse Type Compass Andrew waved one of his tentacles. A large amount of strange materials from the Blood Sea and a power that Gunai couldn't understand converged. In the end, they gathered into a palm-sized blackish-gray compass-like object. This is a small item that can guide the ruler's flesh and remains. It can point to the location of the ruler's remains closest to you. The world you're in still has some remains of the ruler's flesh that gave birth to you. Of course, there are other remains that are even stronger. The black compass slowly fell into Gun's hand. Looking at the simple compass, Gunai's heart skipped a beat. The miracle system was very powerful. However, the adventure content that could be included in the adventure system was ownerless, and it did not cost his life. For example, having the flesh and blood of a powerful ruler somewhere that would kill him if he got close to it. The miracle system obviously wouldn't let Gunai die. The overly dangerous ruler's flesh would not be included in the adventure. The truth was that Gunai urgently needed the ruler's flesh to reincarnate and to strengthen his body. If he could get the soul type ruler's flesh. That way, Gunai's soul would be able to strengthen itself. This way. Whether it was his own cultivation or battle. Or would he encounter a powerful Thulha creature in the future. At least Gunai had the ability to protect himself, and he was at least half the same as them. The miracle system couldn't do it, but the K system compass could. When Gun first came into contact with the Dominator's flesh, he was stunned. The second time he touched the flesh of a ruler, he would be immune to the death damage. In this way, the system would come into play and let Gunai know how to obtain the ruler's flesh. Even if he were to enter a higher level transcendent world in the future. Gun could also use the system and the conqueror compass to find new and more powerful fragments of the ruler. Gugni slightly rubbed the element compass in his hand and bowed to Andrew. Thank you. Great Lord Andrew. Go, cultivate well. I hope you can grow to be like me, or even surpass me. Andrew said softly. 
Then I'll take my leave. Gunai put the curse compass into the system space and then dispelled his bloody dream body. Andrew murmured as he looked at the place where Gunai had disappeared. It's not easy to become an immortal being. Moreover, Ying Luo. Andrew looked at the starry sky in the deep sea, as if he was looking at an endless group of stars. Soon, the stars will arrive at the correct position. They will all awaken, and I will also be revived. The world of bloody sea. Hu hu hu. Gunai let out a long breath and looked back at himself. Both my body and soul have been damaged to a certain extent. Fortunately, they can be recovered, so the impact is not big. Gunai's eyes narrowed, and a smile appeared on his face. To me, getting to know such a powerful ruler is a great harvest. At least, my path is correct. I'm using the reincarnation system to evolve into a Thulhu creature. Persevere. Even if I don't become a real Thulhu creature, I can still become half a powerful Thulhu creature. This way, at least when we face Thulhu creatures, we won't die just by looking at them. At the same time, I'll become a Thulhu creature, which will also give me the right to communicate with them. Instead, when I talk to them, I get a condescending reprimand like worm, you're disturbing me. Then, Gunai flipped his hand and the conqueror type compass appeared in his hand. The ruler's corpse is finally here Gunai muttered to himself as he stroked the black grey compass. I'll cultivate to improve my strength first. After I become an extraordinary master, I'll start my journey of searching for the flesh of my ruler. And that Andrew also said that our world still has a lot of ruler flesh and blood. Although it's hidden very deep and my system can't detect it, this conqueror type compass can point me in the right direction. Then, Gunai calmed down and looked inside his body. Sunset Star Source Cannon This was the core manual of Gunai's current hack. Gunai could set up all the main aspects of the hack system. There were four main aspects of cultivation. They were soul, source power, physical body, and soul source core. His soul, source power, and physical body were all in the normal hack state. He could choose one major, and the other one came with an AFK function, so it was obvious that the major would be much better. He could also choose to advance in all three areas. Normally, Gunai would choose to focus on all three aspects. Although this was a very stable way of improving, it also wouldn't give Gunai any shortcomings. The Soul Source Core was a new aspect that had appeared after he had advanced to the Type 6 realm. His main focus was on advancing from Rank 6 to Rank 7 and the strength of his Soul Source Core. Gunai hadn't chosen to focus on his Soul Source Core before, as he had only become a Rank 6 Transcendent. It would take some time before he could reach the Soul Source Core level. And now, Gunai had reached the late stage of Rank 6. After some thought, Gunai chose to focus on his Soul Source Core while he was using the Sunset Star Origin Technique. The Soul Source Core is the biggest difference between a Master and an Ordinary Extraordinary. With the Life Core as the framework, the Body as the Vessel, and the Source Power as the Energy Source for the Circulation and then sublimate one's own life level and strengthen one's own life framework. It allowed my soul, body, and origin power to be greatly improved. This will increase your resistance and defense against spells, curses, memes, and even strange energy. Becoming a transcendent master is a huge leap. More importantly, my profound meaning comprehension thinking of his own profound comprehension, Gunai couldn't help but smile. Gunai's foundation was naturally extremely solid. After so many reincarnations, Gunai's origin power, soul, and body were all incredibly strong. But that wasn't enough for Gunai to be on PAR with a level 7 master. The reason why Gunai was as powerful as a level 7 transcendent master was because he was blessed by the world's profound. With this profound world intent, Gunai would be able to form a soul core that was far stronger than the soul core of an ordinary master. And this was the core of Gunai's future. After inspecting many aspects of his body, he confirmed that there was no mistake. Only then did Gunai begin his path of cultivation. This time, Gunai was going to become a master in one go. 
366 The Extraordinary Phenomenon of a Breakthrough Unknowingly, more than three months had passed by. The world of bloody sea. Boom. Boom. The blood sea was roaring and surging. Many of the blood dream elves on the island knelt on the ground and began to pray devoutly to the Great Father. At that moment, Gun and his devil Co Soul were both in the system's hack mode, advancing from rank 6 to rank 7. At this time, the Co Soul of the devil was in the blood sea, which caused the strange scene in the world of blood sea. Gunai was sitting cross-legged in his secret chamber. A blood-colored mist that was so thick that it almost condensed into a rain of blood filled the entire secret chamber. After a while, drip, 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 drip. The blood mist was so thick that it had begun to condense into a blood rain. It didn't take long. Hwala la 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 la. Blood began to rain down in this small secret room. Then, more blood mist naturally rose up and continued to gather into a blood rain. After Gunai's breakthrough, a strange phenomenon had appeared in the secret room. At the same time, a faint bloody mist quietly descended on the entire starry sky watchtower. The students walking in the corridor looked at the gradually rising blood mist. There was a faint feeling of fear in the depths of the blood mist. They looked around in confusion. The blood mist grew thicker and thicker as it spread, and the area it covered grew larger and larger. The students who were reading on the steps looked at the books written in black and white, and the white hands on the books turned red. They also began to look ferocious and hateful. Suddenly, a high-pitched and excited howl of a wolf sounded from the blood mist. It was a student with a three-star blood wolf warrior transcendent profession. He could not control the power of his blood wolf bloodline and directly transformed on the spot. Hwala la 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 la. A few bats also quickly flew into the air. They were members of the blood clan. They flew rapidly in the air, greedily sniffing and devouring the blood in the air. The power of blood contained in the blood mist was pure and rich, making them eager to obtain it. Some of the students with weak willpower had already lost their will in the blood mist. They stood there like puppets, not moving. All students, quickly enter the dormitory and activate the restriction. All guards and teachers, enter a defensive state. When the panic began, a deep voice resounded in the sky above the entire watchtower. Immediately, the transcendents and teachers stationed by the students began to take action. In the sky above the star tower, three oracles in white academic robes were gathered here. The three of them looked down at the blood mist that had spread to every corner and frowned. The blood mist had already begun to spread from the bottom to the top. Don't tell me Wufa broke through because of Gunai, a bald middle-aged man said softly. If it's not him, who else can create such a strange and extraordinary scene? Murin said softly. This is really amazing, even when a peak ninth order transcendent becomes an oracle, it's hard to see such a strange scene. You have to know that this Gun has a god's crown, and his god's crown is even more powerful than Nigel's. Murin's eyes narrowed, his face filled with joy. The more powerful Gunai was, the happier he was. After all, he, Maur and Elkley. He was one of the founders of the pioneer group of the Transcendent Association. This was why Gunai had come to the Starry Sky Tower. Even if Nigel did break through, there were no signs. Even if there were signs when this divine crown, which is slightly stronger than Nigel, broke through, it shouldn't have radiated so much radiation. Look at those five little bats over there, they're flying so happily. The pure energy contained in this blood mist is extremely shocking. There are also a few students with weak willpower over there. They've all lost themselves in the blood mist. The bald man pointed downwards as he explained. This blood mist contains a strange power of blood. It's no longer just pure energy. It already contains some extraordinary characteristics. The old man who had been silent the entire time, Black Ruzar, was the first to speak. Oh! Both Muland and the bald man, 
Emolankai, looked over. You have to know that this little guy named Gunai is a follower of a great existence. From the bizarreness and strangeness of the Blood Dream Arena, you should know how amazing the powerful existence called the Lord of Nightmares is. Since it's its kin, it must be extraordinary. The strange characteristics contained in this blood mist are proof that it's not an ordinary extraordinary. Deep in Black Russia's eyes, it was as if there were stars in the universe spinning. He was rapidly analyzing the strange characteristics of the powerful blood mist. In the secret room. Naturally, Gunai was completely oblivious to the strange effects that were occurring in the outside world. At this moment, Gunai's body, soul, origin power, sea of blood, and even the annihilative energy of the then Aether, which didn't have much energy left, were transforming under the operation of the Twilight Origin Cannon. Gunai himself was in the process of constructing his soul source core. The condensation of a soul source core depended on the strength of one's soul, the density of one's source power, and the toughness of one's body. The veins of the condensed soul core were also different. An ordinary soul source core only had one vein. However, even an ordinary one mark source core was an existence that many sixth grade transcendents could only dream of. Next was the two mark soul source core. Those extremely ambitious extraordinaires. For example, Senior Nigel, Ao Gu Shan, and the many late stage level 6 transcendents who had entered the Forbidden Elemental Land for a long time all wanted to condense a two mark soul source core. Furthermore, a two vein soul source core required a certain amount of comprehension of profound meanings as a foundation. Otherwise, he would not be able to condense a two mark soul source core. Once a two vein soul source core was formed, it would bring them greater power and greater potential. At the very least, it would not be a problem for him to reach transcendent rank 8 or even rank 9. A three mark soul source core was more difficult to obtain. A three vein soul source core required a soul that had surpassed rank 6, source power, and a physical body to form such a foundation. At the same time, he also needed to have enough profound meaning to support it. A three-vein soul source core could only be condensed by extraordinary geniuses from large forces. As for the higher grade four-mark soul source core, it was considered an extremely rare existence. At this moment, Gunai had already surpassed the condensation of one and two stripes. He was condensing the third layer of soul original patterns in his soul source core. 367 Becoming a Master Hu 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 Gunai let out a long breath. Gunai smiled as he sensed the third layer of soul engravings on his soul source core. Gunai had spent a lot of time and energy to complete the third level of soul secret engravings. More importantly, the third level of soul sigils, including the first two levels, were constructed by the combination of the thick soul of a domain spell caster, extraordinary mana, and the body that had absorbed the flesh and blood of a ruler. He did not use any rune profound meaning at all. For the other extraordinaries who had been at the peak of the sixth step for a long time, it was basically difficult to condense the second level without using profound meaning. Gunai, on the other hand, had used his own foundation to reach the third level. A three-vein soul source core is already very rare. Furthermore, most of the geniuses in the major transcendent worlds have three-vein soul secret engravings. Only a small number of top-notch geniuses born in an era are able to condense a four-mark soul source core. A four-mark soul source core isn't difficult for me. I just don't know what my limits are. Begin to condense. Gunai immediately began to infuse his soul source core with Dark Power Upanishad and construct a four-mark soul source core. As he did, Gunai began to feel the difficulty of constructing a four-rune soul core. It was three to four times more difficult than a three-mark soul source core. About an hour later, a four-mark soul source core with all the Dark Power Upanishad and a little Destruction Power Upanishad was perfectly constructed. The four-mark soul source core was completed. A faint yet vast aura bloomed from Gunai's soul source core. It was as if the four-striped soul source core was as heavy as a mountain. A three-striped soul source core is only slightly thick and heavy, 
but a four-stripe soul source core can directly display a vast and heavy aura. This is a huge leap. Gunai said. Next up is the five mark soul source core. Gunai didn't know how many layers of soul engravings he could form with the help of his profound power Upanishad. However, the more he condensed, the more potential he would have after breaking through. Gunai was well aware of this. The difficulty of condensing the fifth vein was clearly one level higher than condensing the fourth vein. When Gunai had used all of his destruction power Upanishad to construct the vein lines of the fifth rune, he had realized that it wasn't even enough to lay the foundation. Not only was it three to four times more difficult to construct a soul source core with the fifth rune, but the amount of rune profundities required had also increased significantly. Gunai immediately started to control his world power Upanishad and sent it into his soul source core. The moment the world power Upanishad entered the soul source core of the fifth vein, Gunai immediately felt the entire frame of his soul core begin to stabilize. Indeed, in terms of constructing a framework system, the world power Upanishad has a huge advantage. Gunai thought. Even if you use the same amount of power Upanishads, the effect of world power Upanishad will be much greater than dark power Upanishad and destruction power Upanishad. After all, the world esoteric rule is mainly about the construction of the world and the operation of the framework system. Darkness and destruction are both inclined to destruction. After about two hours, the fifth rune of his soul source core had been perfectly constructed. As more and more world power Upanishads were absorbed, Gunai found that the structure of his five mark soul source core was much more stable than before. At the same time, a majestic aura, which was as high as the mountains and deep seas, bloomed from the five mark soul source core. Gunai's mind was immersed in this indescribable mystery, and he felt extremely comfortable. After meditating for a while, Gunai slowly calmed his mind. Sixth pattern, begin. The world power Upanishad kept pouring into it. Gunai began to build the structure in a very detailed manner. He was very meticulous throughout the entire process. The construction of the sixth rune could not be messed up. Before he knew it, five hours had passed. Wing, 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 wing. The world around Gunai began to shake. The entire world began to extend to the extreme. The small secret room seemed to have been enlarged infinitely, turning into a vast world. Gunai's entire body was within this boundless world. It was as if he had turned into a bright star. One level, two levels, three levels, four levels, five levels, six levels. A total of six layers of soul source core engravings surrounded Gunai, who had turned into a star. Six layers of soul source core engravings meant that Gunai had formed a six patterned soul source core. At the same time, the massive amount of blood mist in the surrounding area was absorbed by the six mark soul source core. The blood mist that filled the entire watchtower was also being sucked in by Gunai's soul source core. At the same time, Gunai's soul source core also absorbed the blood that had gathered in half of the secret chamber. As the surrounding energy was absorbed by the blossoming energy, the surrounding area was filled with a strange aura. Gunai's soul, body, and mana pool began their final transformation. However, the transformation in these aspects was hosted by the system's hack of the Dusk Star origin technique. Gunai didn't need to worry about him. At the moment, Gunai's mind was focused on the six mark soul source core. Now that his soul source core had been formed, it meant that he had already entered the extraordinary realm of a master. The five trace soul source core gave off a feeling that it was as vast as a mountain. On the other hand, the six mark soul source core was as deep as the starry sky and as unfathomable as the abyss. A six mark soul source core. Gunai smiled as he sensed the six mark soul source core in his body. It's on the sacred feather dark source continent. According to the information recorded in the ancient records of their major transcendent world, the strongest one is a top notch genius that only appears every 100 or 10,000 years. He has a five striped soul source core. According to the memories in the depths of that Yali's soul, even in their high dimension transcendent world, 
the number of transcendents who have condensed a five-mark soul source core can be counted with one's fingers. As for the six-vein level, it's basically something that can only be heard of in historical legends. I, on the other hand, have steadily condensed a powerful six-vein soul source core. He could feel the gradually stabilizing origin power, soul, and body in his body. Gunai said with a smile. The six mark soul source core is indeed extremely powerful. The power of mana has increased by almost 30 times. An ordinary one vein soul source core can only increase its power by about 10 times, a two vein soul source core by about 12 times, and a three vein soul source core by about 15 times. The strength and capacity of my soul has also increased by 30 times I'm naturally not afraid even if I have to take on all sorts of soul attacks. Not to mention, my Dusk Star origin technique is already at level 4 the scattered souls of the stars were projected onto the many stars. I've also placed star souls in the demonic pool, blood pool and the blood dream world, which are all unique places. It's basically impossible to kill me from the soul. The Dusk Star Origins Canon was an unimaginably strange soul concealment technique. It was not something that could be touched by ordinary means. My physical body is even more so. Previously, my physical body was already close to Devil Gold level. The toughness of my body now is comparable to the legendary mechanical angel battle armor that is made of vital metal. The defensive ability of a body at the legendary battle armor level goes without saying in addition, I have my own defensive abilities and recovery abilities. Even if I were to use my physical body to resist the attacks of a transcendent master, I wouldn't have any problems at all. The strong body of Fadden is finally being shown at the level of extraordinary masters. And as I obtain more of the ruler's flesh, my physical body will only become stronger. Gunai's mood became more and more pleasant as he felt all the different aspects of himself. After becoming a transcendent master, Gunai had undergone a huge transformation in all aspects. And this gave Gunai the capital to go out and search for the ruler's flesh. 368 The plan to find the ruler. As the blood mist gradually dispersed. High up in the sky, the three oracles had already gathered together again. Have you completed your breakthrough, the bald Emolankai said softly after looking around. Why don't I see Gunai coming out? Even if I break through, I'll still need a long time to stabilize and adapt. Murin said softly. Moreover, even if he managed to stabilize the Transcendent Master's guard, there's no need for him to come out so quickly. That Gunai can continue to cultivate and reach the eighth step, the ninth step, or even become a saint. Well, that's true. After all, there are many people out there who are watching Gunai. Once he comes out, even if he has the strength of a transcendent master, there will definitely be oracles who will come to assassinate him. It's a good thing to not come out and focus on cultivation. Emolankai nodded slightly. On the other hand, Black Russia had a faint smile on his face. When Gunai was a level 5 transcendent, he was already very powerful. Now that he has broken through to become a transcendent master, his foundation is so strong that when he broke through, he even produced such an extraordinary phenomenon. It's also a good thing for him to focus on cultivation and break through earlier. Indeed. All right, go do what you need to do. Murin said softly. That Gunai will naturally come out when the time is right. And. After a short discussion. The three of them dispersed. In the extremely distant south. In the huge hall where the gods were served. At this moment, several experts were gathered here. The figures of these experts were shrouded in a faint mist, making it impossible to see their true faces. You've all received the news, right? A hoarse voice slowly sounded. The other experts all responded softly. That Gunai has already become a master. To be able to become a master in such a short time, it must be the effect of the Divine Crown. Even though Pandai Hurst also broke through a month ago and condensed a three-striped soul source core with the help of the Divine Crown, he's still a little slower than Gunny and Nigel. Moreover, the God's Crown is the easiest to cultivate among the three crowns. Bishops, 
I think if this continues, Gugni and Nigel will become demigods or even gods first. We can leave, but you won't have anywhere to run to. I think you should consider the plan we proposed before. After all, you'll also benefit from us extracting the extraordinary origin of the entire world. The hoarse voice slowly echoed in the hall. For a moment, the hall fell into a dead silence. After more than ten breaths of time, another female voice was heard. This is a serious matter, so let's have a good discussion after all, extracting the source of the transcendent world will directly affect the many transcendents in the surroundings, and even the faith energy of the many believers. Secondly, the dark creatures are getting restless. Some witches from the dark have even begun to walk in the territory of the church in the south. Once the world's origin is extracted, the nearby area will become a breakthrough point for dark creatures. A large number of dark creatures will breed, and even demon lords will enter the territory of our south church. At that time, we'll be facing enemies from both sides. Then choose a place that is not close to the territory of the church, such as near the misty western desert mountains. The hoarse voice replied. We'll consider it carefully. The female expert replied softly. I hope the church can make a decision quickly. Otherwise, the situation will only get worse. The hoarse voice urged softly. I know, the female expert's voice replied indifferently as usual. Actually, Jianjia the hoarse voice sounded again. Extracting the source and allowing the dark creatures to descend may not be a bad thing for your southern church. After all, even in the south, after the infiltration of the empire's extraordinary people, there are still many people who are not devoted to the faith of God. When death and darkness come, they will feel the blood from the darkness, and more people will know that only God can save them. Use our power to create the descent of darkness, and then use the darkness to baptize this era. Let some people die, and those who survive will become believers of God. This is also a very good thing. Am I right? The hoarse voice was calm. Moreover, extracting the power of the source will lower the power level of this world and reduce the number of extraordinaries. It will also be more beneficial for your rule, right? But the content of his words was so cold that it was suffocating. The embryonic form of the god has taken shape with your power, you can create the scene of a deity's projection descending. This is a rare opportunity for your church to expand its faith. Darkness and death have descended, and only those who believe in the great gods can be protected. This is an unprecedented good scenario. The hoarse voice explained. A moment later, the female voice sounded. We'll think about it carefully and give you an answer as soon as possible. The sound of the living could be heard in the vast hall, but it was the horn of the dead. The voice slowly faded away, and the figures dispersed. The Star Tower in the dark and quiet secret room. Gunai had completely stabilized his transcendent realm. At the moment, Gunai was building a plan to find the ruler's flesh. Now, the blood and flesh of the ruler in the Blood Sea had been completely exhausted. Gunai also needed to find more ruler's blood and flesh to support his own peace. Gunai knew very well that he couldn't go out directly. He was afraid that if he appeared in a certain place, there would immediately be an oracle-level master coming to kill him. With a flip of his hand, Gunai took out the ancient shadow gate. Gently caressing the ancient shadow door, Gunai's mouth curled into a smile. Using this ancient shadow door, I can sense some ancient and hidden teleportation arrays. Then, I'll teleport there directly. No one will know that I've left. They'll think that I'm still cultivating here. Furthermore, I still have the mechanical angel battle armor. Once I cover my entire body, I can immediately retract my aura. This way, no one will know that the mechanical angel is Gunny Lawrence. You don't have to worry about fighting techniques. I haven't revealed my core powerful book, Demonic Erosion Blade, to anyone yet. Also, some time ago, after the eighth slot was opened, I also cultivated a high level incantation from Yali. The lightsaber spell the lightsaber spell and this mechanical angel are a perfect match with a mechanical sword in my hand, 
anyone who sees me will think that I am an extraordinary from a foreign world. In terms of self-defense, the mechanical angel battle armor and my physical body should have no problems. After thinking back and forth, he confirmed that there was no problem in disguising himself as a talented expert from the foreign starry sky. Gunai then turned his attention back to the ancient shadow door. On this trip, searching for the ruler's flesh and blood is one reason, the other is to find the swan and I. If it's on the way, I'll need to make use of my mobility and concealment to stir up trouble with the South Church. Gunai knew his own characteristics better than anyone else. If the others went deep into the south, it would be easy for those experts who were proficient in divination, deduction, and tracking to find their traces then, they would be hunted down and even surrounded. But Gunai wasn't afraid. Therefore, Gun could form a single surprise force to stir up trouble in the south church. Although Gunai had just become a level 7 transcendent. But Gun had the mechanical angel, a killing weapon and the powerful rank 6 arcane tome demonic erosion blade. It was not impossible to turn the south of the church's territory upside down. Now that he had become a master, Gunai had to display his strength and use. Within the two great churches of the southern war and healing. For a single church, the number of extraordinary masters on the surface was about 40 to 50 people. Adding on some of the extraordinary individuals who trained hard in their churches, the maximum number was 60 to 70. As long as Gun could kill some of them, it would be enough to cause a big enough commotion in the South. It would even be a powerful and effective blow to the South Church. After all, a transcendent master was a pillar of support in both the South and the North. The death of an expert at this level was no small matter. 369 Ten Occultic Runes He placed one hand on the door of ancient shadows. A transcendent master's thick mana began to flow into it. The world intent also bloomed intensely on the ancient shadow door. If he used space intent to control the ancient shadow door, the effects would naturally be excellent. However, Gunai had never learned space power Upanishad. It would not be a problem to use the profound meaning of the world to control the ancient shadow door, and the range of the radiation could even be wider as the world power Upanishad poured in. It was easy for Gunai to sense the many teleportation formations near the tower. However, these transfer arrays really weren't Gunai's goal. Then, Gunai used his world power Upanishad to sense the vast world outside. The range of the radiation rapidly expanded. Hundreds of kilometers, 500 kilometers, 1000 kilometers, 2000 kilometers, 5,000 kilometers, and even more, 10,000 kilometers. Gunai could sense the many teleportation formations. The ancient shadow door was a world-class mystical item that had the powerful ability to cross the stars. It was easy to cross a transcendent world. There was no need to even talk about experiencing the teleportation array of this transcendent world. Gunai quickly eliminated most of the other teleportation formations and finally locked onto a relatively ordinary one in the mountains to the south. Most of the large-scale teleportation arrays would be controlled by the major forces. If Gunai used the ancient shadow gate to pass through, he would basically be courting death. These small-scale teleportation arrays obviously didn't have experts guarding them. Gunai used the ancient shadow gate to teleport himself over so he didn't have to worry about his safety. If that place's teleportation array was a desolate and uninhabited one, then it would give Gunai a better place to stay and a way to go back and forth. With a relatively ordinary transfer array as the core, Gunai began to search for other transfer arrays. After searching for a while, Gunai finally chose 12 teleportation points. After making his choice, Gunai did not immediately use the ancient shadow gate to teleport over. There were still many preparations to be made for the transcendent masters who went to the south in search of the ruler's flesh and blood and killed the southern war churches that were closer to the teleportation portal. The first thing he needed to do after breaking through was to condense his runes to a higher degree. In a small secret room, Gunai sat down with his legs crossed. After this breakthrough, the mana pool had also expanded by more than ten times. Similarly, 
the Blood Sea had expanded by more than ten times. Moreover, after becoming an extraordinary master, the expansion of the Mana Pool and the Blood Sea would be faster than before. After all, the Transcendent Master's realm, soul, body, Mana Pool, and Blood Sea had all become stronger. As a result, Gunai's soul capacity increased explosively. I'll first form the occultic runes. Gunai thought. The occultic runes had brought extraordinary changes to Gunai's soul, body, and origin power. Now that Gunai had advanced, the first thing he needed to do was to form an occultic rune. Gunai had already formed six occultic runes. This time, Gunai was going to create ten of them in one go. According to Gunai's guess, ten should be an important threshold. As time passed, one ancient nirvana after another formed. The seventh. The eighth. The ninth. The tenth one. It took a little more than two days. Gunai didn't feel too much pressure as he formed ten occultic runes. In a dark and quiet secret room. The tenth occultic rune was formed. Gunai slowly opened his eyes, which were filled with shock. Gunai looked down at his hands and clenched them. There was no problem with his physical power and origin power. Gunai then waved his arm and found that he was fine. Then, in his soul, the demonic pool, and the blood sea. Gunai could even sense the devil CO soul. What's wrong with me? Gunai asked himself a question that came from the depths of his soul. Gunai felt like he was in a strange state. Gunai could clearly feel his soul, body, and the demonic pool. There was something flowing through his body. Logically speaking, the soul, the physical body, and the demonic pool should feel different. But at this moment, Gunai felt the same thing from all three of them. Something was slowly flowing out of his body. He didn't know what it was, and he didn't know where they came from or where they were going. Gunai didn't even know how they flowed. From head to toe? Or from left to right? Or from the inside out? Gunai couldn't sense the exact flow, but he was sure that something strange was flowing through his soul, body, and the demonic source ocean. Feeling the ten occultic runes inside his body, Gunai felt that the strange flow of energy was the special effect of the occultic runes. As expected, I still know too little about the strange and extraordinary aspects of Thulhu creatures. Gunai thought. I don't know what the essence of this flowing feeling is. I can only continue to slowly explore it in the future. He then looked at the other runes in his body. Ten ensemble runes to create a devil CO soul. This was already enough. There was no need to gather more heavy curse runes. I can condense more secret crossing runes. After all, now that I've become a transcendent master, I can easily release forbidden level law incantations, and I can even release a large number of powerful secret and grave level law incantations. Also, I don't feel much pressure on my soul. I can condense more secret crossing runes. This way, he could release the true scales protection even faster. If you get other powerful mid-grade or high-grade engravings, you can also instantly cast them. Gunai began to gather the secret crossing runes. A few hours later, the number of secret crossing runes on Gunai's body had increased from 22 to 32. This time, Gunai formed 10 secret crossing runes. This leap was indeed quite shocking. This was also the powerful advantage that came with being promoted to a master. The 32 basic runes combined with Gun's dark wizard staff allowed Gun to instantly cast 36 syllables. True Scales Clam's protection, which had 42 incantations, could be cast in 1.5 seconds. In the next few days, Gunai began to make detailed and reliable preparations in all aspects. Gunai wanted to make sure that nothing went wrong on this trip. 370 The Church of War The Oya Continent The Northern Empire and the Southern Church of the Human Race occupied a vast territory. However, according to the map of the continent, the humans occupied the eastern continent of the Oya Continent. The Fallen Feathers St. Keys Mountains that ran from the south to the north was said to be a mountain that even birds couldn't cross. It blocked the communication between the East Continent and the West Continent. 
southwest of the eastern continent of the area continent. This was the meeting point of the Fallen Feathers St. Keys Mountain and the War Church in the south. It was a mountain range that extended to the east of the Fallen Feathers St. Keys Mountain Range. It was a branch of the mountain range called the Black Rock Mountain Range. This place was located in the Transcendent Wilderness. Transcendent wild beasts ran rampant here, and there were very few people here. In a dilapidated and rotten cave. Wang 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 Wang. The teleportation array that was covered in a large number of dead branches and rotten leaves suddenly lit up. This was followed by the fluctuations of milky white light and space intent. A half-illusionary shadow that made it difficult for people to see its true appearance suddenly appeared. The illusionary figure looked around and quickly disappeared. About ten seconds later, the light of the teleportation formation lit up again. Immediately after, a mechanical angel that was 1.9 meters tall, its entire body was silver in color and exuded an extremely dense life force. On its back were mechanical gears and wings made of mechanical feathers. Wearing the mechanical angel battle armor, even if the head was wrapped in the mechanical armor, the mechanical metal on the head was particularly special. From the outside, it looked opaque, just like its overall luster. However, after nurturing the entire mechanical angel battle armor, one would discover that the visor was in a pure transparent state when wearing it, and it did not affect one's vision at all. When his life force fused with the life metal of the mechanical angel battle armor, he was no longer able to control it. It could even completely transform one's life aura into a brand new life aura. This way, even if Gunai fought with others and exposed his life aura, no one would be able to recognize him. His eyes swept across the rotten and abandoned ground. I finally found a teleportation formation in the desolate ruins. Gunai thought. The shadow that had appeared at the teleportation portal was a projection of himself that Gunai had created using the ancient shadow gate. Gunai used the projection to investigate the situation of the teleportation formation. He continued to explore seven places with tribes living in the wilderness. The eighth one was an abandoned teleportation formation. Using the teleportation circle between the ruins and this location, Gunai could safely teleport between the south and the star tower. Then, he flew through the narrow exit. Normally speaking, it would be difficult for someone who had just become a transcendent master to possess the ability to fly. He could only borrow the ability of flight, incantations of law, and other extraordinary flying equipment. However, that was only for a one-vein transcendent master. Gunai, who had a six-vein soul source core, not only could fly easily, but he was also very fast. After all, Gunai's speed was extremely fast. In addition, the mechanical angel battle armor had the ability to fly after it was activated. Gunai didn't need to use a spell to fly. A moment later, Gunai arrived at the entrance of the teleportation formation. What he saw was a completely abandoned basin and mountain range. In front of them were a large number of low, wide-leafed shrubs and half-shrub plants that resembled boats. Among these shrubs, there were many white stone pillars that had collapsed on the ground. There were also a few tall white ruins of buildings that had stood tall despite the wind and frost, but they were all covered in vines. After flying around the ruins for a while, Gunai roughly guessed the situation. It should be some ancient ruins, or a place where ancient humans lived. In the distant past, humans were not qualified to live on the plains. They could only survive in the mountains and jungles, using the steep terrain to block the invasion of the dark creatures. Therefore, in many wastelands, one could still see many traces of human ancestors surviving in the wilderness. He took out the map to confirm his location. Gunai's body quickly rose. As his field of view increased, everything in front of him became vast and empty. Gunai had flown before, but that was under the guidance of a master. This feeling was completely different from flying. The vast territory was right under his feet and he felt wonderful as he strolled in the sky. With a flip of his hand, Gunai took out a K-type compass. The K-series compass pointed to the southeast. This direction is very accurate. It's pointing to one of the branch churches of the Church of War. 
it's on the way. After thinking for a moment, Gun cast a high-level invisibility spell on himself and then went in the direction pointed by the Conqueror Compass. For this trip to the South Church, Gun had prepared a lot of information. Of course, Gun still needed to capture some of the church's clergymen and extract information from their souls to make his operation more efficient. Gunai's current strength was not weak, but he needed a suitable plan. The Church of War It was one of the two most powerful churches in the South Church. There were also some other small churches and the long-declined Church of Light, which were basically no longer within the scope of resistance. As a powerful Church of War The core of the Church of War itself had the Supreme Power and Supreme Pope. There were also red-robed bishops, priest bishops, war bishops, divine inquisitors, and other powerful existences who were also at the level of oracles. Within the territory they ruled, there were a total of 14 huge branches of the church. The area of each church's branch palace was comparable to a province of the Northern Empire. The branch archbishop of the temple had supreme power in the area ruled by the temple. To be able to become an archbishop of a church's branch, one's strength would at least be at transcendent level 8. The branch archbishops of powerful parishes often had the powerful strength of a level 9 transcendent. Below the main archbishop was the main bishop. If those transcendent rank 6 knight commanders or high-ranking deacons could be promoted to transcendent master, they would immediately be promoted to branch bishops and become the core of the church. If the church's subhalls were further divided, then it would be the churches in the various regions, high-ranking deacons, war knights, and other personnel. However, these executors and extraordinaries were all mid-level and high-level war knights. In terms of strength, they were competent enough for basic work. However, when it came to the level of a transcendent master, they were clearly not qualified. To the entire war church, the fourteen branch temples were the backbone of the church's power in controlling the entire territory. If any of the church's subhalls were to be in turmoil, it would hurt their foundation, and even shake the church's rule that led them. Thus, even though the civil war was particularly brutal, the archbishops of each branch palace were strictly guarding the territory of each branch palace, and would not move easily. Neverberg Parish This was one of the fourteen parishes of the Church of War. This was the place Gunai was heading to. Even though the Neferberg Parish was located in the border area, the strict hierarchy system of the church still penetrated deep into every corner of the border area. Within the church's territory, it was essential to pray piously on the prayer day every week. He could skip the meal, but he had to pray to the gods. Apart from that, it was also the most important thing to offer the harvested food to the church during the harvest season. Because in the propaganda of the church, all food was a gift from the great God. Even if they were starving, they had to pay the tribute with enough food. Otherwise, after death, their souls would have to bear the burning of the flames of hell. Those who had enough faith in their God and dedicated themselves wholeheartedly would be summoned by their God after death and be able to go to the Divine Kingdom. In addition, in the areas under the Church's rule, there would be many doctrines that seemed sacred but were actually to satisfy people's dirty minds. For example, young and beautiful girls had to be sent to the church to serve the clergymen. Even in the areas under the jurisdiction of some extraordinary clergymen with special fetishes, those clergymen had the right to have their first night. In terms of power, the clergymen who had the right to rule were also supreme. Even if they killed someone in public, they could still use the atonement scrolls given to them by the church to carry out a trial of innocence. As for ordinary people, even if they accidentally offended the clergyman, they could be burned at the stake. Evil and ugliness unscrupulously revealed their greedy and ferocious fangs in the absolute rule. It also exposed the darkness in the ruler's human nature, which was as terrifying and hateful as the devil. 371 Chapter 19 The Witch, Ally now that it was winter, the Neferberg Parish on the small plateau had entered the snow season first. Neverberg Parish, the border of Jooho Mountain City, which was close to the western mountain range. In the town of Ulu, sparse snowflakes were falling. In the center of Ulu town. 
a few basin fires on wooden frames were burning fiercely. On a huge stake, a young girl of only 16 or 17 years old in thin clothes was hung on the stake. The snow mixed with it blew on the girl's body, and she could not even tremble. She was already a little frozen. The densely packed residents below had their hands clasped together in front of their bodies as they devoutly listened to the deacon's judgment. A deacon in a white priesthood robe was loudly and impassioned as he sued the witch for many crimes. The evil soul from the abyss of hell shall be burned by the flames. Your soul will only be purified in the holy light and flames. As the deacon of the church of war completed his charges, the residents below were all waving their fists and shouting in anger. Burn her to death. Burn this damned witch. They are the ones who brought the dark creatures. This is the witch who brought the plague. This ugly and disgusting fellow, quickly burn her to death. Only when she's dead can we find peace here. Everyone who was roaring below had anger on their faces. It was as if the witch they had never met was their enemy. Looking at the residents of the small town who were roaring, the middle-ranked deacon, Fabric Hales, showed a satisfied smile. His eyes passed by the young second-rank witch. Fabric Hars picked up a torch and set the wood doused with dark brown oil on fire. Whoosh! The flames quickly spread. Fabric Har's chubby face became more and more distorted under the dancing flames. With the arrival of winter, the dark creatures had begun to appear in the plateau's desolate forest. He, Fabric Hallies, was a fourth-grade transcendent and a middle-grade deacon, a religious master. He could cast many divine spells, dispel, purify, and other means. This time, he had come to this border town with the intention of driving out and killing a group of dark creatures before returning. He didn't expect to encounter a second rank witch here. Although this second rank witch's rank wasn't high, her means were quite powerful. There were two knights of the fourth step, six knights of the third step, fifteen knights of the second step, and more than fifty knights of the first step who had captured her. Even with so many extraordinaries working together, the witch still managed to kill a third-rank knight, five second-rank knights, and fourteen first-rank knights. After using a divine spell to seal her power yesterday, she had been caught. Today, he was going to burn him to death. This way, he could return as soon as possible. After all, no one wanted to look for the dark creatures in the cold wilderness. As for the consequences of the dark creatures wreaking havoc, he did not consider them. Anyway, I've already killed an evil witch. What else do you want? Moreover, it might not be a bad thing for the dark creatures to kill these ignorant fellows and reduce the population, because their prayers would be more sincere. We can't let those lowlifes live too comfortably, or they'll cause trouble everywhere. This was the earnest teaching that Fabric Har's father had given him when he helped him bribe to obtain a priesthood. And Fabric Hallies was well aware of this. In the corner, Gunai, who had been watching from the front to the back, shook his head. No wonder the Empire in the North wants to destroy the Church's rule in the South. This kind of foolish policy simply doesn't treat people as people. The results of the steam revolution in the North have been spread. The Empire has even begun to sign more labor protection bills, such as the Minimum Wage System, the Labor Protection Association, the Labor Relief Program and so on. They're still following the rules of the dark medieval era. They're not just eating human blood, they're gnawing on their bones and mocking them for not being pious enough. Gunai shook his head and sighed. More importantly, these guys are working with the evil gods to destroy this world. These guys are all birds of a feather, and it's time to destroy them. Then, he looked at the second rank witch. After a moment, Gunai's mouth curled into a smile. This is interesting. I didn't expect to see a strange blood witch who has awakened her own extraordinary profession in the star sequence in such a desolate corner. What's your name? Gunai asked. Arya's face was grey and her eyes were filled with despair. When she heard the clear voice in her mind, her heart trembled and hope appeared in her eyes. Ally, I'm Ally. Arya said weakly as she controlled her dry throat. Her body was weak, but her consciousness was clear. 
My lord, can you save me? Ally cried out for help. Of course you can, but I hope you can kill all the clergymen and knights of the Church of War. Gunai said softly. As he spoke, the fire snakes surged up even more violently. Gunai waved his hand. Immediately, Ally felt that the scorching flame had been completely isolated. Even though she was bathed in the flames, Ally could not be hurt by the burning flames at all. The chance to survive was right in front of her, so how could Ally refuse? Thank you, sir, for giving me the chance to take revenge. Ally clenched her fist and responded weakly. Immediately after, Ally felt the powerful restriction that confined her origin power in her body being broken. The ropes that were binding his body were also burning, but they did not cause any harm to him. Soon, the ropes would break. At the same time, thick blood gushed out from her palm. Blood of the sixth step, and it's full of life. Ally's heart trembled. The more powerful the blood, the more help it would be to her. Immediately, Arya impatiently absorbed the power of the blood that the Lord sent over. Gurgle gurgle. As a large amount of blood gushed out, Ally's power was rapidly recovering. As a strange blood witch, her blood was the root of her strength. With fresh blood, she could quickly recover from her injuries, her strength, and even her soul. This was also a characteristic of her star sequence, the Sly Blood Witch. Of course, as a powerful star sequence Sly Blood Witch, she was not the only one. The most amazing thing about her was that she could use the powerful fresh blood to quickly grow and improve her strength, and even strengthen her strange blood curse. At this moment, this incomparably thick blood was constantly surging over. It was clearly the intention of that lord. Hence, Ally devoured and absorbed the blood like crazy. This was the powerful blood of the sixth step. Normally, she would not be able to enjoy it at all. Bathed in the flames, Arya was transforming the type 6 blood. The flames continued to burn and had completely covered Ally, who was quickly recovering and becoming stronger. When the rising flame turned from strong to weak, Ally's figure gradually appeared. This witch, she hasn't been burned to death. At this moment, someone exclaimed. Look, that witch is moving. Oh, my God! The crowd cried out in alarm. What? In the distance, Fabric Harza's expression suddenly changed when he heard this. Although a second rank extraordinary was powerful, he was still easily burned to death by the flames. Moreover, the witch was not a fire element witch, so it was impossible for her to not be burned to death. At this moment, in the gradually dissipating flames, Ally, who was already close to the late stage of Transcendent Level 2, had successfully advanced to the late stage of Transcendent Level 2 with the help of the thick power of the blood. Her many ghost blood curses had also been greatly enhanced by the power of the blood. It could be said that Ally was stronger than she had ever been. Ally, who was bathed in flames, slowly raised her head. Her pale cheeks were slightly flushed as she smiled. Arya looked at the residents around her who had horrified expressions on their faces, as well as the knights who were in a tight formation. All of you are going to die today with a furious roar, Ally broke free from the restraints of the stake and rushed out. Her slender fingers suddenly clenched in the air. Bang! 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 The sound of a heart shattering rang out. The few ordinary townspeople at the front trembled and died after spitting out blood. Then, Ally turned into a strange blood red light and entered the body of a stage 2 knight. Ah! The stage 2 knight let out a blood curdling scream. Immediately after, ping, the knight's body exploded. The blood from the explosion splattered everywhere. A few residents who were accidentally stained with blood wailed and fell to the ground. The wounds stained with blood were rotting at a speed visible to the naked eye. Quickly kill her. From afar, Fabric Harris's expression darkened as he saw this scene, and he immediately roared. Fabric Halley's regretted not killing this damned witch the day before. Even if you manage to break free, you will still die this time Fabric Harris said fiercely. 
372 Extraordinary Master. Ten minutes later. Blood, broken limbs and remains covered the entire town. Pfft. Fabric Hars, who spat out a mouthful of blood, fell head first on the muddy ground. He couldn't believe it even in death. How could this second rank witch, whose strength was not too powerful yesterday, have such a huge growth in such a short time? Their entire team of more than 30 people had been killed by this second rank witch alone. Pulling out Fabric Harza's heart from his chest, Arya threw it on the muddy ground. The blood on her arm was quickly absorbed by Arya to recover her strength. In this battle, even with the help of that powerful Darren many times in the dark, she still fought with great difficulty. Fortunately, she was the one who won in the end. After killing all the knights and clergies, Arya walked towards the house on the side with a murderous look. She did not want to let go of the humans who were screaming and screaming to burn her to death. She had never hurt anyone here. She just wanted to hunt some dark creatures and extraordinary creatures for their blood to improve her strength, but those foolish people wanted to kill her. That's enough. The voice came softly, making Ally stop in her tracks. Ally turned around and looked at the Lord. What he saw was a mysterious man in a black robe that was shrouded in a black mist, making it impossible to see his face. The residents here are innocent they are also victims. Gunai said. Yes, my Lord Ally nodded slightly. I still don't know your name, sir, Ally asked softly. Blood mist. Gunai said. It was obviously not his real name, so Ally did not dare to ask. Thank you, Lord Blood Mist, for saving my life Ally is willing to follow you. Ally said in a deep voice, her tone firm. He could easily give her a large amount of transcendent level 6 blood, and many of his methods were incredible. It was obvious that this Lord Blood Mist was a powerful transcendent master. To be able to follow such an extraordinary master was something that many people dreamed of. Your talent is not bad, and your extraordinary profession is also very powerful. However, your own level is still too low. Gunai said. As he spoke, Gun raised his hand, and an extraordinary storage ring flew to Arya. There are enough resources for you to grow to extraordinary rank 6. At the same time, you can enter the Blood Dream Arena according to the incantations on the magic incantation scrolls that I've placed in it. Enter Blood Dream Arena? Ally was shocked. Half a year ago, the Blood Dream Arena had caused a huge commotion in the Oya continent. It was the best place to fight with other extraordinaries and to obtain information. It was said that many superhumans wanted to enter the Blood Dream Arena. However, the qualifications to enter Blood Dream Arena were too difficult to obtain. For this reason, the corpses of many extraordinaries, wild extraordinary creatures, and marine creatures, which were things that no one cared about in the past, had now become hot items. Even so, the number of extraordinary humans who could enter the Blood Dream Arena was decreasing. It was said that the number of sacrifices had increased at an astonishing rate. After all, the Blood Dream Arena was only so big. It was said that many places would be crowded when entering. However, Ally had vaguely heard that after the Blood Dream Elves took control of the Blood Dream Arena, the arena had begun to expand. Arya did not expect that the mysterious Blood Mist Master could grant her the right to enter the Blood Mist. Since you know about Blood Dream Arena, I won't waste my breath on you, Gunai said. There, you can fight with more experts. It can help you improve your combat skills. Also, if you run into any trouble, just chant the incantation I gave you. I'll feel it. All right, let's leave this place as soon as possible I still have important things to deal with. Gunai said after giving his orders. Yes, Lord Blood Mist. Gripping the extraordinary ring in her hand, Ally nodded seriously. Then, his body turned into a cloud of blood mist and disappeared. He looked in the direction Ally had disappeared. Gunai also turned around and left. The girl named Ally was a good fighter. She was an extraordinary worthy of training. As he moved forward, 
Gung went into stealth mode and began to digest the souls of the knights and the deacon. While Arya was fighting, Gun had devoured many souls of the Church of War. Gun's original goal in coming to the town was to capture some members of the Church of War and digest the information he'd obtained from their souls. This girl named Ally had only happened to run into her by chance. She could only say that she was very lucky. Gunai's eyebrows twitched after he digested the information. Is there only one bishop in this branch of the Naverberg parish? Even the archbishop of the branch hall has left. Through their souls, we can indeed see that they have suffered heavy losses on the battlefield during this period of time. They have no choice but to transfer extraordinary masters from these remote areas to the battlefield to resist the attack head-on. Otherwise, the front line will collapse, and the transcendent association's power will come straight in. The South Church's rule will be in danger. This way, Gunai squinted his eyes. If we cause trouble behind them now, it'll be easier to cause a huge impact. Let's start with the Class 7, Bishop of the Branch Palace of the Neverberg Parish Gunai thought. Neverberg Parish The Neverberg Castle was the core of this parish. Carlos Radner was standing by the oriel window and looking out. As the cold wind whistled, snowflakes began to fall. Carlos Radner remembered that it was close to October last year, but it had not snowed yet. This year's snow season seemed to come earlier than the previous years. Lord Carlos the guard captain's voice came from outside the door. Come in Carlos Radner's slightly magnetic voice rang out. The person who came in was a woman in grey armour, which perfectly accentuated her figure. What is it? Carlos Radner asked softly. There are some things that have happened in the parish that I need to report to you. First of all, there was an appalling witch incident in the border town of Ulu. The female extraordinary started explaining. A witch was caught and burned at the stake, but not only did she not die, but she also recovered her strength in the fire. Then, the witch killed more than thirty people in the team, who had several fourth-rank church knights. Before that, this witch had already killed more than a dozen members of the team. At the same time, according to the description of the believers there, the witch seems to have an accomplice. Accomplices? Yes, a mysterious person shrouded in mist. I've already sent the church's shadowers to investigate this matter. If we can find any clues, we should be able to catch the witch. Yes. Carlos Radner nodded indifferently. After thinking for a while, the female guard captain continued to explain. Also, there have been dark creatures appearing in many of the garrisoned areas recently. There's even a group of dark werewolves that seems to be led by an intelligent werewolf. They have already fought with three of our high-level war knights in our parish. And the result of the battle was that the three teams with high-level knights were completely annihilated. Not a single person escaped. Oh. This time, Carlos Radner raised his eyebrows. They were completely annihilated in all three exchanges. I suspect that there's a leader at the peak of transcendent rank six, or even a strange existence like a lord. And I'm afraid you're the only one in the parish who can deal with such an existence. The female guard captain said. Find the traces of these dark werewolves and tell me I'll personally eliminate this so-called dark werewolf leader and lord. Yes, the captain of the female guards replied in a straightforward manner. Is there anything else? Not at the moment. All right, you may leave. Very quickly, the female guard captain had already retreated and closed the door at the same time. After a full two to three minutes, Carlos Radner's magnetic voice rang out softly. May I know why you have come to my place in such a secretive manner? At the same time, Carlos Radner turned around and looked at the fish tank beside the door. 373 The Cage and the Dragon Next to the fish tank. The dark fog surged, and a vague figure appeared. Carlos Radner's eyes narrowed slightly, trying to find some clues. However, the mist seemed to have some kind of powerful blocking ability, and Carlos Radner's insight was useless. A friend once gave me a rare grade piece of equipment, and I used it as a fish tank. A slightly hoarse voice sounded in the mist. Actually, 
I wanted to raise goldfish and the like in my spare time, but I never had the time. I have to say, your fish tank is pretty good. Don't tell me you're here to talk about these boring things, Carlos Radner casually placed his hands together and gently touched the ruby ring on his ring finger. Of course not. Then what is your purpose? Carlos Radner was unable to confirm the identity of this mysterious man who had suddenly come to visit him. Naturally, he didn't know if this person was a friend or foe. You. Gunai said. Upon hearing this, Carlos Radner's eyes narrowed. Me. Yes, your head Gunai said with a playful smile. Carlos Radner's face immediately darkened. This mysterious man was an enemy after all. If you want to kill me, then I think you should have made a good plan. You shouldn't be so stupid as to enter my house directly. At the same time as Carlos Radner spoke, flames appeared under his feet and quickly spread to his legs, body, arms, and head. After the flames had burned out, Carlos Radner had already disappeared, and the flames spread out in all directions. The floor, the desk, the bookshelf, the wall, and the curtains all burst into flames. Even the fish tank next to Gugni was set on fire. In less than two seconds, the fish inside had turned over. The entire house quickly turned into a sea of fire. Dragon, an ethereal and majestic voice sounded. Roar. A furious roar that seemed to come from the abyss was filled with the intimidating power of a high-level creature. It might have been effective against normal creatures, but it was different for Gunai. It was hard to say who would be the deterrent. A giant fire dragon emerged from the flames and bit down on Gun. Gunai tapped his feet lightly and dodged the attack. Ka-cha-cha! The fire dragon bit down, and the fish tank and the wall behind it were crushed. The solid black stone wall was as fragile as tofu in the mouth of the fire dragon. The wall that had been bitten to pieces revealed the flame barrier inside. Guest from afar, I have already built a fire cage for you in this room. Enjoy the flames of the hell fire dragon. The voice came from all directions, making it impossible for anyone to figure out Carlos Radner's exact location. In fact, Gunai had already known that there were many decorations in the room. But Gunai still came in. It wasn't easy to kill a master transcendent. Gunny had learned a lot from the records and other powerful people. When Gunai was a Sixth Order Transcendent, he had the power of a Master Transcendent. But the bizarreness and diversity of his methods weren't enough. If the other side wanted to escape, Gunai wouldn't be able to stop them. Now that he had advanced to Level 7 Transcendent, he had also completed a qualitative transformation in the various bizarre and diverse methods he had to deal with Transcendent Masters. Therefore, Gun had taken the initiative to come in to find Carlos Radner, who was a mid-seventh level transcendent, and have a good fight with him. By constantly fighting with many extraordinary masters and understanding their various means, Gunai was able to kill them better. A transcendent rank 7 fire elemental creature is not easy to deal with. After dodging the attack, Gunai's eyes scanned the fire dragon. Roar! The elemental fire dragon let out a furious roar when it missed its target. Then, it suddenly spat. Whoosh! A white-hot flame burst out of its mouth. At the same time, six 1.2-meter-long light swords, which were condensed from the light sword spell, flew out. Normally speaking, after flying out as a law incantation, it would be directly used to attack the enemy. But when the six lightsabers appeared, Gunai could easily control them. A domain spell caster combined with world intent could control the surrounding world. This allowed Gunai to experience a qualitative improvement after becoming a master. After all kinds of spells were released, they would not be released in one go. Instead, it became a spell that Gun could control and use continuously. As long as it didn't hit the enemy and wasn't consumed, the spell could continue to pursue the enemy. At the same time as the fire elemental dragon spewed flames. Whoosh! 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 The six lightsabers all flew into the fire elemental dragon's mouth, forming a strangulation. The fire elemental dragon's head was crushed, and the flames it spat out were interrupted. 
it wasn't over yet. The six lightsabers followed the fire elemental's body and slashed at it. In an instant, the huge body of the fire elemental dragon was completely destroyed. However, Gunai didn't relax. Gun could feel that although the dragon's body had been destroyed, it wasn't dead yet. For elemental creatures, it would not be a problem for them to reform their bodies after they were destroyed. Moreover, they were in a cage of flames, and the fire elemental WIRMS could keep building their fire elemental bodies to fight Gunny. Roar. It was accompanied by an angry roar. A large amount of flames condensed once again, and the fire elemental dragon took form once more. Huuuu. This time, just as it condensed, a large area of white-hot flames was spat out. This immediately caused the temperature and flames of the entire flame cage to rise by four to five times. Inside the flames, Gunai was using the power of the world to keep the heat off. He could feel the power of the flames seeping into his mech angel armor. The power of the lightsaber spell is still too weak after all, it's only a high-level law spell, and it's only a level two spell. In front of a transcendent master, I'm still lacking. And, Gunai's eyes narrowed. This fire dragon's fire source core is hidden extremely deep. The power of the light sword spell is clearly unable to reach it. With a thought. As the darkness and destruction ultimacy intertwined. Swish, a sound. A strange, half-transparent, crescent-shaped demonic blade appeared next to Gunai. Its entire body was about half a meter long and a dark golden glaze-like luster flowed on it. This was a powerful rank 6 mid-grade engraving spell Demon Obliteration Blade. With the support of two profound meanings, its power was comparable to an ordinary forbidden spell. As soon as the Monic Erosion Blade appeared, the flames within a 2-meter radius were forced back. Swish, a terrifying piercing sound was heard as the Monic Erosion Blade pierced through the fire elemental dragon's body. Crack. The fire elemental dragon's source core was immediately shattered. Roar, with an unwilling roar, the fire dragon quickly dissipated. At the same time, three demon corrosion blades flashed by Gunai's side and quickly cut through the wall of fire near the window. While fighting the fire dragon was one thing, Gun was also secretly searching for the location of the mid-seventh rank Karls Radner. 374 You Can't Beat Me. Buzz. 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 It was accompanied by three sharp piercing sounds. A muffled groan sounded from within the flames. Outside the fire cage. A ball of fire quickly rose up, and Carlos Radner's body condensed from the flames. At the same time, flames continuously fell off his body. The three strange demonic blades with astonishing power just now had already injured him. When the flames fell to the ground, they seemed to have a life of their own and quickly expanded. In an instant, the garden below was on fire. Carlos Radner's expression was uncertain as he quickly pulled away from the fire cage. This guy is only at the beginning of level 7 transcendent. How can his attack be so powerful? This attack probably has the power of an 8th rank extraordinary. As extraordinaries, there was a huge gap between level 7, level 8, and level 9. It was very difficult for a level 7 extraordinary to have the offensive power of a level 8 extraordinary. And his observation skills are also quite strong. In such a short time, he has locked onto my position and even injured me. Is this guy still a transcendent at the early stage of the 7th rank? Feeling the injuries in his body, Carlos Radner's expression grew more and more serious. At the same time, he was secretly accumulating power for a powerful technique. They were both at level 7, but even if the other party was at the early stage of level 7, he was much more powerful than him, who was at the middle stage of level 7. I'm afraid that even Tao Wu's fire cage won't be able to trap him. Just as Carlos Radner was deep in thought, the barrier of the fire cage suddenly trembled. Immediately after, S.I. Law. A huge hole was torn open in the barrier of the fire cage. Then, the mysterious person shrouded in grey fog flew out of the huge crack. He had just flown out. 
buzzes. Space and time trembled as a three-meter-wide pillar of white light shot down from the sky and crashed into Gunai. Layers of strange fluctuations bloomed in the white pillar of light. For a moment, Gunai couldn't even move. At this time, all the residents in the city of Naver Castle saw the dazzling beam of light penetrating the thin clouds, as if a god had descended. This holy light scouring technique was one of Carlos Radner's core techniques. It was also a special technique that he had developed by combining the light profound with his divine power and origin power. Holy light contained a small amount of divine power. When used, it would not backfire on the user because of the divine power, but it could also cause heavy damage to the enemy. Using this core technique, he had injured several powerful transcendent masters. The dense light energy washed away the grey mist, revealing its true appearance. He saw the thing hidden in the grey fog. Carlos Radner's originally calm face immediately turned into a strange and vigilant expression. What kind of monster is this? What he saw was a silver-grey creature that looked like an Iron Man. His entire body emitted an extremely dense life aura. This life aura clearly showed that he was an early stage level 7 transcendent. Is this the extraordinary master from the foreign starry sky? Carlos Radner had some guesses in his heart. You don't say, this technique of yours does hurt a little when it hits me. A hoarse voice came from the silver-gray Iron Man. The corners of Carlos Radner's eyes twitched slightly, and he became more and more vigilant. This was one of his core techniques, yet the other party only felt pain. How can this guy's defense be so terrifying? Could it be because of the armor? It should be. A transcendent master's body cannot withstand my attack without being injured. If that's the case, then I won't be polite. At the same time the hoarse voice sounded. Boom. Boom. The roar of the engine surged. At the same time, mechanical feathermail and mechanical gears bloomed behind him. The mechanical angel battle armor's battle form was activated. It was dangerous. As the mechanical roar sounded, Carlos Radner was shocked and quickly retreated. At the same time, he quickly chanted an incantation. Boom, long. The top of the burning castle, which had originally formed a fire cage, directly exploded, and flames soared into the sky. Five or six arm-thick chains of flame shot toward Gunai. Gunai's speed was clearly much faster than the flame chains. With a leap, Gunai easily shook off the flame chains. Gunai swung his mechanical sword. Whoosh! 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 A dense cluster of eighteen lightsabers flew out and charged towards Carlos Radner. While retreating, the light rays around Carlos Radner's body distorted and quickly condensed into a light shield. Boom! 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 The light swords that pierced through were all blocked by these light shields, and they exploded with layers of brilliant and dazzling light. In the midst of these dazzling lights, a demonic erosion blade flashed. Swish! Uh! Carlos Radner's low, miserable cry rang out. His body quickly turned into a stream of light and quickly pulled more than 300 meters away. When he reappeared, only half of Carlos Radner's right arm was left while the other half was missing. A layer of strange black bubbles emerged from the wound, then burst. Every time it burst, a lot of black blood would fall down. Carlos Radner's face began to twist as he steadied himself in the air. He could clearly feel that not only was the wound unable to heal, but it was also being guided by the strange black force to continuously erode his body through his arm. Just this corrosive power alone had already taken a lot of effort from him. If he continued to fight, he was afraid that he would be in danger. Let's go. Carlos Radner immediately turned and fled. This mysterious mechanical angel-like foreign expert was astonishingly powerful. If he continued to fight, he would die without a doubt. Although this was Naverberg, one of the parishes of the Church of War, and a place he needed to defend, he was still a little worried. However, at this moment, the enemy was charging over. They were both at the seventh step, so he was not his match at all. 
it was obviously not a wise choice to die here. Even if he were to be punished in the future, it would be much better than dying here. You want to escape. You won't be able to escape with your speed. While he was fleeing, a voice that caused his heart to turn cold came from behind him. He turned around and saw that the distance between him and the mechanical angel that was emitting the rumbling sound was rapidly closing. At the same time, three terrifying demonic blades approached him rapidly. Carlos Radner immediately changed his position in the air. However, the demonic blade seemed to be aimed at him. No matter where he changed his position, the demonic blade followed him like a shadow and got closer and closer. What kind of spell is this? Why is it so strange that it seems to have locked onto me? But I can't feel any power locking onto me at all. The demonic blade was rapidly approaching. Carlos Radner's body once again transformed into a ray of white light and flew away at high speed. However, this time, when he turned into a ray of light and tried to escape again, the world seemed to have turned into a quagmire. The speed at which he turned into a ray of white light decreased. The three demonic blades that were chasing after him instantly arrived and flew into the light that he had transformed into, rapidly spinning. If it was a single incantation, this kind of first turn strangulation could only cause damage to the sharp edge of the magic blade, and could only cause partial cutting damage. However, these three demonic erosion blades were demonic blades constructed from powerful mid-grade secret engravings. As it rotated, it formed an extremely powerful suction force. At the same time, a strangulation force spread out in the surrounding area. Every trace and every tiny part of it was the strangulation force of the sharp demonic obliteration blade. In less than a second, the ball of light had already dissipated. Blood splattered. At the same time, Carlos Radner's body was reduced to a pile of minced meat as he fell from the sky. Even the tough bones were cut into pieces by the power of the devil corrosion blade. Even his soul source core had been crushed. Carlos Radner a mid-stage seventh-grade transcendent master, had fallen. 375 rulers flesh and blood. He looked at the dead Carlos Radner. Gunai's eyes narrowed. With the increase in strength, these powerful books that had been idle for a long time also showed more and more powerful and terrifying aspects. Gunai, who had just become a transcendent master, already had the power to kill a mid-seventh-rank transcendent master. Of course, the mechanical angel armor also gave him a lot of help. Gunai's own speed wasn't slow to begin with, and with the addition of the angelic armor, he's naturally even faster. He can easily catch up to you, a mid-seventh level transcendent. I'm currently using the occult runes. The secret crossing runes won't increase my strength by much if I gather more of them. I need to condense some saint shadow runes that can speed up. Below a transcendent master, speed is not one of the standards to measure one's strength to a large extent. However, at the transcendent master level, flying speed is a very important attribute. When you really encounter danger, the more you fly, the greater the chance you have of slowing down. Moreover, in a normal battle, the faster you are, the more options you have. The initiative is completely in your own hands. As he thought about it, he flipped his hand, and Carlos Radner's right arm, which had been cut in half, appeared in his hand. After cutting off his opponent's right arm, Gunai had used space intent to wrap it up and put it into his extraordinary storage space. The storage ring was still on his finger. He took off the transcendent ring and threw his arm into the blood sea. Gunai looked down. At this time, Hundreds of thousands of residents in the huge naver fort had noticed the battle in the sky. Everyone's eyes were focused on Gunai's figure. For this battle, Gunai had already prepared a lot of things to do after he won. Of course, he was also prepared to run away if he couldn't win. Gunai's voice was like thunder, filled with majesty and holiness. I am a mechanical angel from Holy Hajar under the orders of Lord Strooko Guillermo the god of war that you all call, we have descended upon the Oya continent. Gunai's voice, supported by his source power, resounded in a radius of more than 10 kilometers. Hearing Gunai's words, 
the hearts of all the residents below shook. Many of the extraordinaries also vaguely felt that something was wrong. Straoko Guillermo was the name of the god of war. However, this name was taboo in the church of war, and speaking the name of a god was a great sin. This mechanical angel, who claimed to be from Holy Hajar, was actually here on the orders of the god of war. Lord Straoko Gilmore, although you are in a distant world, you can feel what is happening here. The higher UPS of the Church of War and several others have already betrayed the God of War. They are all sinners who have blasphemed the God. They tampered with the divine belief pathway, collected the power of faith, and intended to create false gods. They even cooperated with the evil God, attempting to use the life and flesh of the War God's believers to help the evil God grow. These words were like a bolt of lightning that struck the hearts of the residents, causing their hearts to tremble. As of now, the higher UPS of the Church of War have completely betrayed the teachings of the Pope established by Lord Straoko Guillermo. They have even betrayed their faith and blasphemed the great God of War. All War God's believers, from today on, spread this news. No matter what, do not go to the church built by the group of blasphemers who betrayed the God of War to pray. The power of faith from your prayers in the church will be collected by the blasphemers and used to help them forge evil false gods to weaken the true God of War. If you are forced to pray by those blasphemers, you must remember not to recite the name of the true God, the God of War, when you pray. This will only breed the power of false gods and allow those blasphemers to succeed. The God of War needs everyone to be equal and free, without the suffering of war. And not like this group of blasphemers right now, who oppress you without restraint and treat you like livestock. I've come here to kill these traitors who blasphemed against the gods. Today, we shall kill Carlos Radner. That will be the beginning. In the future, I will kill these blasphemy fellows one by one. Gunai's voice was like a thunderclap. The moral high ground of faith, if you don't occupy it, the enemy will. Although Gunai's words might not have much of an effect, they were still very useful. But at the very least, it would sow the seeds in some people's hearts. Even if some people believed Gun's words and didn't pray by chanting the war god's true name, Gun's actions could be considered extremely successful. Secondly, it was not as if there were no resistors in the church's territory. There were also many who were dissatisfied with the church's rule. Gunai's actions would give the rebels a good reason to fight back. The speech ended. Gugni flew towards the church's castle. Just as they arrived above the castle. Heathen who blasphemes against the gods, you will fall into the abyss and be devoured by the devils. Angry curses came from below. Damn infidels, get out. Evil spirit of a foreign land you will suffer the most vicious curse. All kinds of stuff came in. At the same time, a number of spells flew up from below to attack him. I think that's more appropriate for those in power in the Church of War. They're the real heretics. Gunai replied in his heart. Then, Gun quickly cast a summoning spell, and rank four dark werewolves appeared one by one. In an instant, hundreds of dark werewolves had appeared. The dark werewolf that had killed the church knight was summoned by Gun. Kill them all. With Gun's command, the dark werewolves began to massacre the castle without restraint. There were also three very powerful tier 5 dark werewolf leaders, enough to deal with a certain number of tier 5 or even tier 6 church extraordinaries. If the church had too many high-level extraordinaries, then it would be hard to say. The bloody battle had begun. Following the miracle system's instructions, Gunai hid his tracks and landed. The ruler's flesh and blood was in the church's castle. As he walked around the castle, the explosions of incantations, the clashing of extraordinary martial skills, and screams interweaved into a large net of death that covered the entire castle. The smell of fresh blood also permeated the air. The three type 5 dark werewolf leaders were especially strong, standing at 4 m tall their claws as sharp as a mithril dagger. Gun had already signed a summoning contract with them, and he was ready to summon more dark werewolf leaders or even dark werewolf lords. It would be easy for them to deal with the minions. 
Gu Nai followed a flight of stairs and entered the cellar. The content of this side adventure didn't start with danger. If I'm not wrong, it should be from the same ruler as the flesh and blood I encountered before. Otherwise, if it was the flesh and blood of another ruler, it's impossible to not be dangerous. If it was the flesh of another ruler, he would definitely die when he obtained it. Gun, who had just become a master, didn't want to fall back to rank 6 because of reincarnation. I hope the volume of the flesh this time will be bigger. That way, I'll be able to digest it longer. 376 The War Council After a few minutes, Gun walked to the end of the tunnel and opened an ancient extraordinary door according to the incantation given by the system. The ruler's flesh and blood came into view. Gunai chuckled. This piece of flesh had bones, and it was a piece of meat. The whole piece of flesh and bone was five or six times the size of the one Gunai had gotten. Bones are good stuff Gunai said. By absorbing it, it might even improve the blood-producing function of my bones, allowing my Thanatos bloodline to transform faster and increase its upper limit in the future. As of now, Gunai's bloodline of the Thanatos is already in the transformation stage. Gunai's bone armor was beginning to turn golden, and 30% of his blood was dark gold. Gunai estimated that when his blood and bones turned dark gold, his leader bloodline would become a lord. After collecting the ruler's flesh, Gunai returned to the castle. At that moment, the sounds of battle in the castle had gradually subsided. Gunai knew the result. This result made Gunai frown. The three dark werewolf leaders were beaten up and fled in all directions. Then, they used the power of the contract to escape back to their own world. The remaining normal dark werewolves and a few elite werewolves were all killed. They didn't sign a contract with Gunai, so if he didn't let them go, they couldn't go back. After all, Naver Fortress was a place carefully managed by a war church. It was not a place that could be destroyed by hundreds of dark werewolves. Gunai, who was in stealth mode, quickly flew into the sky. He raised his hand into the air. As Gunai chanted, a storm of origin power quickly surged. The source power within a 100-meter radius surged over. A moment later, all the source power within a thousand meters was pulled over. Then, all the source power within a dozen kilometers was sucked in by Gunai. As the favored child of the world's profound meaning, the controller had a profound world's profound meaning. Absorbing origin power over a large area was very easy for Gunai. However, the source power that came over was not for absorption. Instead, it was used for destruction and destruction. A massive amount of origin power gathered above the ancient Nirvana realm. It quickly condensed into a source ball the size of a ping-pong ball. Then, it expanded to the size of a bowl. A minute later, they had already gathered to the size of a basketball. The origin power energy ball the size of a basketball was compressed to the extreme under the imprisonment of the world's profound meaning. Dark Power Upanishad and Destruction Power Upanishad were contained in it. At the same time, many of the extraordinaries in the church's castle below also noticed this scene. Some of the smarter ones had already guessed what Gunai was up to, and they began to run for their lives. As for those who were foolishly loyal, they swore to guard the castle with their lives. Go! Gunai threw it down, then turned into a shadow and flew away. After a while, Boom! Along with the violent source power vibration, a mushroom cloud floated up. Gunai was already far away. An hour and a half later, the two transcendent masters flew over in an aggressive manner. It was not that there was no emergency teleportation array here. It was because the teleportation formation had been destroyed. When they arrived at their destination, they saw the raised Naverberg Parish Church Branch Church Castle. The two transcendent masters' faces sank on the spot. I have to report this as soon as possible. After checking the surroundings, the older transcendent master said in a deep voice. The transcendent master stationed there had been killed, and the church castle in the Naverberg parish had been destroyed. This was no small matter. This was one of the core power areas of the Church of War. 
the solemn and dignified temple of the Church of War. The projections of four bishops and the Pope of the Church descended into the Church's holy temple. These five were all divine envoys, experts at the level of ancestral spirits. They were the highest combat power of the War Church, and they were the absolute controllers of the Church's power. Did you all receive the news? The War Pope's voice reverberated in the temple, carrying an ethereal quality and a little wool pressure. What happened? On the other hand, the War Bishop, who had a resolute face and looked like he had been cut by a knife and an axe, was not sure what had happened. I've been keeping watch at the front of the battlefield and haven't received any news. At the same time, I can't leave for too long. Just yesterday, Carlos Radner, who was stationed in the Neverberg parish, was killed. At the same time, the church's castle in the parish was razed to the ground. The female cardinal said softly. Eh, who would be so bold as to venture deep into the heart of our church, do they really think that we, the church of war, are to be trifled with, the war bishop's temper was quite in line with his, extremely fiery and aggressive. Glancing at the war bishop, the red-robed bishop then said softly, after our investigation, the person who killed Carlos Radner seems to be a foreign guest. Foreign visitors? Immediately, the others all looked over. They knew that the church castle of the Neverberg parish had been destroyed, and even Carlos Radner, who had been stationed there, had been killed. But they didn't know who did it. Previously, they had thought that it was some master from the Northern Empire. He didn't expect it to be a guest from another world. It's a mechanical angel. At the same time, this mechanical angel also claimed that he came from Holy Hajar. In addition, we of you. He also said that he came under the orders of Lord Stra Oko Gilmore. Lord Stra Oko Guillermo. The war bishop was stunned for a moment. He did not know who it was. After a moment, his expression changed. The war god, how is this possible? I also think it's impossible the red-robed bishop shook his head. Holy Hajar, do you know where this place is? I don't know. I'm not sure. The other bishops all shook their heads. Holy Hajar is a supreme high-dimensional transcendent world. At this moment, the war pope's voice softly spoke. The four people below couldn't help but be shocked when they heard this. They only knew a few words about the high-dimensional transcendent world from the ancient books. Even powerful existences like gods would find it difficult to reach such a place. Is what the mechanical angel said true? The war bishop said in a deep voice. So what if it's true, so what if it's fake, the war pope's voice was as calm as ever. When Stra Oko Gilmore left, it was equivalent to giving up on the church of war. Even if it's true, he only sent the war angels to kill us. We are no different from the enemies in the north. And if it's fake, then there's no need to even mention it. This is most likely a plot by those guys in the north. They just want to use these treacherous tricks to destroy us. It doesn't matter whether it's true or not, right? The war pope looked at the four of them. The four of them were silent. Regardless of whether the mechanical angel's words were true or not, they were indeed no longer important. If they did not destroy the North, the Empire in the North would definitely destroy them. There was no need for the measly mechanical angel to destroy them. In the past two years, the North had already developed the engraving potion. It could greatly enhance the soul and body's transcendent characteristics. At the level of transcendent characteristics, it could even transform the soul and body into elite grade. It was said that many powerful extraordinaries had emerged in the Northern Extraordinary Association during this period of time. It was especially obvious in the confrontation on the battlefield. They were both high-level extraordinaries, but there was a high probability that the extraordinaries from the South would not be able to defeat the extraordinaries from the North. As time passed, the advantage did not seem to be on their side. If they were destined to be annihilated, they had even less to fear. All they needed to do was to fight with all they had, even if it meant a life and death struggle. The plan to extract the world's origin has been finalized. The war pope's voice rang out again. 
the four of them immediately raised their heads and looked over. This is a good opportunity for all of you to become demigods. As long as we have enough demigod masters on our side, we can totally counterattack before the birth of the gods. We don't even need the gods to help us reverse the situation. Of course, the plan to give birth to a god is also of utmost importance. Send two transcendent masters who are good at tracking to track down this mechanical angel. Divine Judgment Bishop, be on standby at all times. Once you have the chance, teleport over immediately and capture this mechanical angel. Although he can't cause any trouble on his own, we can't let him wreak havoc in our hinterlands without any restraint. At the same time, if we can capture this mechanical angel, we can also learn more important information about Holy Hijar from him. Yes, the Bishop of Holy Court nodded in response. Everyone! The War Pope's voice boomed. We've entered a state of war we have to be on guard at all times and be wary of a large-scale attack from the north. As long as we wait for the extraction of the world's origin to begin, time will be on our side. The War Pope said softly. As long as we get stronger, it will be the time of death for those guys in the north. 377 Extracting the Origin of the World The next day. The Church of War had sent two level 8 Transcendent Masters to Naver Castle to conduct an in-depth investigation and track the traces of the Mechanical Angel. However, by the time they started their investigation, Gunai had already entered the depths of the southern desert and began to search for the ruler's flesh. Gunai knew that his first attack had caught his opponent off guard, so it was normal for his opponent to not have any masters. But now, the other party must be on guard. It would be dangerous for him to attack a second time. Therefore, Gunai didn't plan to fight a second time. At least, Gunai wouldn't do that for a while. What Gunai needed to do was to find the ruler's flesh and steadily improve his strength. After all, the engraving potion had started to be mass-produced. Many extraordinary strength had increased by leaps and bounds. On the battlefield, the Northern Extraordinary Association had a huge advantage. At the same time, he and Senior Nigel had the potential to become gods. If he could steadily increase his strength, the South Church and the evil gods would only have a slow death waiting for them. At the southernmost end of the Fallen Feathers St. Keys mountain range. Deep in the dark cave ruins. In the corner, Gunai slowly opened his eyes. A week ago, Gun had used the K-System compass to find the ruler's flesh and blood that was hidden deep in the ruins of the cave. At the same time, dark mist had already emerged from the depths of the ruined cave. According to the information Gun had gathered, he could guess that dark creatures would soon crawl out from the depths of the cave. The creatures hidden in the dark side of the world were also eager to try. It wouldn't be long before the dark creatures arrived in the Oya continent. With a leap, Gunai directly flew up and then flew outside. In this month, I've obtained three pieces of the Dominator's flesh. Each piece is no smaller than the piece of bone I obtained before. These three pieces of the ruler's flesh should normally take me almost ten years to digest. However, as the blood pool gradually expands, it's obvious that ten years will be reduced. At least five years is enough. Five years. I'll be able to become a saint in about five years. Gunai thought. Gunai quickly flew out of the cave and into the clouds. He looked to the northwest, which was the territory of the Church of War. Gunai shook his head. The Church of War must be trying their best to capture the mechanical angel. It's dangerous to go there now. Let's go back to the Starry Sky Tower first. Hiding his tracks, Gunai carefully observed his own changes as he flew. It had been more than a month since he left the Star Tower. Gunai's Rank 7 Transcendent Realm had been completely stabilized at the early stage, and he was starting to advance toward the intermediate stage. As the Blood Sea continued to be sacrificed, it also continued to expand. At the same time, under the control of the Blood Dream Elf, the Blood Dream Arena continued to expand. During this period of time, many more people had come to Blood Dream Arena. Moreover, the arena was filled with people almost every day, and there were battles going on all the time. 
the Blood Dream Elves were smart enough to open up more small-scale arenas so that more extraordinary humans could participate in the battle. The Blood Dream Arena had become Gunai's best way of steadily expanding the Blood Sea. The Blood Source Ocean Manual was also one of Gunai's most powerful techniques. It was even more powerful than Demonic Erosion Blade. The only pity is that Sigricodults doesn't have any more powerful potion books. The high-level soul potions are giving me a headache. Is it possible that we really have to go to Holy Hajar? Some time ago, Gunai had come into contact with Sigre Kotlts, the Hall Master of the Dawn Light Origin Race. Unfortunately, they didn't have any powerful Podi Wondering manuals for Gunai to cultivate with. And without a powerful potion manual, Gunai wouldn't have been able to develop a more powerful potion that could transform a soul into a Commander Tier soul. Gunai, who was flying above the clouds, suddenly stopped. Gunai squinted his eyes and looked around. The clouds below began to move, unnaturally torn apart. At the same time, the surrounding origin power also trembled slightly. Even the entire world began to tremble in Gunai's perception. What's with this Ying Luo? Gunai looked around warily. Gun felt something and looked in the direction of the Church of War and the Church of Healing. Immediately, a silent, sorrowful cry rippled through Gunai's perception. The silent wail was like the sigh of the world. Gunai even felt sorrow in his heart. Gunai closed his eyes and allowed himself to enter the profound meaning of the world. He felt the world as much as he could. It was the moment he completely released his perception and integrated it into the world. Gunai's mind shivered. Gunai felt it. The frame of the entire world of the Oya continent had been torn apart, leaving a deep wound. And that evil and strange power stopped the world from healing itself. As a result, the world's energy was constantly flowing out, and it had even begun to be extracted at an accelerated rate. Slowly retracting his perception, Gunai's face stiffened. The world's origin energy is being extracted. The two great churches of war and healing have completely allied themselves with the evil gods. They would rather the world be destroyed and their residents in the suburbs suffer the mutation disaster of death and calamity, all for the sake of allying with the evil gods. Gunai clenched his fist, and the killing intent in his heart grew stronger. Gun activated the mechanical angel and flew toward the teleportation point. Since the church and the evil god had started to extract the world's origin. thus it was impossible for the Transcendent Association to not take any countermeasures. This might involve him in it. Gunai needed to get to the Star Tower as soon as possible. After about three hours, Gunai had arrived at the teleportation formation. Using the teleportation formation, Gunai quickly returned to the secret room in the Starry Sky Tower. In the quiet secret room, the ancient shadow door stood on one side. The fog was constantly spinning. Gunai's figure was immediately teleported back from the ancient shadow gate. It was no different from when Gunai had left. If Miland Elkley came looking for him, he would be the first to sense it. The reincarnation glanced at the ancient shadow door and with a thought, Gunai kept it. The ancient shadow door was a world-class mystical item. He couldn't let anyone know. After some thought, Gunai sat down cross-legged on the cultivation seat in the small room. As expected, half an hour later. Swish! The transcendent door of the secret room lit up. At the same time, Miland Elkley's voice rang out. Gunai, something important has happened come out. 378 The Yulon Kingdom. Ka 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 ka! As the extraordinary door opened. The gloomy-looking Miland Elkley was standing at the door. Something big has happened. Miland Elkley said in a deep voice. Is it related to that slight world whale just now? Gunai asked. You felt it, Miland Elkley raised his eyebrows slightly. And, Gunai nodded. The slight change in the world just now was something that even peak level 9 transcendence could not sense. Only the Divine Envoys and the Ancestral Spirits could sense it. He didn't expect Gunai to be able to sense the Dao. It seems that Gunai's understanding of the world power Upanishad is quite deep. 
Moland Elkley thought to himself. The evil god and the South Church have joined forces to activate a massive array that extracts the world's origin. This is no small matter. The Transcendent Association's higher UPS are preparing to hold a meeting to discuss how to deal with this. You need to participate. Come with me now we'll use the teleportation formation to get there. N. Gun nodded and followed Moland Elkley down the tunnel. Will Senior Nigel be going too? Gunai asked as they advanced. Yes, Nigel will also be participating. Moland Elkley said as he walked. Other than the powerhouses who have important matters to attend to, most of the powerhouses will come. After all, this is a matter of our Oya continent's survival. At the same time, some peak 9th level transcendent experts will also come. These peak type 9 transcendents have the potential to become divine envoys and ancestor souls. In the depths of the starry sky watchtower, Gun and Muland Elkley entered the teleportation circle. As the light bloomed, Gunai could feel the time and space moving. After the milky white light dissipated, the meeting place of the Transcendent Association's higher UPS appeared before his eyes. This was a very wide, ancient hall made of grey stone. The central area was a huge, long, olive-shaped table. Further out were layers of public gallery. Behind the public gallery, there was a huge stone pillar that was 100 meters tall and 5 to 6 meters thick. Outside the stone pillar was a dense fog that was almost condensed. An invisible barrier blocked the dense fog outside. At that moment, there were already many oracles and ancestor soul powerhouses sitting on the high-backed chairs next to the long olive-shaped table. He closed his eyes to rest. Some of them were shrouded in mist, and it was unknown whether they were observing others or recuperating. There were also some who were happily chatting with others. However, most of the powerhouses had grave expressions. This is a world created by the ancestor soul space in the body of a god after his death. Murand Elkley said softly. There are many strange creatures that are still alive in the black fog. Remember, don't enter the black fog rashly. It will be dangerous. Yes. Gunai nodded. In fact, as soon as he had entered, Gunai had sensed that there were unusually powerful creatures in the fog. In terms of sensing the world, Gunai was very good. Go to the public gallery and find a seat. You can only speak when you are needed to speak. When they arrived at the council area, Maurand Elkley said softly. Understood. Gunai nodded. Gunai was just about to find a seat. Gunai. A voice that Gunai was very familiar with rang out. Gun turned around and saw Nigel looking at him from a nearby gallery. Senior Nigel. Gunai laughed, then walked over. You're here too Nigel lowered his voice after he sat down. Yes, Senior Maurer and Elkley asked me to come. Gunai nodded. It's been a long time since we last met. Senior, you're already a late stage level 7 transcendent. I'm afraid you'll soon advance to level 8. Gun looked at Nigel and said. You're not slow either. You've also become a transcendent master. Nigel laughed. The two of them were discussing. White light was constantly surging from the teleportation formation at the side. Oracles, ancestor souls, and peak or late stage transcendent rank nines were constantly entering the strange space. Gunai also noticed that there were more than 30 high back seats. In other words, there were more than 30 oracles at the ancestor soul level in the transcendent association. This number surprised Gunai. But after thinking about it, Gunai understood. The two great churches of the south had around ten experts of the same level. The three empires in the north had more territory and more extraordinary individuals. It was not strange for them to have more than thirty oracles and ancestor soul powerhouses. Everyone was waiting. More than two hours had passed. At this moment, a total of twenty-two experts had arrived on the high-back chairs. There were also more than 40 late-stage and peak-stage transcendent level 9s in the surrounding audience. The power here was almost more than half of the power of the three great empires in the north of the entire Oya continent. 
he could feel the thick and mighty aura coming from them. I'm probably the one with the lowest cultivation level. Gunai thought. Most of the staff have arrived. Let's start the meeting. A voice full of confidence sounded. The one who spoke was an old wizard with a white beard, wearing a wizard's robe and a wizard hat. Immediately, the people who had been talking in low voices stopped talking. Everyone's eyes were focused on him. Everyone had also heard about what had happened. This was a matter that concerned the three great empires in the northern part of the Oya continent, as well as the prosperity of the extraordinary society. Just a few hours later, the Church of War and the Church of Healing in the South have completely joined forces with the evil god. They have already activated a huge and powerful magic circle that can absorb the world's origin, regardless of the life and death of the surrounding humans. The old Magus explained in a loud voice. Our world's origin is currently being absorbed. If we don't stop it, in five or six years, our world will welcome its first withering period. This will cause irreversible damage to our entire world. When that time comes, the life force of our world will weaken, the vitality of flowers and trees will become fragile, and the number of babies born will increase. Even if babies are born, their lifespan and constitution will be greatly weakened. For supernatural beings, the risk of mutation and losing control will increase. Even if you transcendent masters are basically free from the possibility of losing control, with the arrival of the withering period, there is still the risk of losing control. In about 10 to 20 years, our world will enter a period of decline, and the number of extraordinaries will decrease sharply. After a hundred years, our world will enter the stage of death. However, we can't wait until that time. After 10 to 20 years, those evil gods will use the world's origin and gradually integrate into our world. Then, they will display the strength they should have. We'll be in danger then. The old sorcerer's words had already caused many people's expressions to change. Although he knew that the evil gods were cruel and destructive. But he didn't expect it to be so destructive. Gunai also frowned. The destructive power of this extraction of the world's origin was truly astonishing. Fortunately, we've already considered such a situation. The old Magus voice reverberated. Once they activate the array to extract the world's natural source. Then they must gather all their strength to guard the vicinity of the array that extracts the world's origin. This might be an opportunity. At this time, they don't have the power to come to our north to cause destruction and attack. We can use this opportunity to launch an attack on them. They'll definitely defend to the death. We don't necessarily have to eliminate them all. Even if we kill a small number of them, it will be a very effective countermeasure. What the old wizard had said made sense. But will the other party set a trap there? An expert asked. Without a doubt, they will. The old magus replied softly. In addition, they'll also set up a massive defense system to prevent us from attacking the formation. He might even prepare some killing moves for us. But our methods may not be any less than theirs. Everyone, this is a critical moment. Those evil gods can't wait to attack our world. And now, it's time for us to counterattack. The old Magus voice was sonorous and powerful. 379 Chapter 27 Gunai's Worry During the meeting, Gunai didn't have a chance to speak. Of course, with his current strength, he didn't have the right to speak. After all, those who participated in the battle were all powerhouses at the level of Divine Envoy and Ancestor Soul. Even those peak grade 9 transcendents did not have the right to interfere. The general idea of this meeting was naturally to start a war, a war between the Oracle and the Ancestor Souls. At the same time, the three empires would enter a state of full defense and vigilance to prevent sneak attacks from the other side's powerhouses. After all, Gunai had done this before. The only difference was that Gunai didn't attack the ordinary residents. But if the evil gods' subordinates attacked, they wouldn't show any mercy. If they could massacre the entire city, they would not let anyone off. It would be a disaster if they sneaked over. Through this meeting, Gunai could also feel it. 
the Southern Association and the Evil God began to extract the world's origin. Without a doubt, the three Northern Empires had entered a passive state. And NBSP, now, he had no choice but to attack the array that the Evil God had built. If they didn't attack and allowed things to develop, those evil gods would be able to use god-level power before Gunny and Nigel. At that time, the North had been destroyed. At this moment, it was time to attack. After all, they were attacking the other party's territory. The South Church and the evil god only managed to construct the world extracting circle eight or nine months after Gunny and Nigel had obtained the divine crown. He must have made ample preparations. After this, Gunai had a bad feeling. And NBSP, those evil gods were gods after all. Although they were suppressed by the world and couldn't use their strength, they were still gods. However, it was not as if they did not have any powerful methods in their hands. If this attack failed, the Transcendent Association would be in an even more passive position. Previously, time was on the Supernatural Association's side, but now, the scales of time had tipped in the favor of the evil gods and the church. Before they knew it, the meeting had come to an end. Gun, Nigel said softly before he left. We can't participate in the battle between the experts now. To us, the best way to resist is to cultivate. As long as we cultivate well and advance to demigods or even gods as soon as possible, then those evil gods and the southern churches will inevitably walk towards death. I understand Gunai nodded with a serious face. Then, Gun and Moland Elkley returned to the Starry Sky Watchtower. After sending Gunny back to his secret chamber, Maura and Elkley urged Gunny to train hard before leaving in a hurry. Obviously, after the meeting, the powerhouses needed to come up with their battle plan. In the dark and quiet secret room, Gunai sat cross legged on his cultivation seat. About half an hour later, in the Sea of Blood, Gun's demonic CO soul had silently cast the blood source, Great Blood Dream Curse and arrived at the Blood Dream Arena on the Sacred Feather Continent. As he sensed it more closely, Gunai discovered that the changes in the Blood Dream Arena of the Holy Feather Dark Origin were huge. The Blood Dream Arena was now seven or eight times larger than it had been when Gunai left. Furthermore, there were also a dozen small and medium-sized arenas. Moreover, more supporting facilities were also gradually being built. Compared to the free-range mode of the arena in the Oya continent, the Temple Master of the Dawn Light Origin race, Sagrak Hodults, had really built this Blood Dream Arena as the foundation of their race. The Blood Dream Arena, which had been expanded by seven to eight times, was still packed with people. At this time, the eight Blood Dream Arena of various sizes were in a state where people were fighting, and there were quite a number of extraordinary humans in the audience. Gunai nodded in satisfaction after looking through the information. From the blood sea, Gunai could feel the pure life force in the blood. The blood formed a small stream that slowly flowed into the blood sea. It brought life to the world of bloody sea. After all, the corpses could only be used as resources and materials to expand the blood sea. The blood crystals, which contained pure life force, could increase the life aura of the Blood Sea. The Blood Sea was a world of its own, and the Blood Dream Elf lived there. At this moment, Sagrak Hodults was sitting cross-legged on the fourth floor of the Blood Dream Arena. Sagrak Hodults clearly had more than one soul. It could allow one of the souls to guard the arena for a long time 24 sevenths. As soon as Gunai arrived on the fourth floor, Sagrak Hodults, who was sitting cross-legged and cultivating, immediately looked over. Your Excellency. There was respect in Sigrakadult's tone. It had been almost a year. Sigrakadult had used the Blood Dream Arena to successfully join forces with the other Temple Masters of the Drakra Mountains. All of them would offer sacrifices together, maintain the Blood Dream Arena together, and enjoy the benefits brought by the arena together. The effect was immediate. During this period, they continued to offer sacrifices. The number of people who entered was also increasing by the day. In about three months, most of the talented warriors in the Dakilong Mountains had entered the Blood Dream Arena. At the same time, the reputation of the Blood Dream Arena spread. 
there were already many transcendents who had joined them out of admiration. Of course, there were also many who were willing to spend a considerable amount of money to purchase the qualifications to enter the blood dream arena. And the number of people was increasing. As a result, the Don Owl origin race's income increased, and all sorts of resources came pouring in. The entire Don Owl origin race was rapidly developing. The credit for all of this could be attributed to the Blood Dream Arena built by the Great Lord of Nightmare. Of course, Gun Lawrence, the follower of the Lord of Nightmare, who had brought him to the Blood Dream Arena, had also contributed greatly. Without Gunai, their race wouldn't have been qualified to take control of the arena. Not to mention the vigorous development he had now. After looking at Gunny, Sigra Kotlts raised his eyebrows and smiled. Congratulations, Sir Gun. You've become a master. Gunai chuckled. Advancing to a transcendent master was indeed a crucial step. At the very least, there was a huge leap in strength. How's the recent development? Gunai asked. It's very good, Sigra Kotlts nodded slightly. The Blood Dream Arena has already started to have a suction effect on the surrounding transcendent tribes and cities. There are many talented extraordinaires who are willing to join our branch. However, the Blood Dream Arena is only open to extraordinaries below the master level, and the speed at which the extraordinaries below the master level expand the arena is not fast enough. This also limits the entry of many extraordinary humans. After all, Sir Gunai, you should know that there are many masters at the level of transcendent masters, and they are more wealthy and powerful the development of the entire Blood Dream Arena will be extremely rapid. There was nothing wrong with what Sigrakadults said. In the Sacred Feather Dark Origin, there were indeed many transcendent masters. This is no longer a problem. Gunai said. The reason I'm here is to tell you that experts at the level of transcendent masters can now enter the Blood Dream Arena. Sigrakadults was overjoyed at Gun's words. This was a joyous occasion. It was extremely important to the Blood Dream Arena and the development of their Don Owl origin race. In the following period of time, you can gradually offer the Blood Crystals of Extraordinary Masters to the Lord of Nightmares. At the same time, you should know the corresponding sacrifices, right? Of course I do. A Rank 7 Master needs the corpse of a low-level oracle, a Rank 8 Master needs the corpse of a middle-level oracle and a rank 9 master needs the corpse of a high-level oracle. Sigra Kotlts said. That's the minimum requirement the Lord of Nightmares gave you, and you were so afraid when you told the others, Gun said. I understand double the price. Sigra Kotlts chuckled. 380 The World Anchor As the Lord of Nightmares. Gunai needed to grow on his own, but he also needed to cultivate his own power. For example, the Dawn Light Origin Race. If they followed the ruler of Nightmare, their clan would be able to rise to great heights. If they betrayed the Lord of Nightmares, they would be nothing. Only then would they be able to follow the Lord of Nightmares' orders without hesitation. At this time, Gunai used the name of the Nightmare Lord to order them to do anything, and they would resolutely follow it. When he became a saint, he could even command a group of gods to do things for him. In fact, Gunai had been thinking about something before he came. That was to use the Lord of Nightmares' order as an excuse to have Sigrakadults gather a large number of powerful beings at the Divine Sense Ancestor Soul level and descend on the Oya continent through the teleportation array. The evil gods and churches that had joined forces to attack the South had constructed a great array to extract the world's origin. But the problem was whether or not experts on the level of the teleportation divine envoy and the ancestral spirit could do it. If he could do it, how many resources would he need to spend? In fact, Gunai's use of the ancient shadow doors teleportation had cost him a lot of energy. The two back and forth teleportations made Gunai's heart ache. Just teleporting across worlds within the Gulantan world group. The consumption of resources was so huge that even an oracle-level powerhouse would find it difficult to bear. As for the long-distance teleportation between the major transcendent world of Holy Feather's Dark Origin and the major transcendent world of Granton, even the Don Owl Origin race might not be able to do so. 
After all, Gunai had used the teleportation formation of a powerful country like Erismede's divine source to get here. Furthermore, a single teleportation could not be carried out a second time in a few hundred years. It was clear that the energy consumption was huge. Gunai asked after a moment of silence. Senior Sagre Kadraz, is it possible for the Donal origin race, or rather, the forces of the Dakalong Mountains, to perform interworld teleportation? Sakra thought for a moment and replied with a nod. It shouldn't be a problem to teleport from our sacred feathers darkness pool to the surrounding medium and small transcendent worlds. But the cost is extremely high. Unless it's something important, they usually won't teleport over. Then, Bayan, Gunai's voice slowed down. What about the teleportation between major transcendent worlds? Sigra Kadraz immediately laughed. Sir Gun, you used the power of the Great Lord of Nightmares to teleport to our extraordinary world, so you don't know how great the cost of teleportation is. However, I can tell you clearly that even I am not willing to pay such a high price to perform a teleportation across a major extraordinary world. Only those powerful gods have the qualifications and resources to perform inter-teleportation between major transcendent worlds. Also, if there isn't a better docking teleportation array, there's basically no possibility of teleporting over. Gunai's heart sank as he understood that his plan would not work. Then, is the cost of teleporting your world to the Holy Hijar in a higher dimension higher than that? The cost isn't too high. The ancestral spirits can afford to pay for oracles with decent strength. After all, our sacred feather dark source and sacred hijar have quite a lot of connections. Fixed teleportation formations also have fixed space-time light paths between them. This can save us a lot of money. Otherwise, based on the distance, not many deities in holy hijar of the holy feather dark origin path can afford to pay the price. After talking to Sigrakad Letts, Gunny had completely given up on asking for help. It was basically impossible. Sigra Kodaltz seemed to have noticed something after Gun's question. Sir Gun, did something happen in your world? Sigra Kodaltz asked softly. It's another follower of the Lord of Nightmares, and also a friend of mine. His world has been invaded by evil gods. At present, the evil god has already activated the Great Formation to extract the world's origin. Their forces are gathering their forces to attack the strange energy formation built by the evil gods to extract the world's origin. He asked me for help and wanted to gather more forces, but it seems impossible now. Gunai said. Extracting the world's natural source, Sigra Kardrit's expression was grave. This isn't good news. All sorts of weird and abnormal situations will appear in the medium to small extraordinary worlds after being selected for three to five years. If we can't destroy the formation that the evil god set up to extract the world's origin, I'm afraid the entire world will die. However, it's not like Ying Ying can't deal with this kind of array that draws energy from the world's origin Sigra Kodaltz said. Oh. Gunai was moved. What is it? World Angkor. World Angkor. N. Sigra Kodaltz nodded slightly. Sir Gun, do you know why no one in the major transcendent worlds extracted the world's origin? It's because those evil gods probably can't survive in major transcendent worlds. Gunai said. That's just one of the reasons. The other reason is that the energy arrays they've constructed are unable to draw out the origin source of a major transcendent world. In a major transcendent world, the deity realm and strength can be perfectly displayed. The world itself is extremely large in capacity. Secondly, once any god draws out the world's origin, any god who touches the world's origin will be suppressed by the large transcendent world on the spot. Then, they will be drawn into the world's origin and become a part of it. I see. Gun nodded and looked at Sigra Cadales. Then what does this have to do with the world anchor? Then it has a lot to do with this Sigra Kodaltz laughed. The world anchor is a unique item that imitates the framework of a major extraordinary world and strengthens the stability of the world's origin. Once the world anchor is released into the depths of the source of the extraordinary world, 
the stability of the world's origin will be greatly improved. Depending on the size of the world, the degree of stability will also be different. But it can basically be seen that a world anchor can increase the stability of a medium-sized extraordinary world by about three times. This will reduce the energy of the formation that the evil god constructed to extract the world's origin to a third of its original power. Two world anchors will reduce the speed at which they extract the world's origin energy to one-tenth of their original speed. Three, four world anchors can basically make the world's origin completely unaffected by the world's origin extraction formation. Thus, the evil god's image of the transcendent world is completely cut off. At the same time, the world's anchor is anchored in the depths of the origin. While stabilizing the world's origin, it can also allow the world's origin to grow faster, thus bringing about an increase in the energy level of the entire extraordinary world. After all, we extraordinaries can continue to grow, and the world of extraordinaries can also slowly grow. It's just that the growth rate of the transcendent world is too slow, and it's usually measured in millions of years. But with the world anchor, it'll be different. This speed will be dozens of times faster, or even hundreds of times faster. The world anchor. After Sagrakotl's explanation, Gun also realized the importance of the world anchor. The evil god was after the world origin of the Oya continent. If Gunai had three or four world anchors, he could directly anchor them in the depths of the world origin. Such drastic measures completely destroyed the evil god's hope. At that time, the entire world would no longer be attractive to them, and they would naturally leave. Whether it's for the current evil gods or the more powerful evil gods that might come later, the world anchor that can stabilize the world's origin must be obtained. This way, we can at least ensure that the Oya continent won't be coveted by the evil gods. Gunai began to think. Then, does this world anchor, the sacred feather darkness pool, exist? Gunai asked. The sacred feather's darkness pool doesn't need the world anchor, so it naturally doesn't have it. However, where can you find a Kazaya in the high dimensional transcendent world, Holy Hajar? However, the price is not cheap. High dimensional transcendent world, Holy Hajar. Gunai's eyes narrowed as he gently rubbed his fingers. He already had some ideas in mind. 381 The Projection Experiment In the dark and quiet secret room Gunai, who was sitting cross-legged on the cultivation seat, slowly opened his eyes. After chatting with Sigrakotlts for more than an hour and asking for more details about Holy Hajar, Gunny left the Holy Feather Dark Origin Blood Dream Arena. A battle between experts on the level of divine envoys and ancestral spirits. Even if we break the formation set up by the evil god this time. Those evil gods will construct it a second time. After all, the cost of constructing an array that draws on the world's origin isn't high. If I fail, I'll be even more passive. Gunai pondered. And as the mystical world of Arya enters the deeper parts of the origin tide. There will be even stronger evil gods. If a powerful evil god possesses a treasure that can temporarily avoid the suppression of the transcendent world, then it will be a treasure that can be used to suppress the transcendent world. Once it descends upon the world of the Oya continent, the entire world will once again be plunged into danger. It's imperative to stabilize the world's origin. Moreover, I also need the high-dimensional world Saint Hygar's soul engraving medicine to strengthen my soul. As he pondered, Gunai waved his hand. The door of ancient shadow had already been placed to the side. Standing in front of the ancient shadow door, Gunai's eyes narrowed. Let's give it a try and see if my method is feasible. Using the ancient shadow door to teleport would consume a lot of energy. However, the teleportation ability of the door of ancient shadow was only one of its functions. The more powerful part of it was its projection. Compared to teleportation, the power consumption of projection was minimal. Gun didn't have enough energy materials to teleport between the Oya continent and the Holy Hajar. However, Gunai could use the ancient shadow gate to project the Oya continent to the Holy Hajar. At the same time, Gunai used the special ability of his soul, body, and mana pool. 
Gung could have used shape-shifting to transform into Holy Hijar. As for whether or not he would succeed, Gunai wasn't sure. Gunai decided to give it a try. Gunai raised his head and looked at the sky above the secret room. It was a pitch-black roof. As Gunai stared at the ceiling, it gradually turned dark. Then, a bright star lit up. Gunai waved his hand, and a star soul the size of a glass ball fell from the roof into his hand. As of now, Gunai's cultivation of the Sunset Star Source Law had reached level 4, and he was close to level 5. Gunai's soul had also become 18 star souls. Gunai had hidden two star souls in this secret chamber. After fiddling with the star soul for a while, Gunai poured his origin power into the ancient shadow door. The swirling mist within the door of ancient shadows grew thicker. A moment later, Gunai created a projection of power that was shrouded in the grey fog. Gun stared at the projection, and the fog quickly turned into dusk. He threw it lightly, and the star soul entered it and disappeared. Placing one hand on the ancient shadow door, Gunai used the coordinates in Yali's soul and began to locate the door. A moment later, Gunai used the ancient shadow gate to lock onto the distant coordinates. I hope it works Gunai thought. As Gunai activated the door of ancient shadow, the entire projection was sucked into the swirling vortex. As the power of the projection bloomed, Gunai felt as if he had crossed the endless starry sky. His soul was wandering in the vast starry sky. Holy Hajar! At the edge of the battlefield of the Calamity Wind Desert. Within the teleportation array, a grey light surged. Then, the projection of the grey fog had already arrived in the teleportation array. As soon as he entered, Gunai felt a terrible gravity. The gravity was so strong that it was almost impossible to resist, and Gunai's projection was pressed to the ground. The power of his soul quickly surged, and Gunai's projection stabilized. This gravity is probably thirty times that of the Oya continent. Gunai was shocked. Gunai then looked around. The vast desert stretched as far as the eye could see. The sky was clear for thousands of miles, and a scorching sun was blooming. Gunai estimated that the temperature here was at least 150 degrees. The surroundings were barren, and there was not a single person. There were some abandoned desert buildings not far away. Gunai began to walk toward the abandoned building. The body projection wasn't considered strong, and should have the strength of a third or fourth rank. However, with this level of strength, it would be a little difficult to walk in Holy Hajar. No wonder it's said that there are so many strong people in Holy Hajar. Such an environment will naturally make it difficult for the weak to survive. And the extraordinaries who survive will only become stronger and stronger. According to the memory in the soul of that Yali, in Holy Hijar, some babies have rank 3 or rank 4 physiques when they are just born. It seems that this is true. He arrived near the ruins of the desert building and found a cool place to sit down. After a period of adaptation, Gunai began his own experiment. The astral soul of the projection body flew out. At the same time, in a dark secret room. With a thought, Gunai's body and soul source core began to transform into soul essence. At the same time, the soul in the holy Haika or desert began to release the physical power that it had transformed into. Using the soul as a bridge for transformation. Gun's body was transformed from the Oya continent to holy Hijar. This was Gunai's plan. As the owner of ten occultic runes, he had to be careful. Gunai's soul, origin power and body could transform between each other. Furthermore, the conversion efficiency was rather high. This was the core of Gunai's plan. Following the transformation. In the middle of the desert, Gunai's body was quickly built. Strength was also growing in his body step by step. At the same time, Gunai's body was also rapidly disappearing from the secret chamber. All that was left was a star soul. About half an hour later, Gunai had completed the transformation of his physical body across the long distance. Although it was rather time-consuming and laborious, and if he encountered passers-by or powerful desert exotic beasts during the transformation process, it was very likely that his body would be destroyed. 
However, there was no problem with this transformation. Gunai, who was sitting in the shade of the desert ruins, slowly opened his eyes. Hu hu hu! He let out a breath and put on his clothes. Then, Gunai carefully felt the power of his body, his blood, his runes, his demon pool, his blood sea, and his soul. A smile appeared on Gunai's face after the inspection. As expected, the transformation power of the occultic runes is really amazing. As expected of the powerful runes from Thulhu creatures. This transformed body of mine is exactly the same as my previous body. It's really amazing. Gunai then slowly rose into the air. Without using any spells, Gunai Wang was able to fly in the environment of Holy Hajar, which had more than 30 times the gravity, with his own strength. Gun knew that in Hajar, many 7th level masters couldn't fly even if they used incantations. Gunai was able to fly because of his 6 mark soul source core, as well as the density of his demonic source. But this flying speed is really slow. I'm afraid it's only a quarter or a fifth of the Aoya continent the condensation of the Saint Shadow Runes, the condensation of the Saint Shadow Runes, I have to put it on the agenda. Gunai found a direction and slowly flew off. About ten minutes later, Gunai stopped in the air above an unremarkable sand dune. He released his world power Upanishad to sense his surroundings. After making sure that no one else had noticed him, he landed on the sand dune. Gunai then waved his hand and a star soul appeared. Gunai looked at the corner of the ruins. Suddenly, the scene of dusk appeared in the corner. Gunai raised his hand and put the star soul into it. After that, he went to two more ruins and placed two more souls into them. After he was done with all this, Gunai began to transform again. Half an hour later, Gunai's body was gone again. His clothes were covered by the wind and sand. 382 The Condensation of the Holy Shadow Runes Gunai, who had returned to his secret room, slowly opened his eyes. Hu hu hu! Gunai let out a breath. If he left a star soul in Hijar, he could enter the place at any time. He didn't have to pay too much to enter Hijar, which was a great relief for him. Compared to the desolate and dangerous desert of Holy Hajar, the forest was much more dangerous. It was obviously safer to cultivate in the tower. After all, in Yali's sole memory, that area was at the edge of the battlefield, and the danger level was not low. If they stayed there, there might be powerhouses from the Divine Kingdom passing by, and there might also be freelance mercenary warriors hunting there. At the same time, there were also powerful sandworms, giant desert scorpions, black desert snakes, and other creatures in the desert. I hope that the battle in a few days will have a good result. At the same time, Gunai narrowed his eyes. He's starting to condense the Saint Shadow runes. Gun's previous fighting ability had mainly come from his instant casting of powerful spells. Therefore, the condensation of the engravings was the most important thing. Right now, it was difficult to increase Gunai's strength even if he continued to form demonic runes. After ten occultic runes appeared, Gunai felt a strange wash over him. Gunai didn't know what the cleansing meant, so he didn't need to keep gathering the occultic runes. As he became a transcendent master, the speed attribute became more important. Naturally, Gunai needed to form the holy shadow rune. I wonder what kind of special effect it will have when I form 5 or 10. Gunai thought to himself as he gathered his energy. When Gun was forming the occultic rune. At the same time, Gunai was aware of the situation outside. Gunai wasn't the only one paying attention to this battle. Many other powerhouses were also watching. After all, this was a battle between the strongest forces in the north and the south. Before he knew it, a week had passed. Hu hu hu! Gunai slowly opened his eyes. At the same time, grey scales appeared on Gunai's body. The scales on Gunai's body were like nails. The bearing capacity of this holy shadow rune is really amazing. When I first became a transcendent master, I used up my bearing capacity. Now that I'm close to the mid-stage of the seventh level transcendent, 
my bearing capacity should have improved a lot, but I can only condense three holy shadow runes. However, Ying Luo. Gu Nai's mouth curled into a smile. The second and third saint shadow runes still increase my speed by about 50%. That's a shocking improvement. When my bloodline transforms into a Than Aether, and I advance to the mid-stage of the seventh rank, I can basically condense five or even six. At the late stage of the seventh rank, condensing ten was a little difficult. But after advancing to the eighth rank, condensing ten was very easy. The other one is Bayan. Gunai's eyes narrowed. Last night, I heard from Blood Dream Arena that there was an astonishing battle in the church's territory. The results should be out by now. It's time to find Senior Maland and understand the battle situation. Gunai stood up and opened the extraordinary door. He quickly arrived at the tower where Maurand Elkley was. When he landed at the entrance to the top of the tower, Gun saw two level 7 transcendent guards in black armor standing guard at the entrance of the tower. Greetings, Sir Gunai. The two guards saluted Gunai. Is Senior Maland Elkley back? Not yet, the guard on the left replied. Did Senior Maland Elkley leave a message saying when he would be back? No, I didn't, the guard shook his head. After thinking for a while, Gunny was about to ask the guard to inform him when Maland Elkley returned. Maland Elkley's voice came from behind Gun. Gunai, you've come. Gun quickly turned around and saw Maland Elkley in his white metal armor. At this moment, Maland Elkley's expression was calm as usual making it difficult to tell whether the outcome of this battle was good or bad. Senior Maland Elkley. Gunai bowed. Since you're here, come in with me. Maland Elkley waved his hand, and the restrictive door slowly opened. Gun walked in with Maland Elkley. When the door closed and the restriction reappeared, the door opened. Only then did Maland Elkley turn around to look at Gunny. The result of this battle isn't too good. After Maland Elkley sat down on the sofa, his tone was rather solemn. Gun didn't dare to ask any more questions. He waited for Maurand Elkley's explanation. After drinking some potions, Murand Elkley muttered to himself for a while before he slowly explained. You should know that someone in the higher UPS of our Transcendent Association has been infiltrated. In this battle, we were already on guard against these traitors, but we didn't expect that at the crucial moment, they would reveal their fangs. They cooperated with the evil gods and the half-divine weapons they had, giving us a heavy counterattack. A half-divine weapon Gunai's heart skipped a beat. Above the top legendary equipment was the legendary semi-godly weapon. According to Gunai's knowledge, even gods might not have a semi-divine weapon. He didn't expect the traitors to have quasi relics. This is really bad news. Gunai's heart felt a little heavy. There were two traitors in total, or even more than two. There might be other traitors who are deeply hidden. Osman is dead there was a hint of sorrow in Maland Elkley's tone. M. Olanchi is also dead. The Grand Duke of the St. Liuya Empire is also dead. Many of them are seriously injured. Although we killed two of their people, the overall result of this battle was not good. It could even be said that the attack plan this time was not very effective. In fact, we didn't even manage to attack the formation that is extracting the world's natural source that many times. At this point, Maland Elkley seemed to have recalled something and muttered to himself. After hearing Maland Elkley's explanation, Gunny felt a lot more at ease. From the results, it was still acceptable. At least they didn't suffer heavy losses because of the evil god's arrangements. However, this did not reverse the situation. And NBSP, those evil gods would use the world origin to merge into the world and get rid of the world's suppression. It could be said that with every bit of the world's origin extracted, the power of those evil gods would increase a lot. After a moment of thought, Gunai spoke. Senior Maland Elkley. As Gunny spoke, Maland looked over. My main goal at the Transcendent Master Realm is to cultivate in seclusion and improve my strength. This time, I want to cultivate in seclusion for ten months. 
I want to cultivate directly to the Saint Plain. Only then will I be qualified to participate in the war between the strong. N. Murand nodded slightly. Your thinking is correct. For you, focusing on your training is the most important thing after all, you and Nigel are our last trump cards and hope. Gunai continued. Therefore, for a long time, if nothing major happens, I hope that my cultivation will not be disturbed. N. Milan nodded seriously. Don't worry about that. Since you've said so, unless the enemy barged into the starry sky watchtower, no one will go back and disturb you. I'm relieved to hear that, Senior Murand. The current situation was in a stalemate, and it would last for a long time. It was time for Gunai to use his own special abilities. Gun had the Dusk Star Source Cannon, which was a star soul technique and combined it with the transformation ability of the occultic runes. Because of this, Gunai's physical body wasn't afraid of death. Only by destroying all of Gunai's astral souls could it be considered as killing him. But the problem was that Gunai now had 18 reincarnations. Attacking Gunai was harder than ascending to the heavens. He didn't need to worry about his own safety, and he didn't need to go into closed-door cultivation. Therefore. Gunai had made up his mind to leave the Oya continent and go to the Holy See. The World Anchor was a treasure that could directly increase one's transcendent master level. There were demigod artifacts, god artifacts, and even more powerful power Upanishad scriptures Holy Hajar had everything it needed. When Gun had returned to the Oya continent, he was still in a daze. Those evil gods wouldn't be able to cause any waves in the Oya continent. 383 Extraordinary Master Gu Ni. Holy Hajar. At the edge of the battlefield in the Calamity Wind Desert. In the ruins of a desert. Gu Nai slowly opened his eyes. What he saw was an endless desert. A strong wind with source power blew, sending sand and gravel flying. The mechanical angel armor on Gu Nai's body made cracking sounds. Gu Nai rose into the air and looked around the vast desert. His brows furrowed. It's hard to determine the direction. If we fly randomly and enter the center of the desert battlefield, we might not be able to come out for a few months. In the worst case, we might be captured and killed by those free mercenary warriors or the warriors of the two divine kingdoms. The battlefield of the supremely evil wind desert was extremely huge. It was thousands or even tens of thousands of times larger than the entire extraordinary world of Oya. However, the sorrowful wind desert battlefield was just a small, unknown battlefield in Holy Hajar. Holy Hajar was simply too huge. Just as he was thinking about how to choose a direction. What, Gunai suddenly looked into the distance. There's a battle? It doesn't seem to be too intense. Maybe I can ask someone for directions. With that in mind, Gun activated the mechanical angel and flew over. Even with three saint shadow runes, Gunai was still slow. After the mechanical angel was activated, the speed was very impressive. With the roar of the source power furnace, Gunai quickly flew in the direction of the battle. A few minutes later, at the edge of a huge desert basin, Gunai saw the two sides fighting. There were three type 8 transcendents currently engaged in battle. It was a foreign man in white armor. He was tall and burly about 2.2 or 2.3 meters tall, but he was extremely thin. His skin was dark brown, and he held a magic spell sword. He was at the early stage of Transcendent Level 8, and each of his attacks contained extremely strong wind ultimacy. Combined with the offensive power of the magic spell sword, it was quite powerful. What surprised Gun was that the man in white armor was carrying a furnace weapon case. He was fighting two other mechanical angels like Gun. However, Gun's mechanical angel was silver. The two mechanical angels were blood red. The auras that these two people emitted were late stage and peak stage rank 8. At this moment, the three of them were in an extremely anxious state. The two of them had mechanical angels, and one of them was at the late stage of transcendent rank 8 while the other was at the peak of rank 8. As for the early stage level 8 extraordinary without a mechanical angel, he was able to fight to a standstill with the two of them. 
what shocking strength Gu Nai thought to himself as he glanced at the white armored man. As soon as Gu Nai approached, the three of them immediately noticed him. Friend, come and help us kill this damn extraordinary from the origin sword race. This person is extremely evil and has killed countless people. He even used the furnace demon weapon case to refine countless living beings. One of the blood-colored mechanical angels immediately roared. The whirlpool of fate flashed in Gunai's eyes. Using the common language of Hijar, Gun spoke. Why don't I see any evil in him? Instead, I see a lot of detestable auras on the two of you. I think the two of you are the ones who committed the most heinous crimes. As soon as he finished speaking, Gunai suddenly attacked. Zi. A sound. And NBSP, the Thunder Flame curse instantly struck the blood red mechanical angel from a distance of 500 meters. The Thunder Fire curse was directly transmitted to the blood red mechanical angel. There was no room for him to dodge. After advancing to Transcendent Rank 7, the abilities of a domain spellcaster and the favored child of the world's mysteries combined. This gave Gun the ability to instantly transmit spells within a thousand meters. In other words, Within a thousand meters, Gunai could instantly transmit the Thunder Flame Curse to the opponent, making it impossible for the opponent to dodge. It was even more terrifying than locking on. The level 9 Great Thunder Flame Curse was extremely powerful. Even a late stage level 8 extraordinary would not be able to withstand it. Arg! A muffled scream came from the blood red mechanical angel armor. Brat, you're looking for death. And NBSP, the late stage Type 8 Mech Angel let out a roar and leaped, shaking off the early stage Type 8 Extraordinary and charging at Gu Nai. It was fast, but Gu Nai's casting speed was even faster. As he retreated, the Great Thunder Fire Curse continued to fall. After becoming a Transcendent Master, Gu Nai's spell stacking efficiency had increased to 45 spells per second. However, to a Transcendent Master, a second of battle time was long enough for them to dodge. In the past, the saturated bombardment of spells below the Transcendent Master Realm was already somewhat ineffective at the Transcendent Master level. What replaced it was a confrontation of all kinds of strange means. However, the 45 curses in a second still gave Gunai a huge advantage. Zzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzzz
the destructive power of spells is astonishing. Other extraordinary professionals with their own characteristics will also increase their advantages in the aspects that their extraordinary professions are good at. The blood sea ability of the blood origin curse mancer in my star sequence is also quite powerful. It's not inferior to my book of Upanishads. It's just that there's no one in Ying Luo who can force me to use my methods. I hope that this time, I'll be able to meet an expert who can force me to use a certain amount of my strength. Speaking of which, the third awakening of my blood origin curse master bloodline is coming soon, isn't it? My divine scripture of the blood source ocean is almost at the sixth rank. I feel like it's at level seven, or at most level eight. I'll be able to undergo the third awakening. I hope I can awaken a strange sacred art Gunai thought. While Gunai was thinking, the battle between the two had gradually come to an end. 384 Chapter 32 Duo Lance It had to be said that the strength of that early 8th level foreign man was really very strong. Even the blood red mech angel expert at the peak of the type 8 realm had a mech armor that was a legendary treasure to defend his entire body. He was still killed by the foreign man's continuous attacks with the demon curse sword. The fact that he could kill an extraordinary with a legendary armor in between made Gun think even more highly of this man. A beginner against a peak level, and he even crushed him with his strength. No matter how one looked at it, this guy was a top extraordinary genius. At the same time, he glanced at the furnace demon weapon case that the foreign man was carrying. Also, the furnace demon weapon case that this guy is carrying probably weighs tens of thousands of kilograms in Saint Hijar. He's still moving so fast while carrying such a thing. If he were to put it down, his speed would be unimaginable. Also, there might be even more powerful weapons in this forge demon weapon case could it be a high tier legendary demon weapon? A more powerful magic weapon? Or is it a quasi relic? Gunai observed the man from another world. The foreign man put away his blood-red mechanical angel armor and looked at Gunai. The offensive power of the other party's spell had left a deep impression on him. After a moment, the man flew over to Gunai. I'm Dolans thank you for your help just now, friend. The foreign man said to Gunixi. The head part of the mechanical angel armor slowly opened, and Gun revealed his head. Gun Lawrence you can call me Gun I was just passing by just now and gave him a hand. In addition, I still need your help with something. Gun I said. What is it? I'm not very sensitive to directions and can't remember the direction easily. To put it bluntly, I'm lost here. Can you take me out of here? Gun I said helplessly. Duo Lance couldn't help but laugh. This was a rare situation. This small matter is easy to deal with. It just so happens that I'm also leaving the battlefield of the consoling wind desert to a nearby city. Sir, please follow me. Thank you, Gunai said with a happy expression. It's just a small matter. Under Duo Lancy's lead, the two of them flew in the same direction. Sensing the direction the two were flying in, Gunai felt lucky. The direction Gunai had chosen was the exact opposite of where they were now. As long as there was a specific direction, the ability of the ancient Nirvana world's favored child of the profound could accurately determine the direction of any location. Sir Gunai, what are you going to do in the Shu Wo Desert? To be a free mercenary warrior? Or do you want to join the army? Duo Lance asked casually as they moved forward. Neither. I wanted to go to the floating continent, but I went in the wrong direction and got lost here. I've been here for a few days. The floating continent. Duo Lancy glanced at Gunny. To the Divine Kingdom Arena. N. Looking for someone, or is he going to participate in the gladiator fight? I'll participate in the gladiator fight. Gunai said. Duo Lancy muttered softly after a moment of silence. From your accent and your proficiency in the common language, you haven't been learning the language for long, have you? With Gun's accent and his proficiency in the holy Hajar language, he was easily recognized at first. However, Gunai was prepared for this. I won't hide it from you, Sir Dolans. 
I come from a small world in a wonderlands. In the Aoya continent, there were a few empty source spaces. Naturally, there were also some in Holy Hijar, and there were quite a few of them. In the Holy Hijar's spatial origin space, it was known as the strange small world this was because the spatial origin space of the Holy Hijar was indeed as large as a small or even medium-sized transcendent world. You also know that a wondrous world is relatively isolated from the outside world. I've advanced to the level of an extraordinary master through cultivation. The experts of my clan saw that my talent wasn't low, so they sent me out. They want me to head to the floating continent and participate in the Divine Kingdom arena. They hope that I can obtain more powerful books, treasures, divine artifacts, and so on. Of course, if some gods take a fancy to you and take you in as a member of their forces, that would be great. Duo Lancy nodded. The God Kingdom Arena in the Floating Sky Continent is a magical place built by the Great Neutral God. Several rulers' kingdoms, and even dozens of God Kingdoms, have a large number of gods stationed in the God Kingdom Arena all year round. A Deity Controller This was a powerful existence that was one level above the realm of gods. The existence of this level was a legendary existence in the entire Holy Hijar. In some crucial battles, tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of extraordinary humans will watch. And the number of projections broadcasted to the outside world is tens of billions, even hundreds of billions. After all, there are too many extraordinary humans in the divine kingdoms around the floating sky continent. If you perform well enough, you will be valued by them and then absorbed into their divine kingdom to become a core extraordinary. However, I don't think you've prepared too much for the Divine Kingdom Arena, sir. Gunai was startled. He quickly shook his head. I have just arrived in Chenhaga, and I don't know much about the Divine Kingdom Arena. I am not well prepared. Then, Gun glided over the forge weapon case behind Duo Lance. Gunai pondered and said, Could it be that you are also afraid? Not bad, Duo Lancey smiled. I'm also heading to the Divine Kingdom Arena. Gunai laughed when he heard this. This was fate. Then, what preparations do I need to make to go to the Divine Kingdom Arena? Gunai asked. The first is naturally the weapon. Duo Lancey said softly. You don't have a magic weapon, do you? Gunai shook his head. Although Gun had a legendary staff, the Dragon Slayer staff had yet to be activated. Even if it was activated, compared to the more flexible magic weapons, this Dragon Slayer staff was indeed a little outdated. First of all, we definitely need the necessary magic weapon Duo Lancey said. Next is the defensive equipment. This mechanical angel is a very good defensive equipment. At the same time, it can also increase speed and flexibility. In addition, you must also study the necessary ultimacy scriptures. After all, those who dare to enter the Divine Kingdom Arena are all extraordinary warriors who have cultivated one or two extremely powerful ultimacy scriptures. However, your spells are so powerful. You must have cultivated a book of power Upanishads, right? Yes. Gunai didn't try to hide anything. Although the number of magic weapons is relatively small, they can still be purchased. If you come across anything suitable on your journey to the Divine Kingdom Arena, you can buy it. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing Gunai chuckled. To Gunai, the Dark Sorcerer staff really needed to be replaced. When we have the magic weapon, the basic preparations will be complete. However, there are still many unknown rules. I will slowly explain them to you, sir. Thank you, Gunai said. 385, Windstream Ancient City. The two of them talked as they walked, and time flew by. During the exchange, Gunai had a new understanding of the Divine Kingdom Arena on the floating sky continent. Gun was currently located in the vast and endless Zillamo continent of Holy Harkard. In this vast high-dimensional transcendent world, there were seven ruler nations. There were hundreds of large-scale divine kingdoms. There were also countless medium and small divine kingdoms. As for the people of the continent of Zillamo, 
even a medium-sized divine kingdom would be much more powerful than Erismede's divine source kingdom. One could see how majestic and vast this high-dimensional transcendent world, Holy Hajar, was. The floating continent was one of the floating continents that was located near the center of the Zilamo continent. Its surface area was comparable to half a major transcendent world. The Divine Kingdom arena within the floating sky continent was famous throughout the entire continent for its life and death duels. Life and death battle. The two of them fought to the death. The winner lives, and the loser dies. This was one of the iron rules of the Divine Kingdom arena. Many geniuses and experts wanted to go to the floating continent to train and fight with other geniuses. They hoped to make a name for themselves in the Divine Kingdom arena. However, due to the rules of life and death battles, many geniuses had fallen in the Divine Kingdom arena. At the same time, many geniuses had made a name for themselves in the God Kingdom Gladiator arena. Some of them had even been chosen by the gods who controlled the God Kingdom. They were then accepted into their respective forces and became the core geniuses of their respective forces. As the two of them moved forward, in front of the horizon, a tall mechanical tower gradually appeared on the desert horizon. That's the ancient city of Windstream Desert. Duo Lancy said as he squinted his eyes. The ancient city of Windstream Desert is a gathering place for many independent mercenary warriors. At the same time, there are many chambers of commerce there. However, the chambers of commerce here rarely sell magic spell weapons. After all, magic spell weapons are expensive. You have to be careful. The public security here is not very good. It is not rare for some assassins to secretly kill people. N. Gunai slightly nodded. Gunai wasn't in a hurry to use the devil incantation weapon. After all, he didn't have a lot of money. Although he had obtained all the properties of Yali and the Type 8 Blood Red Mechanical Angel, these properties were enough to obtain ordinary magic weapons. But ordinary magic spell weapons weren't enough to satisfy Gunai. At the very least, Gunai wanted to get a mid-grade or even high-grade magic weapon. As for the peak-level devil incantation weapon, it would be best if he could. If he couldn't get it, there was no need to force it. You take this. As he spoke, Duo Lancy handed over a palm-sized golden token. This is a communication token. I'll let you know when I've found the airship machinery. Yes Gunai nodded. The higher dimensional transcendent worlds were directly projected from the shadow layer and many other layers. As a result, the spatial position was very complicated. This also caused the teleportation arrays in the high dimensional transcendent world to be greatly disturbed. Most of the time, it was impossible to directly teleport. Thus. In the high-dimensional extraordinary worlds, most of the time, mechanical airships were used to travel long distances. This was much more convenient and faster. After all, the speed of the mechanical airship was extremely fast. After a short while, the two of them arrived at the ancient city of Windstream Desert. After giving some instructions to Gunai, Duo Lance disappeared into the streets of the ancient city. Gun thought for a moment and put away the mechanical angel armor. He also quietly entered the ancient Windstream Desert City, which was a combination of machinery and an ancient city. He walked on the street. Gunai glanced around and saw many masters at the transcendent master level. There were even many oracles among them. After some inquiries, Gun walked down the street and arrived at the commercial street of the ancient city of Windstream Desert. After looking around, Gunai quietly entered the first chamber of commerce. After an hour, Gunai walked out with a calm expression. A female transcendent master at the peak of level 9 received Gunai. Gunai asked for information regarding devil incantation weapons and secret engravings. The information that the other party told him made Gunai realize the rarity of devil incantation weapons and secret engravings. Even in Holy Hajar it was difficult to obtain such good things. After some negotiations, Gunai sold some of the things he had. At the same time, the number of sacred source coins in Gunai's hand had increased from 1,200 to 2,000. The sacred source coin was the common currency of Holy Hajar. 
it was extremely valuable. Gunai estimated that one sacred source coin was worth more than 10,000 gold rank coins. The sacred source coin was so valuable because it contained a fixed amount of power of faith. If one had enough sacred source coins, a transcendent master who was at the peak of transcendent level 9 could easily advance to the oracle realm. At the same time, people like oracles and ancestor souls could also absorb the power of faith in the sacred source coins to improve their strength. However, absorbing the power of faith in the sacred source coins was obviously not cost-effective. It was more effective to buy faith crystals with sacred source coins than to absorb the power of faith in the coins. Gunai thought to himself as he walked down the street. Even the most ordinary devil curse weapon is worth more than 3,000 sacred source coins. In other words, the staff you can buy with 3,000 sacred source coins is just an ordinary legendary staff. A slightly more powerful intermediate magic spell staff is worth 7 to 8,000 sacred source coins. A high-level magic staff is usually worth around 20,000 sacred source coins. Those peak-level magic spells and staffs are usually worth more than 50,000 sacred source coins. As for those transcendent masters, there are very few transcendents who can buy a mid-grade magic spell staff. Most of the transcendent masters are still relatively poor. Those who can buy mechanical angels are already considered to be in the richer class. I've sold many of my items, including the Dragon Slayer staff, the mechanical angel, and other materials. I think I'll get around 4 to 5,000 sacred source coins. It's not a big problem to buy an ordinary magic weapon. But if I want to buy a powerful mid-level magic weapon, I'm afraid it will be a little difficult. As he thought about it, Gunai set his eyes on his own planting spot. At the moment, the only valuable thing Gunai had was this plant slot. The emperor grade sunflower tree was covered in fist-sized sunflower fruits. Gunai also tried to eat one, but when the hot fruit entered his stomach, he felt like he had entered boiling water. His entire body was extremely hot. When Gunai tried to sense Dark Power Upanishad, he found that his perception of Dark Power Upanishad was blocked. Gunai now understood that the sunflower fruit wasn't as simple as it seemed. Perhaps, this thing was related to the light profound. As for the treasures related to profound meaning, Gunai had made some inquiries before and found that they were worth no less than a hundred sacred origin coins. Gunai vaguely guessed how the sunflower tree would open. Secondly, the elven tree of life in Gun's possession had an endless supply of water from the spring of life. The value of the water of the spring of life was not low. Gunai could also sell some. As for the true netherworld origin fruit, it wasn't of much help to Gunai anymore, and was still worth a bit of money. The deep sea original crystal of the Emperor Great Sea Demon Tree was quite valuable in the Oya continent. However, it was very cheap in Holy Hajar. This meant that Gunai didn't have to worry about the mana pool shrinking after his reincarnation. Gunai's fifth and sixth hack positions were filled with elite plants. After all, Gunai didn't have any overlord level or world level plants to plant. Now that he was in Holy Hajar, things were different. Gunai knew that there were many overlord level plants in Holy Hijar, and there were even legendary world level plants. If he could get the seeds of these powerful plants, he would be amazing. 386 Tree Heart Hut Three hours later, Gunai walked out of another chamber of commerce. By now, Gunai had almost finished selling everything he needed to sell. This included the Dragon Slayer Staff and the Blood Red Mechanical Angel. Gunai now had more than 5,500 sacred source coins. This amount of sacred source coins was already quite valuable. Many extraordinaries only had 1 or 2,000 sacred source coins. This number was still far from what Gun was aiming for. By now, Gunai had basically sold all of his items, and he was looking for a place to rest. As he was walking forward, his eyes inadvertently swept past a corner. Gunai slightly stopped. Gunai then looked at the shop. This shop was like a huge and thick tree stump. Its signboard was also quite unique, Tree Heart Hut. Is it related to plants? Gunai frowned. Then, Gunai walked in. 
As soon as Gunai entered, he felt an extremely strong life force. Oh! Gunai couldn't help but raise an eyebrow as he looked around. It's very similar to the aura of the Spring of Life, but it's a little different. It's quite strange. Gunai thought to himself. There weren't many customers in the store. Aside from Gunai, there were only four people. There was also a shop owner. What do you want to buy, sir? At this moment, the shop owner's voice rang out. The shop owner was an old tree tribe man wearing grey grass clothes and holding a staff made from the tree of life. The wrinkled bark-like skin on his sideburns and the back of his hands could be seen. There were all kinds of strange races in Holy Hijar, and Gunai was used to seeing them. The shopkeeper held the staff of life in his hand, and there were still green leaves sprouting on it. I would like to buy some seeds Gunai explained after some thought. Seeds weren't usually expensive. After all, for those huge trees, they would often produce a lot of seeds in one mature season. Moreover, most of the time, the seeds were only used for planting, and they were very difficult to plant. This also resulted in very few chambers of commerce doing business with extraordinary tree seeds. Only these races related to trees would do business in this area. Does the customer wish to purchase a king-grade or emperor-grade tree seed? The old man from the tree race asked. Are there any special seeds of a higher level? Gunai asked. Gunai wasn't very interested in king and emperor level seeds. Overlord level seed. The old tree man asked Gunai. N. That kind of thing is very rare, and it's not cheap. The old man said with a smile. Even if it's not cheap, you should at least have one. Gunai said. I do have overlord grade seeds here. The elven tree of life seeds. Do you need them? The old tree man asked. Gun shrugged. I already have the elven tree of life seed in my collection. Besides, the elven tree of life seed isn't that valuable, right? There were many elven trees of life in Holy Hijar. Therefore, the price of the elven tree of life seed was really not high. In the Oya continent, there was no suitable place to plant the elven tree of life, so no one cared about its seeds. I also have the seeds of the sacred sea dandelions. Gunai's eyes twitched at the old man's words. In reality, not every overlord grade plant had value. For example, the sacred sea dandelions that the old man had mentioned. Strictly speaking, the seeds of the overlord plant holy sea dandelion were already considered an invasive species in some areas. Senior, what I need is a race that is rare and has high value, not this kind of common seed that has low value Gunai said. The old tree man squinted his eyes at Gunai for a while before speaking. I also have a type of seed in my store it's very strange and special, and it's also a powerful overlord grade plant I wonder if you are interested. Oh. What is it? Gunai's heart moved. The tree in Shabu's eyes the old man from the tree race said. The tree in Shabu's eyes, what is this? Gunai had never heard of such a thing. In the legends, a strange tree in the land of darkness that was born from the great creature, Sabu Nicholas. There are detailed records of this strange tree in the abyss. It's said that this tree can give birth to a very special dark fruit, which can change one's understanding of the dark power Upanishad. In fact, this kind of dark fruit will occasionally appear in some social gatherings, and its value is not low. Gunai thought for a while, then shook his head. It sounded good but Gunai knew that his dark power Upanishad could transform into a dark power Upanishad pet in the future. This kind of thing that could increase the level of profound meaning comprehension was probably not even comparable to the effect of his one reincarnation. It really had little practical value. After Gunai's repeated rejections, the old tree man couldn't help but narrow his eyes. Do you accept any strange fruits? Seeing the old tree man's thoughtful expression, Gunai spoke first. Fruit, what fruit? Sunflower fruit. With that, Gunai took out a sunflower fruit. The moment the sunflower fruit was taken out, the scorching heat and bright light instantly filled the entire room. 
The light was so strong that even the passers-by outside couldn't help but look over. The other people in the shop were also attracted by the intense light. A fruit with light power Upanishad. One of the four people in the shop exclaimed. Yes, it does contain the light profound. After eating it, it can slightly increase the clarity of the perception of the profound meaning. At the same time, during the digestion period, it can accelerate the comprehension of the light profound meaning for a long time. The other man also looked over and said. This kind of good thing is rare. The person closest to Gunai, shrouded in mist, muttered. Gunai then put it away. After all, the sunflower fruit was too dazzling. The old tree man looked at Gunai with a smile. Of course, I accept such a good thing. Then, senior, please state your price. 130 sacred source coins. After thinking for a while, the old tree man said. Previously, there was a chamber of commerce that had quoted a price of 120 sacred origin coins. Now, this old tree man was offering 130 sacred origin coins. This was a rather impressive price. This sunflower tree will usually produce many sunflower fruits. You should have more than one or two in your hands, right? The old tree man said. If we sell them in batches, the price of 130 sacred source coins is already very good. Gunai raised his eyebrows. This old tree man really knew a lot about these plants. There are indeed quite a few. That's good the old tree man nodded. Just in time, I just remembered that I have another very rare overlord level seed. I think you will like it very much. Let's go to the back and trade. With that, the old tree man called out a young tree man to guard the store, and led Gunai to the back. Gunai, who was following behind the old tree man, began to think. A rare overlord level seed? I'm afraid that the number of seeds in the hands of this old man from the tree clan is not small. I've really come to the right place this time. I hope this tree tribe has something I need. 387 The Wind Spirit Seed In a quiet and comfortable little house, Gunai and the old tree man sat opposite each other. Your Excellency has a rare treasure like the sunflower fruit in your hands, so you should have collected many plant seeds. Gunai replied with a noncommittal smile. If that's the case, I don't think you'll reject this precious overlord grade seed. As he spoke, the old tree tribe man flipped his hand and took out a wooden box sealed with runic magic. After a series of incantations, the wooden box was slowly opened. Gunai immediately felt a strange wind spirit power bloom in front of him. At the same time, Gunai's eyes fell on the strange seed. It was a peculiar thumb-sized seed that was constantly releasing the power of the wind spirit. If it wasn't for the restriction in the wooden box holding it in place, it would have probably flown out by itself. This is the seed of the mother tree of hurricane in the source explosion. The old tree man said softly. It has a very high adaptive vitality. As you can see, if you leave it alone, it will disappear in the blink of an eye. If you can cultivate it, then many years later, you will have a divine hurricane tree. It's a pretty good item. Gunai slightly nodded. Do you have any other good things? There were some things that were hard to say in the outside world, but here, the old tree man did not hide too much. Of course I do. The old tree man took out two more strange plant seeds. They were also rare overlord grade plants. However, these overlord grade plants didn't have much value. Gunai could only shake his head. Seeing this, the old tree man didn't have any unusual expression. He should know that these overlord grade plants were not worth much. What's the price of the seeds of the immortal hurricane mother tree? Gunai asked the old tree man. 1,200 sacred source coins. The old man from the tree clan quoted a price without any hesitation. Gunai shook his head. The price is too high, I just want to keep it as a collection. To Gunai, the seeds of the divine hurricane tree were pretty good, but that was all. It was far from an indispensable point. If the other party wanted to use this seed to extort Gunai, 
then he was clearly thinking too much. This is already a very suitable price the old tree man said softly. Senior, you can't possibly think that I'm capable of nurturing this seed into a divine hurricane tree, right? Gunai spread his hands. If I had that kind of ability, I wouldn't be lacking in these seeds. This seed is only for collection, that's all. Moreover, the divine hurricane tree in the source energy storm high up in the sky would often drop these seeds. If Senior doesn't want to sell it, then forget it. Perhaps I can find it in other places. Gunai was speaking the truth. Although the seeds of the divine hurricane mother tree were rare, it was still possible to encounter them. What do you think of the price? Gunai thought for a while and then said, 500 sacred source coins. That's too little. The old man shook his head. Since Senior is not willing, then forget it. Let's carry out the transaction of the sunflower fruit. Young man, you should know that the seeds of the divine hurricane tree are hard to come by. The old ancestor of the tree race said in a reproachful tone. Senior, my family is poor, and the price is too high for me to afford. Gunai also shook his head. 600. Gritting his teeth, the old tree man said. This is already the lowest price if you are not willing, then let's carry out the outdated trade of sunflower. 600. Gunai muttered. After a while, Gunai nodded. 600 sacred source coins, deal. If it was just for collection, it would be a pretty high price to purchase a seed of the divine hurricane mother tree with 600 sacred source coins. However, it would be a different story if he could cultivate it. Compared to the value of the cultivated seeds, the price of these seeds was indeed a drop in the ocean. Then, how many sunflower fruits do you have? Twenty. I still have two more. I have other uses for them. Gunai replied after some thought. Twenty pieces. The price is 2,600 sacred source coins. After deducting the 600 sacred source coins for the seeds of the divine hurricane mother tree, you will have 2,000 sacred source coins in total. Then, sir, please take out the sunflower fruit. The old tree man said. Gunai took out the sunflower fruit he'd prepared and began the trade with the old tree. About ten minutes later. After the deal was done, Gunai took the 2,000 sacred source coins and the seed of the divine hurricane tree and left the cabin. As he walked down the street, Gun's demonic CO soul was immersed in the system page. First, he removed the elite sea devil seed, then opened the box containing the seed of the mother tree in the extraordinary storage space. Afterwards, Gunai placed the seed of the divine hurricane mother tree, which contained the power of the wind spirit, on the fifth plant. As soon as he planted it, the seed disappeared into the soil in a flash. At the same time, the entire plantation space was filled with wind spirit energy, turning the place into a perfect environment for the divine hurricane mother tree seed to grow. Gunai's mouth curled into a smile. When this divine hurricane tree grows and bears the wind spirit fruit, my body will naturally produce the power of the wind spirit and gradually become the wind spirit's favorite. Compared to the saint shadow rune, which strengthens the body and increases the speed of the body internally, the wind spirit fruit increases the compatibility between the body and the heaven and earth. It's an external improvement. The two combined can make my speed unbelievably fast. More importantly, the wind spirit fruit is very, very valuable. One wind spirit fruit is worth more than 10,000 sacred source coins, and there's no market for it. In the future, when I don't need it, I can sell it. It's not a bad idea. This is a great deal. I have 7,500 sacred source coins with me now. There aren't many sunflower fruits left the only thing I can do now is to sell the water of the spring of life although the price of this thing isn't high, the problem is that I have a lot of it on hand. Sell them slowly. We'll be able to raise 10,000 sacred source coins. With 10,000 sacred source coins, I can buy a decent intermediate magic staff. With the intermediate magic staff, my strength will increase by quite a bit. It will be more secure for me to enter the Divine Kingdom arena. 
After that, Gunai joined the other chambers of commerce and started to sell the water of the Spring of Life. Gunai didn't sell much each time, but he could still make two or three hundred sacred origin coins. When he sold them, Gunai was also very careful to prevent people from targeting him. After all, there were many transcendent masters in this ancient city, and there were many god emissaries and ancestor souls. Although Gunai didn't have a lot of wealth on him, it would be a bit troublesome if he was targeted. Fortunately, Gunai was careful enough. There were no obstacles along the way. 388 Mechanical Airship Windstream Desert Ancient City In a secret room of the Sandstorm Hotel The puppet strings and the World Power Upanishad had completely sealed the room and isolated it from the outside world. Gunai was sitting cross-legged on the cultivation seat, cultivating. A few days ago, Gunai had sold a large amount of water from the Spring of Life to get 10,000 sacred source coins. After that, he had found a hidden hotel and started to study his profound meaning. In this higher dimension transcendent world, the fluctuations of the profound meaning here were stable, vast, and deep. Gunai found that cultivating here was much more efficient than cultivating in the Oya continent. At the same time, it was much smoother. When Gunai had entered the Sacred Feathers Darkness Origin Continent, he had felt that the Power Upanishads there were much more stable than the ones in the Aoya Continent. Back then, Gunai had thought that the Sacred Feathers Darkness Origin Continent was special. From the looks of it now, it should be the transcendent world's own hierarchy that caused the difference in profound meaning fluctuations. Wang 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 A slight vibration interrupted Gunai's cultivation. Gunai opened his eyes and took out the token duo lance gave him. His perception seeped into it. East side of Windstream Ancient City, Cancer Origin Ability Tower we will leave in three hours. After a while, Gunai slowly put the token away. Have you found the mechanical airship? After some thought, Gunai got up and began to pack up, ready to leave. During this period of time, he had been comprehending the world, darkness, and destruction ultimacy. Gunai's progress in the three profound meanings was very fast. However, Gunai didn't do a detailed comparison between Dark Power Upanishad and Destruction Power Upanishad. However, Gunai could roughly tell. Not to mention Gunai's most powerful World Power Upanishad. Gunai had made great progress in Dark Power Upanishad and Destruction Power Upanishad. He had surpassed most of the masters. Once he entered the Divine Kingdom battlefield, Gunai would be able to clearly understand the difference between his understanding of Power Upanishads and the others. Half an hour later, they asked around along the way. The Cancer Origin Ability Tower had already appeared in front of them. The Giant Crab Energy Tower was just as described. It was a giant mechanical crab that occupied a huge area and seemed to be crawling in the desert. At the same time, Gun could see a large number of mechanical airships around the energy tower. Although they were called mechanical airships, they were not small. The smaller ones were 10 meters long and 4 to 5 meters wide. The medium-sized ones were 20 to 30 meters long and 10 meters wide. The large mechanical airships were 50 to 60 meters long and 20 meters wide. These mechanical airships were all cast by living machines. Other than being made of extraordinary materials, these mechanical airships also had strong defensive energy restrictions, as well as corresponding flight energy formations and surging wind energy formations. When flying, the speed of these mechanical airships was quite amazing. After some observation, he flew into the tower. He had just entered the main door. Gunai, over here Duo Lan C's voice came. Gunai flew toward Duo Lancey and landed beside a round table. At the moment, Duo Lance was drinking some wine at the round table. As soon as Gunai sat down, he felt many malicious eyes fall on him. Looking at Duo Lancey and feeling the gazes on him, Gunny said softly. Someone is watching us. Oh, don't worry about them, just be careful Duo Lancey said without much concern. They don't dare to make a move here. Yes Gunai nodded. Duo Lancey said softly, as if sensing Gunny's worry. Previously, 
in the battlefield of the Wind of Forgiveness Desert, after the death of a demigod, I obtained his body. At the same time, I also obtained the storage equipment of the demigod. Actually, that demigod didn't have many things on him. However, the group of freelance mercenary warriors seemed to have used some means to spy on the scene of me obtaining the demigod's corpse. They don't care how much the demigod's body is worth. They just have their eyes on me. Then, I killed a few people while I was escaping, but I was also injured. Then, I saw you at the edge of the desert. He was still so badly injured, Gunai was speechless. If you weren't injured, wouldn't you have killed those two extraordinaries easily? It's almost the same duo Lancy smiled. He's truly an unfathomable fellow. Gunai mumbled. This time, I found an airship that will head directly to the floating continent. It's two demigod experts heading to the floating continent. We just so happen to be going with them. It's a free ride. Yes, a downwind airship. Gunai thought to himself. With these two demigods traveling together, those people won't dare to attack us. Even if they do, they might not be our match. That's true, Gunai slightly nodded. Duo Lan Si was strong, but Gunai wasn't weak either. Although we're in the same trade, you still have to pay the necessary fees 200 sacred source coins for a transcendent master, 100 sacred source coins for an oracle and an ancestor's soul. The cost is still within my acceptable range. Gunai nodded. How many people will be accompanying us this time? Gunai asked. That's not a small number. I've made some inquiries. It seems that there are more than 50 transcendent masters and more than 20 god emissaries and ancestor souls. There's quite a number of people. Are there so many people heading to the floating continent? Gunai asked in confusion. That's for sure, Duo Lancy smiled. You should know that the floating continent is a place where geniuses and experts gather. If you want to stand out, display your talent, and even be noticed by a big force, you just need to become a two-star or even three-star gladiator there. Many extraordinary forces will try to rope you in. If you can become a four-star or even five-star gladiator, the strong people of the Divine Kingdom will pay attention to you. Of course, if you want to join the ruler's kingdom, you have to become a six-star or even seven-star gladiator. However, there aren't many four-star and five-star gladiators. As for six-star and seven-star gladiators, there are even fewer. Moreover, the reward for every battle of six-star and seven-star gladiators is something that even demigod masters would be envious of. A generous reward. This is also one of the reasons why extraordinaries are willing to enter the arena to fight to the death. This is also one of the reasons I went to the Divine Kingdom arena. Gunai said in his heart. The value of the world anchor was so high that even a divine spirit might not be willing to buy it. And Gun wanted to use his extraordinary power to buy the world anchor. One could imagine how difficult it would be. And one of the ways to quickly get paid was to go to the God Kingdom arena and fight to the death. The remuneration he received was one aspect. One of the hidden rewards was the gambling in the Divine Kingdom arena. Usually, when one-star gladiators engaged in a one-on-one -on -one life and death battle, there would be a betting pool in the Divine Kingdom arena. Gunai couldn't control the outcome of a battle. However, Gunai could easily control the outcome of a battle. He would first hide his strength and slowly climb from one-star to two-star, three-star, and even four-star and five-star. There would be many battles in the process, and Gunai only needed to slowly bet on himself. The snowball would snowball, and Gunai would gain a lot of wealth. 389 The Third Awakening While they were chatting, Duo Lancy's expression changed as he took out a token. After sensing for a while, Dolans looked at Gunny. The preparations are almost done. Let's go. N. Gunai followed Duo Lance. As the two of them flew up, Gunai noticed that the five superhumans who had been watching them all this time also flew up. Among the five, two of them were at Transcendent Level 9 while the other three were at Transcendent Level 8. To an ordinary extraordinary, this was a huge problem. 
The ability to fly at the eighth step wasn't strong, but for these free mercenaries who had been fighting in the desert all year round, flying was a very simple thing for them. Are these people coming with us? Gunai asked in a low voice. Many warriors and mercenaries have become stronger day by day as they continue to study the scriptures of Power Upanishad, accumulate extraordinary equipment, and have enough fighting experience. They want to get the star position of the gladiator in the Divine Kingdom gladiator arena to join the big forces. It's not strange. These guys are probably going to the Divine Kingdom arena as well. They're going in the same direction as us, so they've been watching us. However, they don't dare to act rashly. After all, if they cause trouble in front of a demigod, they'll probably be killed by the demigod. Of course, we have to be careful too. Don't give the other party a chance. Gunai's eyes narrowed and he nodded. A moment later, the two of them followed a passage and arrived at the entrance of a large blue mechanical airship suspended in the air. At this moment, a demigod expert was guarding the entrance. Senior Odom, Duo Lancy saluted. Gunai also saluted. 400 sacred origin coins for two people. The elf demigod named Odom glanced at the two of them and said calmly. After Duo Lancy and Gu and I paid 200 sacred source coins each, they boarded the airship with the tags that Aham had given them. The interior of the airship was made up of small restricted rooms, one for each person. Although it wasn't big, it was enough for normal cultivation and rest. After all, it would take more than three months to reach the floating scorching sky continent from the sorrowful wind desert. And this was still a relatively close distance. Those that were slightly further away had to be measured in years. Even further away, it would take decades, or even hundreds of years. And this was only the journey through the inner parts of the continent. If one wanted to cross the ocean between the continents of Holy Hajar, that was probably in terms of centuries. Therefore, many experts would use the teleportation array to head to other major transcendent worlds, and then use the teleportation array of that major transcendent world to head to other sacred Hajar continent. Although the cost was high, it could save a lot of time. After using the sign to find his room, Gunai entered. There's also a glass window. When I'm free, I can look at the scenery and so on. After a round of inspection, Gunai took out a cultivation spot and sat down on the ground near the window. After about two hours, the door frame of the room lit up. At the same time, the voice of the elven demigod named Odom was transmitted. Everyone has arrived. We're about to set off. The entire journey will take about three months. During this period, no one is allowed to interfere with other people's actions. If you are discovered, kill immediately. The demigod expert's tone was straightforward. After the demigod finished his explanation, Gun felt the engine of the airship roar. Then, the mechanical airship began to fly forward. When the airship entered the high altitude source power level, it stabilized. Gunai then gradually released his puppet strings completely isolating the room. Three months' time is enough for me to advance to the mid-stage of level 7 transcendent, and even close to the late stage of level 7. In the Divine Kingdom arena, rank 7, rank 8, and rank 9 were all separated. However, in a battle on the same level, there was no distinction between early, middle, and late stages. For example, they were both gladiators. Initial stage tier 7 and peak tier 7 would meet together too. At this time, initial stage tier 7 was definitely going to suffer a loss. However, the Divine Kingdom arena would not care about this. As long as one was at the 7th step, it would be fine. It did not matter if one was in the early, mid, or late stages. As a result, one would have a certain advantage at the late and peak stages of the 7th rank. At the same time, the level of all kinds of law incantations can also be increased by a lot during this period of time. Currently, I have a huge advantage in both attack and defense. However, in terms of speed, I have an advantage, but it's not big enough. Although the level of the Blood Sea escape technique isn't high enough, 
under the amplification of the increasingly expanding blood sea, the distance it can travel seems to be enough. The divine hurricane tree shouldn't be able to bear any fruit in the next three months. If possible, it's best to buy a speed travel type Upanishad scripture. Offensive, defensive, and speed you must have all three types of ultimacy this way, we can ensure that we won't be at a disadvantage when we face four-star, five-star, or even six-star or seven-star gladiator experts in the future. After some thought, Gunai calmed down. He began to comprehend the profound meaning of world, darkness, and destruction. Gunai had learned the world power Upanishad, while his CO soul had learned the dark power Upanishad and the destruction power Upanishad. With the support of the main body, as well as the Devil Lord's own characteristics, his comprehension of the profound truths of darkness and the profound truths of destruction was also very astonishing. As Gunai focused on his comprehension, Three months quickly passed by. During these three months of flying, it could be said that there was no danger. Especially when they passed by a huge inland sea lake, it seemed that the sleeping ruler had awakened. The waves of the entire inland sea lake rose up to 20 to 30,000 meters high. Even the source energy gales at a height of 100,000 meters were affected. The mechanical airships were also affected. Fortunately, Gu and I and the others were far enough from the location where the ruler had awakened, so they managed to cross the huge inland sea lake without any danger. There was also the time when they passed by a mine called a loaf. Gunai and the others were ambushed by a group of bats. There were four demigod experts in the bat clan. Fortunately, with the protection of the two demigod masters, everyone was able to escape. Other than that, he had also encountered a few robbers. However, it did not cause too many twists and turns. In a room on the mechanical airship, Gunai sat cross-legged on his cultivation seat. At this moment, blood bubbles appeared all over Gunai's body, then gently burst. The smell of fresh blood quickly filled the entire room. Gunai had been in this state for five or six hours. Gunai was in the middle of the third awakening of the blood origin curse Mansur. As Gunai's mid-seventh level transcendent aura stabilized, he felt a sense of relief. The blood-colored bubbles all over his body were also continuously being sucked in. Hu hu hu! Gunai opened his eyes and slowly breathed out. At the same time, his face showed a trace of joy. I've finally completed the third awakening. 390 The Arrival Gunai waved his hand. Streams of thumb-sized blood appeared out of thin air. The blood flowing in the air was like a long dragon. Gunai played with them for a while, then waved his hand and the blood dragons disappeared. After my third awakening, I've become a little different. The blood in someone else's body before was still someone else's. But now, even if the blood is in someone else's body, as long as it's within a certain range, as a blood source curse Mansur who has gone through his third awakening, I can easily and perfectly control the blood of others from the depths of the strangeness. With the help of my profound meaning of the world, I can easily extract the blood of those transcendent masters. To be precise, your blood is my blood within the range of my profound meaning. Thinking of this, Gunai couldn't help but laugh. Although this third awakening didn't awaken any god art, it gave me this magical blood controller innate ability. It's not weaker than an innate god art at all. In fact, it's even much stronger. After all, I don't need to use any spiritual force, origin power, or profound meaning to control my blood. I only need to think about it, and the blood will naturally follow my thoughts. There's a feeling of following with a thought, but that's only in terms of blood. In battle, I can drain the enemy's blood with a single thought. To those transcendent masters, blood is a part of the body, carrying a part of the life force of the transcendent. At the same time, the blood vessels can support the high-speed flow of source power, allowing the source power to flow more smoothly in the body. Once all the blood is drawn out, the vitality of the body will be weakened. As the battle goes on, the vitality of the body will become weaker and weaker. After all, blood carries the circulation of life force. It's still fine if we don't fight we can still slowly recover. But in a battle, 
it's just a weakening buff that will get worse with time. The effect will definitely be very refreshing. More importantly, without blood, the circulation of his origin power won't be smooth. His overall strength will be reduced. All in all, this blood theft can weaken them by a lot it can weaken their combat strength by 20-30%, to 30%, or even half of their combat strength in serious cases. The Third Awakening has already given me a very powerful innate ability. I'm looking forward to the Fourth Awakening. Gunai thought to himself. Gunai then looked out the window. We should be reaching the floating continent soon. He then opened his system. After more than three months of hacking, he had also gained a lot in all aspects. Update, Oya Continent Era, Year 9975 20th of February Holy Haika arrived at the Divine Kingdom Arena. Hack Elite Level 150% 200 has been used. This time, I'll play the complete version and the simplified version in the future so that everyone won't waste their Kidian coins. First Hack Position, True Scales Kun's Protection, Level 731-333, Beginner Forbidden Spell, Law Spell. Second Idol Slot, Sunset Star Source Cannon, Level 5,118-242, Advanced Forbidden Spell, Ancient. Third Hack Slot, Little Thunder Flame Curse, Level 9,128-168, Advanced Law Curse, Law Curse. Fourth Hack Slot, Thunder Flame Curse, Level 9,218-280, Beginner Level Engravings, Law Curse. Fifth Hack Slot, Blood Source Ocean Divine Code, Level 6,112-261, Beginner Forbidden Spell, God Art. Sixth Hack Slot, Blood Source Great Blood Heavenly Dream Curse, Level 8,132-276, Medium Grade Secret Engravings, God Art. Seventh Hack Slot, Demonic Erosion Blade, Level 7,125-222, Medium Grade Mystical Prince, Ancient Tome of Mystical Prince. Eighth Hack Slot, Lightsaber Spell, Level 6. 4787 High Level Law Spell, Law Spell. Ninth Idol Slot, 269-720, 37%. Gunai was checking the level of his spells and books. Wang 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 Wang. The door of the secret room in the small room was already lit up. Everyone. We're about to reach the Divine Kingdom Arena on the Floating Sky Continent. Get ready, we'll be disembarking soon. The voice of Elf Demigod Odom sounded in the small room. Have we arrived? Gunai looked out of the glass window, and as expected, the vast floating continent had already appeared in his field of vision. It was the destination of Gunai and the others, the floating continent. This floating continent was hundreds of thousands of meters high in the sky and was surrounded by source energy gales. It had a special world barrier that enveloped the entire floating continent. The origin power gales from the outside world simply couldn't blow in to cause any damage. At the same time, Gunai saw many pillars of light rise into the sky. That was the energy light pillar formed by the source power furnace. The airship continued to move forward. Gun saw a large number of airships coming from all directions. They lined up neatly at the entrance of the floating continent and entered in an orderly manner. In the surroundings, there were demigods leading oracles and ancestor souls to maintain order in the many mechanical airships. Quite a number of extraordinary humans have come to the floating sky continent. About half an hour later, the mechanical airship that Gu and I and the others were on passed the inspection and entered floating continent. After parking at the harbor of the mechanical airships, the voice of the elven demigod, Odom, was heard again. Everyone, we've arrived at the floating continent. This stop is at the edge of the Divine Kingdom Gladiator Arena. If you want to become a powerful gladiator, I hope you can win every battle. As the elven demigod Odom spoke, the cabin door slowly opened. Everyone walked out of the house and into the corridor and then walked along the corridor. We've arrived at the Divine Kingdom Arena. Someone sighed. Yup. We've finally arrived someone chuckled. Duo Lance, Gun saw Duo Lance first and greeted him. 
Duo Lancy turned around and waved at Gunny. A moment later, everyone flew out of the mechanical airship. As soon as he came out, he was greeted by an extremely wide and huge steel machinery square. In the distance, tall steel mechanical buildings could be seen everywhere, with no end in sight. The Divine Kingdom arena was far larger than Gunai had imagined. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been able to accommodate hundreds of millions or even billions of extraordinaries. Moreover, he could feel the energy of the origin machine blooming from every corner. The use of energy and machinery in Holy Haikar had already seeped into every corner of his life in detail. After that, everyone dispersed and flew in the direction they wanted to go. How's your cultivation going? Duo Lance, who was flying in front, turned around and asked. Not bad, your profound has improved a lot. How about you? I've had a slight breakthrough, and my strength has improved a little. However, judging from the smile on his face, it was clear that his improvement was not as small as it was described. Let's go. We'll apply to be gladiators in the Divine Kingdom first. After that, we'll carry out many other operations, which will be much more convenient. Duo Lancy said. Yes, that's true, Gunai nodded. In the Divine Kingdom arena. There were many places that only gladiators could enter. Only gladiators from the Holy Kingdom could enter. For example, the gladiator communication area, the gladiator business area, the gladiator viewing area, and so on. Becoming a kingdom gladiator would indeed make it much more convenient in the arena. 391 Gladiator Manager After about two hours. After testing his soul, body, and blood, and constructing the mark, he was finally able to break through. Gunai received the gladiator medal. This blood-colored gladiator medal was about the size of a palm. On the front was the symbol of the Kingdom of God arena, and on the back was Gun's name. Gun Lawrence. Inside the badge was Gunai's soul, body, and blood. In addition, the combat medal itself was also a supernatural tool. When source power was infused into it, it could open an energy projection. On the projection page, one could register for gladiator fights and so on. At the same time, a notification would be given when a fight was needed. Basically, the information exchange of many gladiators in the entire God Kingdom arena was carried out in the gladiator medal, which was very rare and convenient. This medal is almost in the shape of a mobile phone. Holding the medal, Gunai thought to himself. As he walked towards Duo Lance's location, Gun checked the gladiator medal's content. The first one was the information about the Kingdom of God gladiators. In the Divine Kingdom arena, Gladiators who had just applied to receive gladiator medals were Kingdom of God gladiator interns. The opponent of the gladiator was also a gladiator. A gladiator trainee would become a one-star gladiator after five consecutive victories. It was the same for advancing from one star to two stars, and from two stars to three stars. Every time he advanced, he would have to fight with five gladiators of the same star position to the death and then win and if they lost any of the matches. The outcome was death. In the Divine Kingdom arena. Every battle was a battle of life and death. The winner lived, and the loser died. And this would also involve a problem, and that was the problem of clones. The Divine Kingdom arena had strict restrictions on this. The main body had to participate in the battle. A clone was not allowed to become a gladiator. Every time they entered, they would go through a test. After all, the medal contained the soul, body, and blood of an extraordinary. It was basically impossible to get away with it. Thus, the life and death battle in the Divine Kingdom arena was truly a life and death battle. In the midst of the battle, all sorts of strange and mysterious divine abilities and techniques collided with one another. Every gladiator would try their best to survive. And it was precisely because of such a bloody and intense confrontation. That was why the God Kingdom arena had such a high level of attention in the vast God Kingdoms and even the rulers' kingdoms. It was to the extent that the powerful forces would send a certain number of gods to guard the Divine Kingdom arena in search of the many genius gladiators. 
As he thought about it, he signed himself up on the gladiator medal page. Five gladiator to gladiator fights, and Gunai himself was very cautious. Although Gunai wasn't afraid of death, it would be a bit uncomfortable if he lost. Less than a minute had passed since the registration. Shua 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 Shua. The metal started vibrating. Gunai opened it. Your Excellency Gun Lawrence, after 12 source hours, please head to the level 7 transcendent to practice your first battle in arena number 556. In the Aoya continent, one origin time was equivalent to 6 hours in the Aoya continent. 12 source hours would be 3 days later. The first battle will begin in 3 days. Gunai thought. At this moment, Gugni had arrived at the meeting place with Duo Lance. Duo Lancey was already waiting there. Is the gladiator medal done? Yes, it's done. What about you? he asked. Gunai nodded and asked. It's already done. Duo Lancey smiled. There are still many things to do, such as looking for a place to live, buying some necessary equipment, and so on. Potions are not allowed in battle but you can drink them before the battle. Potions that speed up source power recovery, increase speed, increase physical strength, and even make attacks more powerful are sold in the gladiator store? It can be played like this. Gunai couldn't help but be surprised. What else do you think, Duo Lancey said softly. This is a life and death battle, not a game. The extraordinaries won't let go of any small improvement. It's possible that the tiny bit of improvement will be the key to determining the outcome of the battle at the last moment. That's true Gunai slightly nodded. To Gunai, he was at the mid-seventh level of the transcendent master level. The consumption of origin power was not a big problem. On the other hand, Gunai's origin pool was now 300,000 units of origin power. Moreover, Gunai had been constantly using the Emperor Grade C Demon Tree's Deep Sea Source Crystal, which allowed his mana pool to recover at an amazing speed. It could recover hundreds of units of source power in a second. In addition, Gunai's body had continuously transformed, making his compatibility with origin power astonishingly high. This allowed the base source power recovery to increase by about three times. One second was equivalent to over 300 units of source power recovery. When casting normally, Gunai's origin power consumption couldn't keep up with the amount of origin power he could recover. At the same time, Gunai wasn't afraid of anti-magic spells. This was the special ability of the demonized rune that Gunai had formed. Origin power, soul, body, and speed. Gunai didn't need to worry too much about these aspects. What Gunai lacked right now were curse weapons and powerful Upanishad scriptures. Let's go to the gladiator mall and see if there's anything we can buy after all, there are a lot of things there Duo Lan Si suggested. Yes, let's go. Gunai nodded. By the way, Gunai, you're pretty good. Do you want to find a gladiator manager? Duo Lan Si asked on the way. A gladiator manager. Gunai looked over. On the surface, it looks like everyone is having a one-on-one -on -one life and death battle in the Divine Kingdom arena, but there are many things going on in the dark. The most active group of people are gladiator managers. They're active in all the big and small arenas. By watching the battles, they carefully evaluate the strength of every extraordinary with potential. For example, an assessment of a supernatural being's overall strength in terms of equipment, supernatural tomes, soul strength, physical strength, and so on. In the process of becoming a one-star or even two-star gladiator, these extraordinaires will secretly contact some officials who arrange gladiator fights. Then, they will secretly let some people deliberately meet each other. After a detailed study of these people, they can deduce the outcome of this battle to a large extent. At the same time, they can secretly place their bets. Most of the time, they'll be the winners and receive a generous reward from the gambling table. This Tao Wu. Gunai's heart skipped a beat. These people actually dare to meddle? Does the Divine Kingdom arena not care? A fair one-on-one -on -one battle, where's the manipulation, moreover, 
when we're arranging the people, they're all in the same star position. All they want to do is to let some people bump into each other. Could it be that you're saying that someone can win 100%? You're quarreling, aren't you, Gunai helplessly said. Duo Lancy chuckled. In fact, the God Kingdom arena secretly allows such operations. This is also considered a benefit of the grey area. If you have a gladiator agent behind you, they will analyze you according to your strength and try to make you avoid as many gladiators as possible, or some gladiators who are very strong but have hidden their strength. This way, the danger will be much less. At the same time, even if you don't take the initiative to look for a gladiator manager, when your performance is outstanding enough and you can be promoted to one or two stars, a gladiator manager will naturally come to you. I'll tell you in advance so that you'll have time to think about it. Gunai thought for a moment, then nodded. He had indeed benefited a lot from Duo Lance's explanation. At the very least, this fellow was a trustworthy partner. 392 Evil Demon's Eyes They arrived at the Gladiator Mall. What he saw was a vending machine with a light screen. There were many extraordinary humans operating these machines. The items purchased from the Gladiator store could be directly operated on the vending machine. You could put in sacred source coins and top up your gladiator medal. As long as you had enough sacred source coins in your medal, you could buy anything in the gladiator store. After the purchase, the items were quickly sent over through the machine. In general, it was very convenient and fast. Gunai spent all 10,000 sacred source coins on the card. First of all, Gunai wanted to see if there was any information on the world anchor. In the end, the items listed in the shop were only worth 100,000 sacred source coins. The merchant shop would not allow anyone to browse the items that were ten times more valuable than the amount of sacred source coins they had. He wasn't allowed to view it, but he knew that the world anchor would cost around two million sacred source coins. After some thought, he began to browse through the staff. Gugni didn't have the capital to purchase high-grade or top-grade wands. An intermediate magic staff was more than enough. First of all, I don't need the secret crossing rune Gunai first eliminated the option to possess the secret crossing talisman. To other spell casters, after becoming a transcendent master, they would need to speed up the casting of secret engravings. The number of secret crossing runes they had condensed was only a little over ten. Even the top ones only had about fourteen or fifteen. Hence, he needed the secret crossing rune to increase his casting speed. As for Gunai, he had 32 basic secret crossing runes and 36 with the Dark Wizard staff. Gunai instantly cast all the spells and power Upanishads in his hands. The 47 curses were cast at the same time, giving Gunai an absolute advantage in casting speed. I don't need the ensemble rune or the other elemental runes. After all, I'm a law incantation master not an elementalist. The only thing I need now is the strangeness and power of my methods. As long as my incantation is powerful enough, I can kill you with a single incantation even if you have heaven-defying means, you can't do anything about it. Amplification runes are what I need the most at the moment. After Gunai's selection, there were only 20 intermediate magic staves left. These magic spell staves had different forms, but none of them were in the form of a staff. Some of them were bracelets, some were necklaces, some were rings, and some were even illusory light balls. The shape of the magic spell staff appeared in the form of a spell, so there was no need to be limited to its shape. Gun began to study the intermediate magic staves. After about two hours, it was a magic staff called Devil Demon Eye that cost 10,000 sacred source coins. He was chosen by Gunai. Devil Demon Eye, an intermediate level devil weapon, was a fusion type devil weapon made from the eyeball of a demigod devil, many powerful materials, and the core of a devil. This was a little similar to transcendent plants. However, it was obviously much more powerful than transcendent plant type equipment. After the contact was complete, the demonic eye could be merged into the left or right eye. At that time, the supernatural being would obtain the effect of demon's eye. 
it had an indescribable and extraordinary dynamic insight and dynamic locking ability. For Gunai, this sort of improvement was a bonus to his vision. But in fact, Gunai didn't really need his sight to help him locate his position in battle. The powerful soul domain and world intent domain allowed Gunai to locate his enemies without his sight. But in this battle, Gunai could use the demonic eye to observe the situation. The reason was simple, Gunai wanted to hide his true strength. If Gunai's performance was too strong, then there was no value in betting on Gunai's victory. This devil's demon eye not only had an extraordinary dynamic observation ability, but it also had a special effect. The most important thing was that it only had a magic spell rune and amplification rune. As a legend grade intermediate magic weapon, it had as many as 50 amplification runes. This also meant that this intermediate level magic weapon had a five-fold increase in the power of magic spells. One had to know that the Dark Witch Staff only had a double amplification. As for this mid-grade legendary devil spell weapon, the Evil Devil Curse Eye, it was five times stronger. When combined with Gunai's own power, the spell was six times stronger than its base power. Gun's spell level was already terrifyingly high, and now it was six times stronger. That power naturally didn't need to be said. Gunai didn't have many sacred source coins left after the purchase. Afterwards, Gun and Duo Lance went to find a suitable place to cultivate. The battles in the Divine Kingdom arena would last for a long time. Thus, a suitable place for cultivation was necessary. In the next few days, Gunai focused on his cultivation. Unknowingly, three days had passed. In the secret room, a slight trembling sound was heard. Hoo hoo hoo. Gunai opened his eyes. Gunai's eyes were completely different from before. Before, Gunai had white eyes, black pupils, and round pupils. Gunai's eyes were blood red, black, and vertical. In his vertical pupils, his heart palpitating gaze bloomed slightly like that of a devil. The change in Gun's eyes was due to the devil demon eye. In the past few days, Gun had cultivated the staff malevolent demon eye to 80% completion. When it reached 60% completion, it merged into his eyes. With the addition of the devil's curse pupils, Gunai's eyes underwent a strange change. 80% of the demonic eye's cultivation has activated 40 enhancement runes which is an additional four times the power of the magic spell. Although the cultivation is not 100% complete, the effect of this four times increase is quite good. I can easily breed it perfectly in two days and then I can use the full power of the devil curse pupil. With a flip of his hand, Gunai took out his blood red god kingdom gladiator medal. Gunai gently touched it and put it away. They should be here in three hours, and it's time to prepare for departure. After all, it's the first battle. After some preparation, Gunai opened the secret training room. Then, he walked out of the tunnel. The place Gun and Duo Lan were looking for was rented to master level extraordinaries for them to cultivate in, so it was quite quiet. After leaving the training ground, Gunai flew toward the Divine Kingdom Arena. 393 Chapter 41 A Difficult Enemy? Two hours later, Gun walked along the wide metal corridor and arrived at entrance number 556 of the level 7 Transcendent Arena. He glanced at the sign of arena number 556 and sighed in relief. This place is so big, it's really hard to find. It seems that I have to walk around the level 7 Gladiator Arena in my spare time to familiarize myself with the environment so that I can find a spot at the critical moment. If you don't arrive in time, you will be punished by the beast fight. Two level 9 transcendents were stationed at the entrance of the number 556 training arena. Gunai handed over his gladiator medal. After the two used the machine to check, they let Gunai pass. After entering, they were greeted by a rather large lounge. At the same time, there were already over a hundred extraordinary humans of different forms and races waiting in the lounge. Gunai scanned the area and saw many familiar races. For example, the dragonmen who were covered in scales. The demon snake clan with a long snake tail. A lava beast that was emitting the aura of lava. 
The Frost Boar tribe had a barbaric aura and was nearly 4 to 5 meters tall. There were also some with strange metal bone armor, such as the Steel Armor race, the Blade race, the Cyan Phoenix race, and so on. Of course, there were also some members of the Sea Tribe. These members of the Sea Tribe were at a slight disadvantage in the arena. Of course, if they had a powerful innate ability to change the terrain, it would be a different story. There were also some rare elemental races. Extraordinaries of all races could be seen everywhere in the Divine Kingdom arena. Its extraordinary tolerance was also a characteristic of Holy Hikaur. There were even some dark race creatures. Gun even saw a half-demon extraordinary in the corner. The transcendence of the various transcendent races were all at transcendent level 7. A small number of them were mid-stage level 7 transcendents. Most of them were in the late or peak stages. There were no early stage level 7 transcendents. Gunai's current transcendent realm was at the mid-seventh rank, close to the late stage. Compared to the more than 100 extraordinaries, it was rather unremarkable. Gunai's eyes swept across the entire resting hall. He found a corner and sat down. At this moment, the hall was completely silent. There was no sound of conversation. After all, everyone in Horn 556 Battle Arena could become enemies. When everyone was a potential enemy, there was no need to talk to each other. After waiting for about half an hour. At the entrance, a group of level 7 transcendent auras appeared. This immediately attracted the attention of many supernatural beings in the hall. With one look, many people's expressions changed. Damn it, there's actually a gladiator manager someone cursed in a low voice. It's actually the gladiator manager who's bringing the team over. This is a little troublesome. It's a good thing there aren't many of them, but whoever meets them will be unlucky. I hope we don't run into one. At this time, some voices emerged from the crowd. Gunai's eyes were focused on the entrance. At the entrance, an oracle powerhouse was leading about 15 or 16 extraordinaries in black mechanical angel armors. They had different forms, but they were all peak level 7 extraordinaries. They were being inspected by the guards. Anyone with eyes could tell at a glance that this kind of unified action was led by gladiator agents. The extraordinaries who could be led by gladiator managers had obviously gone through battle review. If they were not strong, they would not be selected by these gladiator managers and become one of them. Those who were valued by gladiator managers were at least close to the strength of a two-star gladiator, or even the strength of a two-star or three-star gladiator. Normally, although the extraordinaries who participated in the trainee gladiator fight were not weak, their standards were also uneven, with some being high and some being low. At this time, adding a group of extremely powerful extraordinaries into the group would be difficult for anyone. Of course, not everyone was upset. Among the 100 or so people, a few extraordinaries stared at these extraordinaries in black mechanical angel armors and sneered, then continued to close their eyes and rest. Gunai scanned the people in the crowd, and then glanced at their black mechanical angel armors. This black mechanical angel armor is very expensive. The base price is about 1000 Saint Origin coins, which is much better than my silver grey mechanical angel armor that is about 500 Saint Origin coins. If I kill any of them, this mechanical angel battle armor will belong to me. After some thought, Gunai's eyes quickly swept across the hall. After a quick scan, Gunai found something. There are more than 100 extraordinaries here, but only 15 or 16 of them are mid-seventh level extraordinaries. I'm one of them. And this group of black mechanical angels matches the number of black mechanical angels. And, Gunai's eyes twitched. In terms of the restraint of extraordinary professions, it's almost the same. Does an against the shadow, the shadow against the spellcaster, and then the spellcaster against does an. It's really shady. Gunai mumbled. His gaze swept past the dozen or so mid-stage level 7 extraordinaries. I wish you good luck. Then, his gaze swept past the five shadow men in the dark angel battle armor. 
I also hope that you guys have good luck and don't run into me. The group of black mechanical angels finished their inspection very quickly and entered the hall. This group of people was actually talking and laughing. After all, they had all made arrangements and would not meet each other. Moreover, they would not encounter those powerful people who had gone through two or three arena practices. They would only encounter those who were new to the arena for the first time. This kind of person was probably weak. Moreover, if nothing unexpected happened, they would be facing these newbies in all five rounds of the trainee arena. It was enough for them to become one-star gladiators. After the black mechanical angels entered the field, three powerful oracles flew out from the staff passageway. Suddenly, more than 140 extraordinary humans looked at the three oracle-level staff members. All members have arrived. A total of 148 members. The leader of the group was a middle-aged sea tribe foreign being in blue robes. His voice was icy cold. Remember, this is a place of life and death, not a place to play around. After you enter, show your means and strength and fight with all your might. Don't go in and fly around for no reason, and don't try to drag out the time to kill the opponent and increase our working time. If any of you do that, then I'm sorry, but you'll be facing an even more powerful enemy in the next round, one that will be able to restrain you. Fight. Fight with all your strength. Fight with all your skills. The bloodier, the crueler, the better the weirder the methods, the better. This is the true essence of the arena. This is what the guests want to see. All right, let's start the roll call. The two people who are called will enter the arena to fight. Soon after, the leader of the group, a blue cloaked messenger of God, flew to a seat on the side and sat down. The other two people began to take attendance. Ato Fireblue and Okro Baller, enter. Ato Hulan was a petite foreign woman with a fierce aura. When she heard the call, she flew into the arena through the tunnel and quickly drank some potions. The other one, Okro Balair, was an extraordinary wearing the black mechanical angel armor. It was just as Gunai had expected. The foreign woman named Ato Hulan was a level 7 transcendent. Extraordinary profession, fire elementalist. As for his opponent, he was an extraordinary wearing the black mechanical angel battle armor, a Klo Balair. He was a peak rank 7 extraordinary with the extraordinary class Shadowman. Realm suppression, extraordinary profession restraint. The battle had not started yet. From the information on the surface, one could tell a thing or two. Very quickly, the first battle began. 394 The first victory. The result of the battle was just as Gunai had expected. The female fire elementalist, Ato Hulan, was dead. He died very miserably and very quickly. The battle ended in a dozen seconds. The shadowman with Okro Baller easily cut through the fire shield, and at the same time, the spell dagger pierced through the shadowman's head. His soul source core was torn apart, and he died. The battle was straightforward and one-sided. Alyssa, Trahor, get ready to enter. The oracle said in a cold tone. Alyssa was a female shadow wielder in black mechanical armor. Trahor was an unlucky mid-level 7th ranked mage. He walked away under everyone's slightly fortunate and pitiful gazes. Trahor's expression was extremely ugly as he gulped down potions and flew into the arena. This time, the mid-level 7th rank law incantation master named Trahor wasn't weak at all. He had many methods to resist. Unfortunately, the opponent was obviously stronger. About half a minute later, Trahor was killed. Then, the third round. It was also a battle without any suspense. The fourth match was the same. At this time, the mid-stage level 7 extraordinaries had also discovered the clues, and their expressions were not good. Gun Lawrence, Edler, get ready to enter. The divine emissary said coldly. It's my turn. Gunai stood up, and the silver mechanical angel armor appeared, covering his entire body. When Gunai stood up, many people looked at him, some of them with pity. Obviously, 
this guy named Gunny Lawrence was another poor guy who was about to be sacrificed. At the same time, the shadowman named Edler stood up. Edriel turned to look at Gunny, grinning, revealing his white fangs. The armor is not bad. Yours is pretty good too, Gunai replied. But it'll be mine soon. That's what I'm saying to you, Gunai retorted. With a cold snort, Edriel turned around and flew into the tunnel. Gun followed him in and chugged down a bottle of Gale Potion. This potion could increase the speed by about 10% for about 10 minutes. To be able to increase his speed by 10% was already quite good. As a trainee arena for Transcendent Masters, this arena was about a thousand meters in diameter. It was not small. At the same time, a powerful energy restriction also separated the entire arena from the spectator area. However, the audience that could accommodate tens of thousands of people only had a dozen people at this time, a pitifully small number. It was obvious that a battle between two gladiators was not attractive to extraordinaries. At the very least, only the fights between one star and two star superhumans would have a certain degree of viewing. When they reached the three star and four star levels, there would be more extraordinaries watching the battle, and they could even do long distance live gladiator fights. After becoming popular, there would be a special competition between the strong. At that time, the audience was packed with people. Begin, the oracle's cold voice rang out. Just as he finished speaking. Buzz. The source power machine had already been activated, and Edriel had crossed a distance of over 300 meters in a flash, slashing down at Gunny. Gunai also retreated as fast as the wind. At the same time, he used a level 9 Little Thunder Flame curse. The Little Thunder Flame spell was most effective against the mechanical angel battle armor. Three thick bolts of black lightning struck Edriel. Roar. Edriel let out a furious roar and disappeared. A blood-red pupil bloomed on Gunai's head. It was the insight of the devil's curse. In fact, it was very difficult for the evil demon's eyes to detect Edriel. Strictly speaking, it was basically impossible to detect any traces of Edriel. But the problem was that Gunai didn't just rely on the evil demon eyes. Whether it was his powerful mental domain, his profound perception of world intent, or Gunai's eye of fate, Edriel's concealment techniques were all exposed in front of Gunai. When a shadow mancer was unable to hide his tracks from a law incantation master, he was no different from a fighter. At most, he would be a little faster. Whoosh! Whoosh! The strange blade suddenly appeared around Gunai and wrapped around him. These strange blades even formed an all-around sealing power between each other. This kind of sealing technique was the best method to deal with a law incantation master. Unfortunately, to Gunai, no sealing power had much of an effect in front of the world power Upanishad. At the same time, many blades slashed down. Gunai's entire body flashed with blood-red light as he tore through the power of the blade and flew out. At the same time, another three swift little thunder flame curses struck a corner in the sky. Edriel's body staggered and fell from the air. Damn it, how did this guy discover me? I'm using a spatial concealment technique. Also, why is the power of his magic spells so terrifying? Not only does each of his attacks cause great damage to my physical body, but they also cause a certain degree of damage to my soul. The mech angel armor with extremely strong defensive abilities is not very effective against this guy's magic spells. The penetrating lightning spell is too much of a counter to this mechanical armor. If it continues to grow this big, I'm afraid it'll collapse. Gritting his teeth, the peculiar energy in Edriel's body began to circulate in a strange manner. As he moved, he suddenly slashed the short knife in his hand in the air. This scene made Gunai's heart skip a beat. The blade of the sword hit Gunai's back. Pang! A sound. Gun's blood sea shield appeared and shattered into pieces. They were more than 300 meters apart, but Edriel's attack was right behind Gunny. Gunai had never seen such a strange technique before. Moreover, the power was quite strong. Although the Blood Sea Shield was only a level 5 high rank magic spell, 
it was enhanced by the Blood Sea to a certain extent. However, the other party was still able to split it open with a single slash. If it had landed on Gunai's body, it would have been extremely painful. After an effective slash, Idril quickly slashed again in the air. This time, Gunai was on guard. His body moved quickly, and he barely dodged the attack. As expected, we can't underestimate these people who come to the Divine Kingdom arena to participate in the life and death battle. They all have special means. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Idril continued to slash at Gunny in the air. Every strike was aimed at Gunai's body. Fortunately, Gunai's perception was strong enough. He was able to avoid most of these attacks. But some of it still landed on Gunai. Fortunately, the enemy's attacks weren't very frequent, and they were all blocked by Gunny's shield. As he dodged and blocked, Gunai also began to counterattack. Little Thunder Flame Curse after Little Thunder Flame Curse continued to rain down on Idriel's location. Gunai didn't use teleportation to attack. Instantaneous transmission was a technique that would definitely hit the enemy. It was a rather terrifying technique. After all, using instantaneous transmission, Gunny could kill Idriel in less than a second. Gun was using a normal spell to transmit the energy, but at the same time, he was using a spell to control it. This way, he could accurately hit the enemy even if he cast spells from a distance. At the same time, he wouldn't let the enemy know more of Gunny's tricks. Gunai had the ability to defend against his opponent's attacks. But the enemy didn't have many ways to defend against Gunai's spell bombardment. After a dozen consecutive spells, Idril's attacks began to weaken, and his aura continued to weaken. Gunai naturally wouldn't let his guard down just because his opponent was weak. Sometimes, the enemy would pretend to be weak and then look for an opportunity. However, this Edeler had clearly been weakened by the fight. He had taken seven or eight of Gunny's little thunder flame curses in a row, but he hadn't been able to dodge them in time. Even his dodging ability had greatly decreased. Another dozen little thunder flame curses exploded. Finally, Edeler fell from the sky. As the man fell, Gunai could already feel that his soul was seriously injured. It wasn't an act, it was a real injury. Gunai directly injected more than 20 little thunder flame curses into the man's body. When Gunai was about to continue his corpse whipping. All right, the enemy has been confirmed dead. The cold voice of the oracle came. Gunny Lawrence wins. The oracle's voice echoed throughout the entire arena. Gun flew over and kept the mechanical angel into his system space before flying back to the tunnel. 395 Chapter 43 Nascimento Hurley Many of the extraordinaries in the resting hall were surprised to see Gunai flying over. I won. This guy actually won. And it was an easy win. That black mechanical angel has a stable one star or even close to two star power. This Gunai beat that guy, so his power must be around two star. That goes without saying. He killed an expert close to two-star strength, so he definitely has two-star strength. Although this guy won, he has successfully offended the power of the gladiator manager. That's still better than dying inside. That's true winning is more important than anything else. When Gunai entered the war preparation room. Immediately, everyone's eyes gathered on him. Gunai's ability to defeat the extraordinary chosen by the gladiator agents was enough to prove his strength. Among the many gazes, the eyes of the extraordinaries in black mechanical angel armors were all very unfriendly. You guys can't kill me no matter how much you look at me. Gunai didn't care about their gazes. He flew to a corner and sat down. After the battle, they could actually leave. However, Gunai needed to watch the others fight. It was a battle of life and death. He wanted to watch more and understand the fighting methods, techniques, divine abilities, talents, and strange abilities of these extraordinary humans from various races. This would be of great help to Gunai's future battles. Only by seeing more can one be more knowledgeable. When Gun sat down, the black armored extraordinaires began to calm down. In the spectator area. 
Nascimento Hurley, the manager of the 15 gladiators, closed his eyes and recalled the battle. Interesting a moment later, Nascimento Hurley's eyes revealed a light smile. Nascimento Hurley, a fourth-tier oracle. He was only one step away from the fifth tier, which was the demigod realm. There were three paths after becoming a transcendent master. The divine envoy, the ancestral spirit, and the saint. Their paths were different, but their realms were the same. They all had one to five realms. When he reached the fifth realm, he would become a demigod. In other words, the demigod realm was the fifth level of the divine envoy, ancestral spirit, and saint position. Although demigods could use divine power, they were still at the level of oracles, ancestral spirits, and saints. Nascimento Hurley had extraordinary talent and ability in the field of insight. This also led to his sharp and accurate eyes. It was also difficult for experts who didn't have accurate vision to become an arena manager in the arena. This extraordinary called Gunny Lawrence is obviously not only a two-star, but should be a three-star or even close to four-star. He's a gladiator worthy of training. We'll talk to him later. In the preparation lounge. Gunai calmed himself down and watched the battles of the extraordinary. By the time these 148 people and 74 matches were over, four hours had already passed. After today's battle, all members are to leave. With the end of the battle, the cold voice of an Oracle-level staff member sounded in the arena. Only then did everyone stand up and leave. As he walked out, Gunai summarized what he had learned from watching the battle. The extraordinaries who can enter the arena are all extraordinaries who are confident in their own strength. At the very least, they have two Mark Soul Source cores. There are even quite a few three Mark Soul Source cores. Everyone has more or less comprehended a certain amount of rune ultimacy. At the same time, they have also cultivated an ultimacy scripture. Soul, origin power, speed, and Upanishad scriptures he's very solid in all aspects. Outside, among the class 7 experts, there's no doubt that these people are all experts. But when all the experts gather together and fight, the more powerful experts will be able to survive. It was the right decision to come to the Divine Kingdom Arena. This place is indeed the gathering place of many geniuses. Gunai chuckled. When I become a one-star, two-star, or even three-star, I'll be able to fight with even more geniuses. As Gunai was moving forward, a voice suddenly rang out from behind him. Sir Gunai. Gunai was startled, and then he turned around. The one he saw was the gladiator manager from the Black Mechanical Angel Guild. Senior. Gunai saluted. You're quite strong and have a lot of potential Nascimento Hurley said softly. And in this arena, you have to know that if you are randomly arranged, you may encounter many very powerful hidden masters in the future, or even strong people who can restrain you. If you can have a manager to help you, Ying Luo, you won't have to face those strange and extraordinary professions that can restrain you. You can easily advance to three-star or even four-star gladiator. And you should know that even three-star and four-star gladiators are popular with each other. Those who are popular can participate in the special competition they can get a large portion of the profit from the tickets. As for those without human chi, they can only carry out the normal life and death ranking. How is it? Are you interested? Nascimento Hurley squinted his eyes at Gunai. If it's a demigod or even a god, I might consider it, but if it's an oracle like Bayan, forget it, he said. Gunai muttered in his heart. Gunai had to find a gladiator manager, but he also needed to find a good one. Senior, I only wish to train myself in this arena. There's no need to trouble senior. Gunai said. Nascimento Hurley squinted his eyes and nodded slightly. That's good I won't disturb you any longer. He then turned around and left. As a fourth-tier divine sense expert, he wouldn't go so far as to pester a puny seventh-rank extraordinary individual, much less make things difficult for him. After all, in his eyes, Gunny Lawrence was only slightly more powerful. And this kind of expert was common in the arena every year. 
After sending Nascimento Hurley away, Gun let out a sigh of relief. The second round, continue. After signing up with the Gladiator Bracelet, Gunai headed to the three-star and four-star areas. To these numerous seventh-step extraordinaries who might become his opponents in the future. It was necessary for Gunai to understand their strength. After a few hours. After watching several fights between Type 7 three-star warriors, Gunai left the arena. At the same time, Gunai also bought a large number of battle projections of three-star, four-star and even five-star experts. He was ready to go back and watch them. All in all, the battles between the three-star warriors of the seventh rank were quite exciting. Among them, there were many strange extraordinary professions. Gunai estimated that even if he were to fight, he would need to use some of his true strength to defeat these opponents. However, there were still many three-star experts in the God Kingdom arena. Only a four-star could be considered to have truly stepped into the threshold of a peak expert. Only then could it be considered a battle between the strong. He had reached the four-star level at the same time, so the number of people paying attention to him would increase explosively. In the following period of time, he was constantly familiarizing himself with the entire Divine Kingdom arena and watching the battles of many high-star level experts. At the same time, Gunai himself was steadily advancing toward becoming a one-star gladiator. Before he knew it, half a month had passed. 396 Borrowing Money A Transcendent Master, in the arena of the Eighth Step The two level 8 Transcendent Grand Masters launched an intense battle. One side used a sword, while the other side used a saber. The blades of the sword intertwined, causing the area within a hundred meters to be filled with a sharp light. As the collision reached its peak, there was a scream. The extraordinary swordsman with the blade could not resist the attack of the extraordinary with the sword. His body was torn apart by the sword, and at the same time, the blade of the sword quickly enveloped him. His soul source core shattered and the extraordinary swordsman died. In the audience, Gun's eyes focused on Duo Lance. Duo Lancey is indeed powerful. I'm afraid he's at four-star level eight. Of course, this is only a preliminary guess. He could be even stronger. After the battle, Duo Lancey looked at Gunai and smiled. Then, he flew out of the tunnel. The number of spectators for this 8th rank combat was about the same as the 7th rank combat, with only a few dozen or so people. It wasn't strange for Duo Lance to see Gunny. A moment later, Dolans and Gunny met in the corridor. How come you have time to come here and watch the battle today, aren't you usually busy? Duo Lan S.I. teased. Today is the key battle for you to advance to one star, so it's reasonable for me to come and watch, right? Ha ha. Duo Lance laughed. How about you? How many matches have you fought? We've already fought four matches. In a few hours, we'll have to fight the fifth. That's also a crucial battle to advance to one star I'll go and watch it later. There's still quite a bit of time. Let's go to the leisure area and have a drink. Let's go, he said. The two of them flew towards the lounge area. As they flew, they passed by long corridors and tunnels, and a large number of extraordinaries could be seen everywhere. He found a good restaurant in the lounge area. After sitting down, Gun ordered some drinks unique to the Divine Kingdom Arena. The two of them chatted as they drank. I heard that two more five-star warriors were born in the Type 7 Arena. Yes, I saw the video of the battle. His strength is indeed astonishing. How was it? Are you confident? They're very strong, but I still have a certain level of confidence. Gunai said. You're quite confident, Duo Lancey laughed. Who in the arena isn't confident in their own strength? Otherwise, I wouldn't have come to this place of life and death. Indeed. Gunai said softly. Also, Ying Luo, I have something to ask you. Oh? What's the matter? Duo Lan S.I. asked as he sipped on his hot drink. I'm borrowing money. Gunai said. Why are you borrowing money, don't you already have a magic weapon? 
A bet. Gunai said in a low voice. The only way for Gunai to earn a large amount of sacred source coins quickly was to gamble. Gunai didn't know the strength of others, but he knew his own strength better than anyone else. Other people gambled on luck, but Gunai relied on his own strength. Therefore, Gunai needed the sacred source coins to make the bet. During this time, Gunai had learned a lot about the geniuses of the arena. At the same time, he also learned a lot about the betting on the Divine Kingdom arena. One star and two star were the most serious areas of gambling. For example, some gladiator managers knew that one of their experts was very strong, but he was hiding his strength. At the same time, he also knew the approximate level of strength of the opponent in the next battle. At this time, the gladiator manager would put in a lot of chips, starting from 100,000 to hundreds of thousands of sacred source coins. And at this time, they had a high chance of winning. Even if they occasionally lost a few times, overall, they still won. If Gunai had encountered a hidden master like the gladiator manager, he could have made a lot of money. Even if it was an ordinary battle, there would still be a betting table, but the odds would be lower. However, Gunai didn't have many sacred source coins. Gunai had been selling all kinds of things recently, but he only had around 4,000 sacred source coins. He couldn't get more even if he wanted to. It seemed like he could only borrow it from Duo Lance. He was very clear about Gunny's strength. How much do you want to borrow? Duo Lan Si looked at Gu Ni. Do you have 50,000? 50, 50,000, you're overestimating me, I don't have that much. Duo Lan Si spread his hands. Then how much can you lend me? 30,000, that's the most I can lend you. Duo Lan Si said. 30,000. Gu Ni thought for a while and then nodded. Lend me 30,000 yuan. I'll return 100,000 yuan in three months. Duo Lance laughed. You're really bold to fight so unscrupulously. Even I wouldn't dare to do that. After all, many times, extraordinaries are very cautious in their battles, especially after advancing to one star and two star, they will face a lot of experts. Many people will stop fighting when they have to use all their means to win. Some of them have around 4-star combat strength, but they will stop when they reach 2-star or 3-star. After all, no one knows if they will encounter an opponent stronger than them. It's not impossible for some with 3-star or 4-star battle strength to fail at 1-star or even 2-star. Gunai had learned a lot of similar information during this time. However, Gunai was different from them. After a while, Duo Lancy transferred the 30,000 sacred source coins to Gunny's gladiator medal. All right, it's almost time the last round of the probationary fight is about to begin. Still number 556 gladiator arena, right? Yes. Yes, I'll book the tickets now. About 10 minutes later. Gun followed the path and arrived at number 556 arena. As soon as he arrived, Gunai saw the oracle from before, Nesimento Hurley, standing at the door. This fourth-level oracle had been probating his gladiators in arena number 556. However, since the first encounter, the gladiators under Nesimento Hurley had not encountered Gunny. It was likely that Gunny was avoiding them on purpose. Greetings, Sir Nesimento Heli. Gunai couldn't pretend he didn't see it, so he saluted. N. Nesimento Hurley nodded at Gunai with a smile. Just as Gunai was about to walk in, Nesimento Heli suddenly called out to Gunai. Gunai, don't go in yet. I have something to tell you. Gunai's eyebrows twitched as he looked at Nesimento Hurley. Sir Nesimento Heli, what's the matter? 397 Difficult Victory. This time, the group of extraordinaires who came to arena number 556 is a little special. Nesimento Hulley's voice resounded in Gunai's mind. If I'm not wrong, it should be a group of geniuses from a divine kingdom who entered the arena to train. A genius from the divine kingdom, the arena. Gunai frowned. There are many divine kingdoms around the floating sky continent, 
and these divine kingdoms will also nurture some top-tier extraordinary talents. Then, send them to the arena to train and fight. These people are all very strong there are a few 3-star, 4-star, and even 5-star experts among them. If you're willing, I can make sure you don't touch them, Nasimento Hurley said. My luck has always been good, thank you for the information, Sr. Nasimento Hurley. Gunai said. Nasimento Hurley nodded slightly. Gunai turned around and entered the resting room. After entering, Gunai's eyes swept over the group of people and immediately saw more than twenty powerful masters with unusually strong auras. These people had hidden their runes very well, but they couldn't escape Gunai's close observation. After carefully looking at it, Gunai retracted his gaze. These extraordinary geniuses from the Divine Kingdom have comprehended the profound meaning of runes three to five times better than the others around them. They are indeed quite strong. Although they are strong enough, they can't threaten me. This time, the probationary gladiator fight quickly kicked off with the arrival of the oracles and supervisors. Gunai was also paying attention to the battle. After two hours, Guni's battle finally began. Atari, Gunny Lawrence, get ready to enter. Gun's eyes quickly swept over the foreign wizard named Atari. Fortunately, it's not that group of people. At least I don't have to reveal any strength. He had to admit that the foreign sorcerer was quite powerful. As the battle began, Gunai was at a disadvantage. The strange methods of the wizard from another world were used together with his power Upanishad. Gunai was forced to defend himself and escape. Gunai, on the other hand, began to counterattack as he fled. Since Gunai wanted to hide his strength, he naturally had to put on a good show. Otherwise, if he was too strong, the odds would not go up. After about five minutes of fighting, Gun finally won with his mechanical angel armor. After this battle, Gunai went from a trainee gladiator to a one-star gladiator. An hour and a half later. In a private room. Duo Lance and Gunai met. I think it's a pity that you're not an actor. Your aura is really weak, and you didn't even use your instant transmission spell. I thought my 30,000 sacred source coins were going to go to waste. Duo Lan Si looked at Gu Nai and shook his head. Gunai chuckled. There's no other way. I killed that guy with a spell, so the odds must be very low. If those gladiator agents find out, they'll avoid me. I won't be able to get higher odds. I was still talking about other people's shady business. Isn't it the same here? Duo Lancy said unhappily. That's not the same. The two of them continued to chat. Wang 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 wang. The sound of Gun's medallion vibrating came. When Gunai completed the gladiator fight and became a one-star gladiator, he immediately applied for a one-star fight. At this moment, the sound of vibration could be heard. Gunai also guessed that the information was from his angle. Opening it, it was just as he had expected. Mr. Gun Lawrence, after 12 source hours, please arrive at 74 of the 7th rank 1 star arena to participate in the 1 star gladiator fight. Your opponent is Rudolf Bart. Rudolf Bart. Gunai's heart moved when he saw the name. After rummaging through his transcendence ring for a while, Gunai took out a crystal ball. With the infusion of source power, a figure emerged. The first person he saw was the foreign spearman named Rudolf Bart, who was wearing golden metal armor. Why is this guy so strong? Not far away, Duo Lance also looked over. He is a very strong guy. He has the strength of a two-star, and he is also new to the arena. He has been fighting for a long time, and I think he is at least close to a three-star. More importantly, this guy has a gladiator manager behind him. Then, Ying Luo, isn't this what you want? Of course Gunai chuckled. If the opponent did not have a gladiator manager behind him, then the odds would not be high at all. Neither side had any bets. Naturally, the odds would not be too high. When the agent or his gang kept placing their bets on one side, Gunai's odds would naturally increase. Do you want to go over and see the odds of your bet? 
Duo Lan Si asked. There's no hurry. Gu Nai shook his head. I can bet on all of them before the many battles on that day start. In any case, no one will be optimistic about me. Wait until the last moment to place their bets. That way, the odds will be the highest. That's true. I have about 34,000 sacred source coins now. If the odds are more than three times, I can make 100,000 sacred source coins in one round. And I'm fighting very quickly. I'll only meet more and more experts later on. I might be able to earn 2 million sacred source coins in a month if I hide my strength. By then, I can at least buy a world anchor. As long as I get a world anchor, I can use it to form a soul and teleport it back to the origin of the Oya continent. Then, I can stabilize the origin and reduce the extraction of the world's origin by one third. This way, we don't have to be in a rush. Extract the origin. Give the Oya continent a checkpoint of withering in three to five years. It must be suppressed to death. This way, I can restrict the evil gods and also give me enough time to increase my strength. In addition, I've also heard that there are some strange fruits in the arena that can be sold at a low price. They can quickly increase the realm of extraordinary masters. If I have enough money, I can buy some and speed up the improvement of my strength. After talking to Duo Lance, Gunai stood up and went to his cultivation place. In the Divine Kingdom arena. In a spacious and huge room. A tall, foreign man carrying a heavy spear on his back was using a crystal ball to watch the battle between the two. One of the two was Gunai. How's your opponent this time, Adolf? At this moment, a voice rang out not far away. With a flip of his hand, Rudolf Bart had already put away the crystal ball. He was too lazy to continue watching. Pitifully weak noobs. They actually tried to hide their strength. Fortunately, they managed to burst out with a wave of attacks later on and killed the enemy. I can fight ten of them. Said Rudolf Bart with disdain. You can't underestimate people. I'm Rudolf. He has to have the ability to do so. As the two of them were talking. At the door, an ancestor soul powerhouse walked in. Lord Cattison. Immediately, the dozen or so peak level seven extraordinaries in the room stood up and saluted him. The grey-robed Cattison glanced past them and laid his eyes on a Rudolph. Rudolph, the enemy you listed this time is not very strong. I also did some divination just now. Although the Divine Kingdom Gladiator Arena interfered with the divination, I still got a good result. Although you will win, you still have to be careful. This time, you will be placing bets, and there will be corresponding people operating. Thank you, Lord Cattison said Rudolf respectfully. To be able to make use of him to place bets, this was clearly an affirmation of his strength. He naturally had to perform well. 398 Chapter 46 I'm going for 5 card stud. In the blink of an eye, several days had passed. In the betting area of the Divine Kingdom Arena. On a machine screen that could search and even place bets. Gunai looked at the odds in front of him, his eyes narrowing. Gun Lawrence, odds of victory, 8.4. Sure enough, it's been manipulated by someone. The odds are 8.4. How much do you look down on me? How is it? Duo Lancey craned his neck and looked over. Tisk 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 tisk, your odds are 8.4. Your odds are a little shocking. You can say that the other side doesn't treat you as a human at all. Duo Lancey laughed. Indeed, Gunai nodded. It's a pity that there's no loan business. Otherwise, I could have made hundreds of thousands of sacred source coins or even millions of sacred source coins. Duo Lan Si looked at Gu Nai and pondered. As for Gu Nai, he was searching through his mind for something else he could sell off. He glanced at Dolan's. It would be great if I could pawn Duo Lan si for a hundred or two hundred thousand sacred source coins Gu Nai thought. This guy's gaze is a little unfriendly. Duo Lan Si sensed Guni's gaze and his eyes twitched. As he thought about it, 
Gunai bet all of the 36,000 sacred source coins he had earned from selling the water of the Spring of Life and other items over the past few days. According to the odds of 8.4, Gunai could earn 300,000 sacred source coins in one round, which was already quite amazing. After he was done, Gunai looked at Duo Lance. Are you betting or not? Duo Lancey said after staring at Gunny for two seconds. I still have the last 20,000 sacred source coins. That's all I have. If you die, I'll be a pauper. Then, Duo Lancey bet all 22,000 sacred source coins. The odds didn't change at all even with tens of thousands of sacred source coins. After all, such a small amount of money was nothing in the hands of the oracles. There are still five or six hours before the battle starts. I have a way to get some sacred source coins. The 8.4 times odds are too tempting. After Duo Lancey was done, Gunai said to him. Then I'll go look for some sacred source coins during this time. Duo Lancey said. After the two of them discussed for a while, they left one after another. Unless Gunai bought himself, he wouldn't be able to get any more sacred source coins. The water of the Spring of Life was almost sold out. There were a lot of other things, but they were not valuable. Ten minutes later, Gunai spent a few sacred source coins in the arena and opened a temporary secret training room. In the silent metal room, Gunai sealed the entire secret room. After making sure that no one would notice him, he used the Blood Origin, Great Blood Dream Curse to enter the Blood Dream Arena in the Sacred Feather Dark Origin Major Transcendent World. He headed directly to the fourth floor. Gunai had just entered. Sagrat, the Hall Master of the Don Owl Origin Race, who was sitting on the fourth floor, looked at Gunai. Sir Gunai! Sagra greeted Gunny. Gun didn't beat around the bush with Sagra. I'm in urgent need of some sacred source coins. I wonder if Senior Sakra can help me get it in a short time. Urgent need? How long is it? Sakra didn't ask for the reason, but for the crucial time. Within three hours, or four hours if it's more spacious. Three to four hours, I'm afraid it's a little rushed even if they have some sacred origin coins, I can't borrow them in such a short time. Sakra said with a slight frown. Don't worry, I have a plan. With a flip of his hand, Gunai produced 20 blood dream rings. This is the blood dream ring, constructed by the great lord of nightmares using strange spells and the power of faith. It has the function of communicating with the blood dream world. You can easily bring the sacred source coins in the real world into the bloody dream world. You can also bring the items obtained from the bloody dream world into the real world. The real trading channel in the bloody dream world. Sigra immediately understood. Putting everything else aside, just the blood dream ring alone was extraordinary. This blood dream ring is a benefit for the person who lent me money this time. Gunai said. With that, he threw the blood dream ring at Sigra. Many thanks, Sir Gunai. With this blood dream ring, things will be much more convenient Sigra nodded. So, what about the sacred source coins we borrowed this time, how much is it? Sakra looked at Gunny. Two million, Gunai said in a deep voice. Two million, Sakra couldn't help but be shocked. The demigods and gods who did not go to Holy Hajar often had tens of thousands of sacred source coins in their hands. Some of them had more than 100,000 or 200,000 sacred source coins. Two million sacred source coins was indeed a huge amount. If it's less than two million, borrow as much as you can. After you've used it up, I'll return you an additional 20% in two days Gunai said. You must be joking, Sir Gunai. We'll just pay back whatever we borrowed. Besides, this blood dream ring is very valuable, so it's enough to get it. Gunai waved his hand. I said I'll give you an extra 20%. There's no need to discuss this. Time is of the essence, Senior Sigra. You'd better act quickly. Okay, I'll immediately inform the others. Sakra immediately began to move. As for Gunai, he quietly waited. Originally, 
Gun had wanted to borrow some money from Duo Lance. Then, he would use the 30,000 odd sacred source coins to accumulate them step by step until he had accumulated 200,000 300,000 sacred source coins. At that time, he should have reached 2 star or even 3 star. The probability of him encountering a trap would be higher. If he was in a situation where he was being manipulated, Gunai would be able to earn a lot of money with the sacred source coins he had. But Gunai hadn't expected to be manipulated in the first match. It was obvious that the guy named Rudolph was at least close to 4 star, or even stronger. Otherwise, the gladiator agent behind him wouldn't have dared to do this. And if Gunai didn't follow them, Gunai would suffer a huge loss. After all, if this battle continued, Gunai's strength would be exposed. To be able to kill this 4 star superhuman, Gunai's strength must be at the 4 star level, or even close to the invisible level. When he found out that Gunai was even more powerful than a 4 star warrior, he was shocked. The odds for Gunai's next dozen or so matches would probably be around 0.1 or 0.2. There were even situations where the market was closed as soon as it was opened. Gunai probably couldn't bet on himself winning, and even if he did, he wouldn't make any money. As a result, all of Gunai's efforts to hide his strength had been in vain. Therefore, a large amount of sacred origin coins had entered the betting pool this time. This was the best time for Gunai to burst out. If you don't treat me like a human, then I won't treat you like one Gunai thought to himself. 399 A Gamble, A Bicycle Becomes a Motorcycle About three hours later, Sigra finally returned to the fourth floor of Blood Dream Arena. Sir Gun, these are the sacred source coins that the demigods and gods of the Dark Along Mountains have quickly gathered. It's a total of 1.2 million. We're in a hurry. If they had more time, they could have gotten more sacred source coins. As he spoke, Sigra handed over the three Blood Dream rings. Gunai used his mind power to scan it, then nodded. One million and two hundred thousand, that's enough. After collecting all the sacred source coins, Gunny returned the three blood dream rings to Sigra. All right, I'm in a hurry, so I'll go over first. Then, Gunny bid farewell to Sigra. In the Divine Kingdom Arena. In a small sealed secret room. Hoo hoo hoo. Gunai slowly opened his eyes. It's fortunate that we have such a group of people in the sacred feather dark source continent they'll be able to help us at a critical moment. Otherwise, all our efforts would have been in vain. Then, Gunai opened the door and flew towards the betting area. He didn't see Duo Lancy when he arrived at the meeting place. Apparently, he was still preparing. Gunai opened the machine and a screen appeared. The odds of 8.4 did not decrease at all. Instead, it had increased to 8.6. Oh, did anyone else place additional stakes? Gunai squinted his eyes. Those gladiator managers would sometimes group up with each other. It was common for one person to place a bet, and the others to follow suit. Gunai quickly put the 1.2 million into the gladiator medal. Then, he bet all 1.2 million sacred source coins on himself. 1.2 million sacred source coins was obviously not a small amount compared to the previous tens of thousands of sacred source coins. As the 1.2 million sacred source coins were put in, the odds quickly rose from 8.6 to 8.4. The other party must have invested tens of millions of sacred source coins in it. Gunai thought. There's still two more hours before the match starts. When they lose, their expressions will be very interesting. However, I need to prepare for this battle. I should be able to use most of my strength without any problems. Since I'm going to be exposed, I'll let them see my true strength. Moreover, I can also reverse the situation and suppress them after all, my death isn't a real death but if I do that, I won't be able to stay in the Divine Kingdom arena. The Devil Co Soul can be the beneficiary. Gunai waited for another half an hour. Only then did Duo Lancy arrive. How much did you get? Duo Lan Si asked as soon as he arrived. 150,000. 150,000, 
that's not a small amount Gunai said. I've pawned quite a few good items I even pawned my furnace weapon. Take a gamble, and a bicycle will become a motorcycle. Gun patted Duo Lance's shoulder and laughed. Although he knew that Gunai was very powerful, he was still a little nervous when all 150,000 of them bet on Gunai. After all, who could guarantee that Gunai would win? Even though he knew that Gunai was very strong, he didn't know how strong Gunai's opponent was. However, this was how gambling was. There was no such thing as a sure win situation. He was betting that Gunai would be stronger than the enemy. Don't worry even if he has the strength of a seven-star warrior, I'm still quite confident that I can win. Gunai said. Duo Lancy looked at Gunai in shock. All right, it's about time. I should go and prepare. He then flew towards Arena 74. Duo Lancy stood still for a while before he recovered. He immediately got up and chased after them. He wanted to go in and watch such a crucial battle. Ten minutes later. After handing over his gladiator medal, Gun entered the one-star arena's resting area number 74. This one-star arena was obviously much more high-end than the trainee arena. There were sofas, drinks, fruits, and other things. Near the arena, there was a wide row of spectator seats for gladiators to watch the battle. At the same time, there weren't many of them. Gunai's eyes scanned the room. There were about 80 people. However, there were still people entering. Gun's opponent, Rudolf Bart, wasn't coming. Gunai immediately found a seat near the spectator area and sat down. He looked over from the wide balcony of the spectator area. The one-star arena had a diameter of about 2,000 meters and was extremely wide. In the one-star arena, there were quite a number of spectators. There were about 2,000 people. After all, the quality of the fights in a row of arenas was much higher than those in the trainee arenas. After observing for a while, Gunai closed his eyes and rested. After resting for a while, Gunai heard a heavy voice. Hey, kid. You're called Gu Jian Qian or something, right? Gun opened his eyes and saw a three-meter-tall extraordinary, Rudolf Bart, wearing golden armor and carrying a long spear on his back. He was looking at Gun with slight contempt. You don't have to remember my name. You won't remember anything after you die Gun I naturally wouldn't give the other a good look. Hearing this, Rudolf Bart grinned. Stop what you're saying, kid. I'll slowly torture you to death later. You have to know that I love torturing noobs like you. After showing off, Rudolf Bart turned around and left. He glanced at the extraordinary named Rudolf Bart. He has the profound of earth and the profound of space. And they are all very thick. They aren't weak even among the four-star level. No wonder they are so confident. As time passed, more and more extraordinary humans entered the battle preparation lounge. When the time was up, three staff members flew in from the staff passage. Immediately, many one-star gladiators stood up. All gladiators, get ready. Those who are called, enter the arena to fight. The Oracle-level staff member said coldly in a professional manner. I'm Isabel Cadoso and Anis Davenporter I'm entering. Immediately. A woman and a man, two extraordinary humans from the foreign lands, drank potions while flying into the tunnel. Gunai was already carefully watching the battle between the two. Gunai had seen a lot of one-star battles. However, a life-and-death battle was always filled with many things that deserved praise. You would never know who the winner was until the final battle of life and death was decided. It looked like a one-sided crushing battle from the start but it might even complete a gorgeous reversal at the critical moment. And in some desperate situations where victory was right in front of their eyes, they would be crushed by the other party's more powerful means. This was also the beauty of a life-and-death battle. However, this round of battle did not have much of an impact. The female extraordinary named Isabel Cadoso easily used a soul attack and killed her opponent in less than 10 seconds. Clearly, this Isabel was very powerful. Rudolf Bart, Gunny Lawrence, get ready to enter. Gunai raised his eyebrows. 
he didn't expect to be the second wave to enter. Gunai took out a potion and drank it while flying inside. Beside him, Rudolph also flew along the tunnel. 400 A terrifying 7 star. In the spectator area. Nascimento Hurley and a few of the god emissaries and ancestor soul powerhouses gathered together. Nascimento Heli, this time, your subordinate is called a Rudolf Bart. He is highly regarded by many. An ancestor soul powerhouse with water flowing all over his body said softly. Yet. Yeah. That Rudolf Bart has a special innate divine ability and a deep understanding of the profound meaning. He has the power to easily kill a rank 8 extraordinary. If he continues to train and improve his strength, he has a high chance of becoming a 5-star gladiator. 5-star gladiators are rare among level 7 extraordinaries. They're almost at the top. That's why I asked all of you to come here and place your bets together Nascimento Hurley said. How much did you bet this time, the water-type ancestor soul expert asked. 50 million Nascimento Hurley said. 50 million, that's not a small amount. It's quite a lot, but it's very stable. That's true. Oh. That Rudolf Bart has entered the arena. He flew into the arena. Boom. Boom. The mechanical engine was instantly activated by Gunai, making a rumbling sound. From a thousand meters away, Gun looked at the Rudolf Bart. Gunai was going to reveal his true strength in this battle anyway. Furthermore, it was for the sake of the subsequent reverse operation. Gunai had already made up his mind. This time, he was going to show off. He directly exploded with the terrifying strength of a seven-star. This way, it could attract a large wave of attention. At that time, with a polar reversal, the show's effect would be maximized, and he could also make a lot of money. He clenched his fist, and his fiendish origin power surged out. Boom, the incomparably dense dark power Upanishad rose. In the blink of an eye, an endless darkness descended within a radius of three to four hundred meters. Immediately after. Boom. At the same time, the ultimate destruction ultimacy burst out. Darkness and destruction. At this moment, the two profound meanings were fully unleashed. The entire arena was filled with the terrifying darkness and destruction ultimacy. At the same time as Gunai erupted. Many of the spectators in the audience's seats had a solemn look on their faces. Everyone's eyes instantly focused on Gunai. Many people were shocked and shocked. The spectator area was in an uproar. The Swan Knees Power Upanishad is so terrifying. Isn't this guy a level 7 transcendent? How could he have such dense dark and destruction power Upanishad? Damn! Such profound power Upanishads! I'm afraid it's an oracle or an ancestor's soul. Even those powerful oracles and ancestral spirits might not have such a deep understanding of profound meanings. Indeed. This profound meaning is too amazing. Seven star, this guy is probably a seven star gladiator. Indeed. I didn't expect that there would be a battle between seven-star gladiators in a one-star arena. It's such a great deal. Ha ha ha, Ying Luo, I bought this gunny for 200 sacred source coins. I was just buying some random stuff, but I was lucky. Damn it, I bought 2,000 from that Rudolf Bart. I thought that I would make a profit by following the gladiator manager. Who knew that there would be a seven-star level guy? This Rudolf Bart is under the gladiator agent? The gladiator manager even opened for sale? I'm afraid we're going to suffer a huge loss this time. Now that you've said that, I feel much better at least those damn gladiator agents lost more than I did. In the spectator area. As the dark destruction power Upanishad bloomed. Nascimento Hurley and the other god emissaries and ancestor soul powerhouses were stunned at first then their faces gradually turned ugly, each more gloomy than the last. Nascimento Hulley's face was so dark that it was almost dripping with water. It was even a little twisted. The 50 million sacred source coins were more than half of what he had accumulated in the arena over the years. He was afraid that he would lose all 50 million. Nascimento Hulley, your eyes are really sharp. 
It's hard to find a seven-star gladiator even after several years, but you found one right away. A fourth-level ancestor soul expert looked over and said in an unfriendly tone. The others also looked at Nascimento Hurley with a strange light in their eyes. This time, they had more or less invested a few million. Looking at it now, it was all over the place. The blooming of Ancient One's power Upanishad attracted the attention of several gods messengers and managers. When they saw how profound Gunai's power Upanishad was, many of the managers' expressions changed. Even the oracle administrator who had shouted the start had forgotten to shout it. At this time, Rudolf Bart was stunned on the spot, and his heart was full of shock. The dark and destruction power Upanishads were ten or even twenty times more powerful than his. The difference between them was simply unimaginable. How is this Ying Luo possible? Rudolf Bart's face became extremely distorted. I, Gunny Lawrence, am the top genius of Holy Hajar. I will become a god in the future. Gunai's voice rumbled. Rudolf, I know that you are very strong and have the strength of a four-star warrior. However, you shouldn't be so arrogant. You even dared to provoke me. You are really going too far. Do you really think I am a soft persimmon? Even if you had the strength of a seven-star, I, Gunai, would still kill you today, let alone a four-star. Gunai's tone was sharp and murderous. Let's start. After a while, the chief oracle spoke. Begin. The deep voice of the oracle echoed throughout the huge arena. Die. The voice of the oracle rang out. Gunai's level 9 thunder flame curse exploded. Rudolf Bart still wanted to escape sideways. However, he couldn't avoid the instant transmission of the incantation. He was just a fighter, not a shadowman. He didn't have any powerful means of escape and hiding. The black dragon-like angry thunder directly entangled Rudolf Bart. The black Upanishad and the destruction Upanishad bloomed to the extreme. Boom! A deafening thunderclap exploded in the white arena. In the black lightning, Rudolf Bart's body exploded, and his soul source core shattered on the spot. Gunai's full power attack. He instantly killed this four-star warrior, Rudolf Bart. Even though he knew that this would be the result. But after seeing Gunai's fierce attack, the audience still began to discuss it. Even a level 8 or level 9 transcendent grandmaster would be injured or die from this attack. That's right. This guy named Gunai is really strong. He's a 7-star warrior. Even the 7-star warriors in history were at the top. It's going to be lively here someone laughed. Why, someone asked in confusion. I just did some research. This is the first battle of this one-star guy. With his strength, he'll be the one to die. Now that you've mentioned it, it does sound interesting. Gunny Lawrence wins. The voice of the administrator of the Divine Envoy sounded. As Gunai's victory came to an end, the battle, or rather, the battle projection of Gunai's powerful profound and ferocious attack, was quickly sent out by many people. After all, the birth of a seven-star was a new thing. Moreover, this was a very powerful seven-star who was fresh out of the oven, 